Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. Hi, and welcome everybody. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Over 200 mini videos that our Chessable team edited together, synced with our Move Trainer, and made it a seamless learning experience.
more than ever when the world comes together to create a better tomorrow. It's going to be magic. Oh. La magie. Magic. Magic with music. With architecture. With colors. Magic with celebration. With your safety. From here. There. And everywhere. For six whole months, day and night. Join the making of a new world starting October 1st. Hello, welcome everybody. We are here again for game six here at the Deep Dive Broadcast. I'm Judith Polgar. I'm locally here in the Dubai Expo where there are a lot of attractions, 192 countries showing their best. But one of the main attractions is the World Championship match, which is taking place right now during the three and a half weeks between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniachtchi from Russia. So today we have a special guest joining me for the commentary today and maybe Anish will be also joining in. But let me welcome Surya Ganguly, Grandmaster from India. He's a great chessable author, but also the second of the five time world champion and then welcome. Hi Judith. Hi Surya. <laughs> what do you think about the match so far? Um very exciting. I know it doesn't sound um, natural after so many draws, but uh, it's very fighting. Fighting games are going on. I'm actually enjoying. And uh, yeah, with the commentaries, uh, it gets really, really attractive. So I think the audience generally, we have a very little percentage of the world who understands what is really going on on the chessboard. And probably many of the people are kind of frustrated to see again in this World Championship match four draws, as one of the main issue was after the match in 2018 between Caruana and uh, Magnus, that they played all the classical games were, were drawn. Here again, we have four draws. So how can you explain this as you have great experience being a second of Anand, how a world championship match is escalating from game one? Can you give uh, some insight about that, that why is this and how can we cheer up our viewers that there are still hopes that there are going to be some decisive games? Sure. I mean, first of all, I would like to start with uh, this is still better than uh, the number of draws Kasparov and Karpov had. And those matches were really exciting, but still there were draws. And um, yeah, I think at uh, at the highest level, uh, it gets really difficult to score, particularly when you're playing a match. You know, both sides are extremely well prepared. And I remember um, in all the matches where I was helping Anand, uh, in the initial phase, it was more like, you know, uh, gaining information. So, you know, you play some E4, you see which area your opponent team has prepared. If you get into, um, get hit by a novelty or uh, some new idea, new direction, you try to bail out and then again, team is working to refute that line. And then again, you poke on other line. Maybe you try some D4 games and slowly you gather information. It's just essentially, you just need one extra point. So it's natural that, you know, uh, Magnus tried uh, one game D4, then one game E4. I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty confident that Jan will also switch at some point. He will not stick to only uh, Spanish. And uh, it can get frustrating. Uh, it can really get frustrating. It can get into some deadlock. But yeah, what to do? I mean, as Magna said, they are trying their best. Well, we have five draws up to this point. And uh, interestingly enough, that uh, after the five games out of the white, uh, games of Jan Nepomniachtchi, he was playing E4. So we had game one, three, and five. It was Spanish and Rai Lopez. At the same time, game four, it was E4 by Magnus. Game two was D4 and it was a Catalan. So before we go into the discussion, what we can expect for today, I want to 
uh, invite our audience to make their prediction at the magnusnepo.com website where you can make your predictions which opening how many moves and what will be the result of today and you can win valuable prizes there so don't forget to make your uh, predictions what is your prediction for today surya um default that's my prediction <clears throat> my prediction is e4 <laughs> there we go and Probably i wish you are going to <laughs> I wish you're going to be right because uh, the most exciting game we had, it was game two, right? In the Catalan. So yes. I hope we can talk more about that. Actually, you just told me that uh, you're working on some material in Chessable course about Catalan. Yeah, so I had this uh, Nimzo semi Dirash Catalan project, out of which the first course is published, uh, which covers Nimzo and all the sidelines. And the second part will cover Catalan and semi -tarash. So I'm very excited uh, if uh, if that happens in the in this particular game. I do hope that it happens for several reasons because I think we are going to see something very sharp and very complicated game, and then you can comment on that with all kind of insights. Uh, what do you think about the press conferences which is going on? Because the previous, the last press conference was, I found two interesting topics. One, of course, was more interesting than the other because um, uh, it was very interesting for me to hear when there was a question, someone from uh, the online audience on Fides side, they made the questions, if you have a time traveler machine, what would you change in your chess career? What was given this to Jan and Magnus as well? And it was so interesting to see Jan Nepomniachi without too much of a hesitation to say, I would start earlier working. What did Magnus, what was Magnus reply? Magnus said something like, uh, well, actually, he, he was, uh, he's quite good in his career, what he got from uh, <laughs> during his life, so he can't really complain about anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I actually like this, I like this press conferences, uh, the, the questions which are uh, also, you know, a bit lighter, so the players can open up, because I've noticed also during Anand's uh, World Championship matches that Often, you know, in press conference, you say something generic and while really it is completely different. You don't want to reveal, you don't want to give away much. So that's also another reason I am, um, yeah, I follow the press conference, but uh, uh, when it comes to critical question, I know, you know, whatever they are saying in press conference, not necessarily uh, it has to be exactly to the point. It can be very generic. Well, there was another uh, question. I don't know if you heard that one. I was kind of shocked when I heard it. I couldn't even really believe that I hear properly. When uh, Andrea Botes was asking uh, Magnus, can he explain how the knight moves? I, I think I understand this because uh, I remember uh, once uh, Magnus was there in some stream, I saw some clippings in social media. And there was some uh, night fork or something, and there, that was some sort of an inside joke. I mean, uh, they were playing some sort of, uh, I don't know, hand and brain or uh, or some uh, blitz where, uh, you know, uh, she misses a night fork and then Magnus kind of says, uh, you know, that is how the night moves. So this has to be a continuation of the previous stream. There cannot be any other explanation. I mean, that, that's what I thought when I heard this. Yeah, there was a stream. I saw it later on. How was it? And they had a stream of like 45 minutes. They played the game, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point, uh, Magnus was pointing out because Andrea didn't see a, a night capture or something. And he was asking that, well, do you know how the night moves? It's just ah, yes. him. But yeah. uh, somehow I was... Uh, I'm, I was quite surprised on this, that in the World Championship title match, when the players are really stressful and uh, they obviously mm -hmm. expect questions regarding to the game or regarding something with the World Championship match, 
And somehow I have to say that I think it's not necessarily the appropriate moment to ask something like this, because uh, my argument is that if you have a black tie event and mm -hmm. you show up in your tennis short, yeah, it's not necessarily the right place, right, to show up. I mean, in a tennis short, you can go to the tennis court, you eat afterwards in the restaurant, and you can still walk home or drive home and, and show up in different places, but not in a black tie event, right? And this is somehow yeah. what I felt, that it's kind of, uh, after all, it's a world championship title match. Even though I really respect uh, the Bodas sisters, what they do for chess, and, and a lot of streamers, I mean, it's a fantastic work and job what uh, how they can mobilize uh, uh, people to get engaged also in in chess which is fantastic and great and of course the queen's gambit series also did quite a lot in this yeah. direction but uh, somehow i had the feeling that that went a little too far <laughs> well i i just hope that uh, it stops here and every day magnus doesn't have to you know uh, explain how the bishop moves then next how the rook moves <laughs> We had night and we can stop it there. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, just uh, we are a few minutes away of starting the game. So maybe I just want to invite our audience to see a short video about both of the players, how it all started their career for both of them. Just a short video. On July 14th, 1990, in the Russian city of Bryansk, a chess prodigy came into the world. 139 days later and 2,000 kilometers away, Magnus Carlsen was born in Tunsberg, Norway. Magnus had shown a clear inclination and ability to certain activities, concentrated activities, that I th thought would match well with chess, basically. So I tried to teach Magnus and his older sister chess when he was four and a half. I was like four years or maybe four and a half and I was introduced to chess rules because um, uh, my grandpa and uh, my uncle used to play a lot. Очень было интересно с ним ездить на соревнования и наблюдать, когда этот маленький ребенок играет уже со взрослыми детьми, когда он сидит за столом, когда одна голова видна из-под парты, и он потирает руки и говорит, ну все, пора поднимать руки и сдаваться. А в свободное от игры время решалось конгорды, то есть ребенок был на тот момент очень уникальный и очень-очень сильно отличающийся. Ян flourished at a very young age. Meanwhile, Henrik Carlsen struggled to teach Magnus and his sister the game. If I had any aspirations for the kids, basically that, that went all the way uh, during the first year or two, fortunately, because it turned out uh, that chess was much more difficult than I had uh, understood, basically. And uh, when Magnus started becoming really interested in chess at seven and a half, he said uh, because he wanted to beat his older sister, um, then uh, I didn't have that much ambition on his behalf and uh, he was allowed to develop and flourish on his own, basically. In 2002, their paths crossed for the very first time. Jan was 12 and Magnus still 11 when they played their first game at the European Under-12 Championship. It ended with a win for Nepomniachtchi, and a month later at the World Under-12 Championship, they drew their game and were tied for first place. But in the last round, I think I won. Uh, and he drew against David Howell, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, so this is like top three worst chess memories that I have. Uh, I ne needed to win the um, last game. I was half a point in front of Jan Nepomnyshi. The most annoying part uh, I remember about that last round is that Jan Nepomnyshi, who was playing against uh, an Indonesian player, Susilo Dinata, I think he played a Karukan as black. He had an extra pawn and, and, and a great position and then he just collapsed. And I was losing my advantage as well and I just remember just raging <laughs> like crazy. My tiebreak was better, and he was just, I mean, completely devastated by his result. Okay, it's not the first place anymore. 
Uh, but uh, as far as I remember, Henrik just made him to congratulate me. And uh, since that moment, I really respect Henrik uh, a lot. The two have met in only 13 classical games, and the Russian is to date the only top player with a positive score against the reigning world champion. Nepomniachtchi has won four games, whilst Carlsen only won. But what will the score be after the world championship match? Very nice, uh, small video about both of them, how they started. They are the same age, practically only a few months difference between the two players. What do you think, uh, Surya, about the, that they are the same age, same generation? Because when you were second of an end, that was not the case. There was a huge difference in age. What does it bring to chess? And actually, this is the third World Championship match in a row that we see clashes from the same generation. Yeah, it's actually uh, very interesting um, that their first game was in uh, in Greece, I think, World Under 10. And um, yeah, that was an Alekhine defense. I'm pretty much sure we are not going to see Alekhine defense on this round. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and the, not only this, the the um, the same generation, they were also, they're also friends. Yeah, they even uh, walked together, I believe, at some point. And um, what I really like about this match is uh, the difference of style. It's completely different, you know, the way uh, Jan plays, uh, the way Jan prepares and the way, you know, Magnus prepares and the, the, the kind of style which he has. And um, yeah, uh, when the, I think the last clash between uh, different generation we saw was uh, between Anand and Magnus. And after that, we started seeing same generation players and probably who knows, this might be the trend for a while now. We see now the players arriving. Magnus uh, plays with the white color. It seems like he has this trend to have the light color jacket when he plays with the white pieces. And he picks the dark suit when he plays with the yeah. black pieces. <laughs> we see the arbiter also, the local arbiter standing next to him. I see Magnus completely focused. something what could possibly be he's saying right now magnus is so focused and a little bit nervous and it's the first time i think he came first to the game it was always when uh, jan was uh, coming first at the board and only he was coming afterwards so he's very focused now he wants something very much today he wants to score a full point I never saw him out in this match being so concentrated, nervous also, maybe we can say. What do you think? Yeah, also this is his th third attempt. Yeah, like this will be his third white. If this one draws, basically, yeah, then, you know, you it's, it's already time to strike. Otherwise, you are kind of giving, an, giving a message that, uh, yeah, match is heading uh, in a balanced manner. So he would really like to grab initiative and I don't think he would personally enjoy uh, the way uh, previous matches happened, a couple of draws and only then, uh, you know, in the go all the way in the tie break. He said, right, he, want to, he also wants to be remembered uh, as, uh, you know, scoring the first win after 2016 World Championship match. There was no classical win. In 2018, there was no classical win. Yes, so which means uh, whoever wins here, that will be the first win after 2016 match. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so what do you All think right. about the psychological uh, aspect of the match? Because before the, the World Championship started, everybody was saying that obviously Magnus is the favorite and uh, he should be the winner, right? So by now we've seen five games where, especially the previous game, I think it was it was very clear that Jan was the one who had the upper hand and he was torturing Magnus, maybe not too much, but there were some critical moments in the game. 
And it was no question about it if Magnus has any chance to turn around and have winning chances, practically. True. But on the other hand, uh, very rarely, I, I almost cannot recall when uh, was the last time I saw Magnus losing uh, a technical position from a symmetrical structure. Do you remember a game where he is losing from a symmetrical structure, technically getting outplayed? Usually it's happening when things are very messy. First of all, okay, he doesn't lose that much. But even when he does, it's actually from a very complex, messy position. Very rarely I see, uh, uh, you know, some technical position where he is getting outplayed. Yes, uh, I agree with that because he has such a great sense of, uh, of, of feeling for the nuances in the game, in, in equalish position. And he senses very well when he's in danger and he is not shy from making uh, any passive move. And we had D4 on the D4 board. On the board. D4 great. On the board. It's a great thing because... Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not be, I'd be surprised if it is Catalan again. So let's see, D4, Knight F6, Knight F3. Do you think it could be a London? D5. No, it shouldn't be. It should be some, I think it should be Catalan again. It's just a funny move order to... G3. G3. Uh, has it ever, I'm just curious, has it ever occurred in a World Championship match, this particular position? Can somebody uh, let me know? I, at least I don't recall. I don't recall this particular move order in a World Championship match. Well, wow. I think it's uh, clear that he wants to go. It's going to be a long and interesting game. That's for sure. Game. He wants to go for a long game. I am very curious what he wants after um, C5. Because then you have to, you are likely to play bishop g2 and then takes knight d4. And e5. Or knight c6 first. You, you know what is the uh, trendy reply after knight d4? No, cd4, sorry, you don't take knight d4, you first castle. You wait castle, for, uh, right? yeah, you wait for black knight to play c6? knight c6. Yeah, if you play knight c6, then you get reverse Grunfeld with knight d4. Yeah. Uh, so black, you nowadays they do not play knight c6. Uh, a very strong move uh, instead of knight c6 it, uh, is h6. H6. It's a very very strong move. Wow. Uh, yeah, this has been. Let me just check. Yeah, this has been played by Dubov also. Um, the point is, yeah, you are waiting for white to take on d4. So the idea is that after knight d4 you can go e5 and there is no capture on c6 so white has to go to b3 or f3 and only and after eight, that. Exactly and h6 pawn protects the d5 pawn by stopping bishop g5. So now you can happily play something like knight c6 and there is no bishop g5. Mm -hmm. Very clever move to be playing. So what can uh, Magnus be thinking his preparation on c5? Yeah, I. I, I don't know. I, Can he play go c four, or that's uh, not here? Not in this position, I believe. Uh, I mean, you will not get a uh, proper Catalan anymore. That that part is certain. Is there a way that it's going to be a Catalan again after g three? Because e six is not the move, right? To block the bishop. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason uh, they don't uh, choose this move, move order is c5. That's, I mean, that would be the principal reply. But I believe, okay, you can, uh, yeah, you can start with uh, e6, bishop g2, let's say, bishop e7, then you get yeah. to the proper Catalan, yeah, if you want. If black yeah, okay, wants then, we are, then we are there where uh, we were in the game two. Yes. So if somebody is playing bishop e7 castle setup, he can say, okay, look, I'll just play e6 and uh, bishop e7. 
But if you're really particular to punish this move order, I mean, so-called punish as in, you know, the, the this move order is not so popular, then you would really like to play C5. Ask quite, right. do you want to go C3 or Bishop G2 or D takes C5? You know, you'll not get your Catalan anymore. I don't think he wants to play C3 move. I, I, I can't imagine yeah. this is his preparation. This cannot be the case. And we have E6. So what a psychological uh, battle he, yeah. well, I don't know if he won, but uh, it is very interesting that he made this move order and actually Jan was not prepared to play kind of the, the most natural and the best considered move to play C5, but mm -hmm. he very much has the mindset on the Catalan, he just wants to go in that direction, right? Yes. So we have uh, very quickly Bishop G2, Bishop E7, Castle, Castle. And yes. I guess C4, yeah? C4. No, B3. Look at this. B3. So the thing is, usually we get this. Uh, if you start from the Catalan move order, so let's say from the starting position, you get. Uh, now I understand uh, Magnus' psychology of this particular move order. So if you go to the starting position and uh, Start from the Catalan move order, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, g, uh, knight f3, d5, yeah, g3, bishop e7, bishop g2, short castle. And yeah, at this point, there is this move b3, kind of saying, you know, if you take, I take. But this again opens up c5, this has options of d takes c4. So Magnus wants to get a position like this. But without allowing, uh, without committing c4. So he traded c4 with castle. So he has the exact same position, but instead of c4, he got short castle. By the way, c5 on the board now. Let's go back to the board. This was a great psychology because Magnus realized that. Jan prepared bishop e7 setup, so it is unlikely that uh, he would like to deviate from this. Okay, one second, let me get back to the game. b3, c5. So d takes now, c5. Yeah, it has to be something special because if you play c4, then again you transpose to uh, the main line and then one might ask why, why there was so Even much... c4, even c4. Yeah, D takes C5, Bishop takes C5 and C4. He didn't do C4 directly. So he bypassed, he bypassed the, the, the normal system by this special move order. Well, it seems like his decision was to go for some little sideline, which is not expected. The structure he's happy to play and he just wants to enter into a middle game and the better player wins. We know how uh, he thinks about that, who is the better one, right? Yeah, I'm just checking with uh, the database just to see how many games are there. And uh, there are actually just two games. Both players from white side was unrated. But uh, one was correspondence in 1990 and one game in 1995. So this is a completely new uh, territory. It has not been seen so far. But it looks like a very healthy position for Black as well. Now, of course, Black has to make a decision whether is he going to capture on c4, is he going to go d4, or to play knight c6, right? Yeah. I I mean, one of the principal moves could be, you know, you take on c4 and play knight c6 and claim that, uh, you know. So let's say on d but... takes c4, would white go queen c2, not to exchange? Mm, yeah, also possible. Because otherwise, I don't think white wants to have a weak pawn on c4. This doesn't make uh, too much sense, is it? Yeah. But do you want to take with the queen? Like, let's say, play knight bd7 or queen e7, let's say. Well, I don't wish to take with my pawn. I think I would take... Uh, I would take with the queen or maybe somehow to give a pawn up. I don't know. 
just to it's play. A ni ni ninety five or something. Bishop d four. Bishop b two. Oh, bishop a three is also possible. Or bishop e three. Yeah. So it's either giving up the pawn for initiative or uh, or going with queen c four. Yeah. But if we go back to the position, right, to c four. It's already a position where Jan has to spend time and decide making the decision. Because obviously it's the case that the position is completely balanced, but he has several alternatives and he has to make a decision which direction to go, which kind of middle game structure he wants to be playing. Yeah. Because for example, if we talk about, let's say, queen e7 simply, and let's say white goes c takes d5, e takes d5. I don't mm -hmm. think uh, Jan is too much playing isolated pawn structures, is he? Right. That's true. So um, it's, it's, I think, more about the middle game structure what, uh, what Magnus is aiming to, to reach out to, somehow to have a complicated game and somewhere where Jan maybe is not the best uh, and that he has to make a lot of different, he, he has to choose from the different choices he has. Yes. It's I very think interesting actually, to, I'm actually yeah. very, very uh, amazed uh, with the move order, yeah? Like, once again, if you compare this uh, with, the, with the traditional Catalan, where they play b3 first, the difference, so okay, uh, can we start from the beginning ones? Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, here let's play bishop e7, c4. Yeah. Short castle. b3. And here the main line is to take on c4 and then play c5. Mm -hmm. And now it's not possible to uh, get the setup and theory goes with short castle, c d4 and long lines. But by choosing this completely different move order, Magnus made sure black cannot take d into c4 before playing c5. So now if you go, go back to the game continuation. So now really the big question is what happens after d takes c4, right? This is the most exactly. critical at first. Exactly, exactly. I would imagine this is the main question. And are we going queen c2? Are we going uh, pawn into c4? Queen c2 seems very uh, principled, yeah? Yeah, I think Queen C2 seems the, the most logical, uh, knowing Magnus and seeing the position. I mean, just taking back on C4, what can White have here? I mean, Black can exchange the Queens first, but also he can play Knight C6. Black is kind of uh, almost ahead in development. Yes, I'm checking the database now, the only game that I mentioned, which was... Uh... Played that went by the way uh, pawn into c4. This is uh, yeah in 1995 and black played queen c7 instead of d takes c4. Uh, no, after b takes c4, uh, uh -huh. then uh, then black plays queen c7. So d oh, takes c4, b takes c4. Yeah, I would I would prefer knight c6. Yeah, knight c6. Yeah. And somehow I have the feeling that the queen is spot is not on c7. It's more on e7. But yeah. also, let's say, let's say I just want to grab the queen and I want to play very solid. In this position, I mean, is it something really white can have with such a pawn on c4? By the way, maybe even knight e4 immediately is possible. Though after that, probably knight d4, right? Knight d4, you might have to watch out for knight f2 and e5. Yeah, this is what I was wondering. Takes, takes, e5. And e3. e3. And e3. And then somehow black is doing fine. Uh, white is doing very fine, I think. With such yeah. a pawns in the center, it's something good. Yeah, but uh, the position you mentioned uh, with the pawn on c4, this particular position, it resembles so much with the Catalan c5, uh, where white has this pawn on c3, he right? Takes c4 is on the board, so Jan is ready to eliminate some of the pieces. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Magnus has in mind now. Are we going to be seeing an exchange of queens already before move them? 
or we will see some post sacrifice after queen c2 and somehow grabbing initiative for queen c2 queen c2 without hesitation yeah queen c2 on the board and this is the way to do it yeah i just so wouldn't believe it that something else can work here in this position and as a preparation that's true that's true this catalan lines with uh with c5 uh, i know i'm doing this a lot of time but can we go back to the initial position one more one more time just to show that uh, yeah so okay catalan uh and after g3 d takes c4 let's say this position uh hang on wait a minute no 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 uh, back for the back for the back yeah instead of castle and instead of bishop e7 actually yeah so here uh, you now, mean c4 c4 d takes c4 mm -hmm. bishop g2 c5 yeah short, short castle knight c6 d takes c5 queen d1 rook d1 bishop c5 now i remember in uh world rapid once uh magnus defeated hurry by playing knight fd2 but the main move here is knight bd2 not knight fd2 then c3 right and then c3 and pawn takes c3 and this is one of the topical line yeah like with this uh, weak pawn on c3 the one which we were discussing just now but still black gets uh, some issues uh, with developing uh, the c8 bishop the position still remains uh, equal but you know they're they're play so if magnus would have taken b into c4 instead of queen c2 i think black gets a much better version than the position what we just saw oh because absolutely I yeah. think absolutely it's a much better version for black somehow because somehow when knight on knight fd2 and the diagonal is opened for the bishop already that's some important squares yeah. are controlled right exactly uh, the e4 very important yeah so it makes perfect sense not to enter this and to play queen c2 But really, I, I'm I'm very very curious. Uh, when was the last time this was played? Night, uh, third move G3 uh, in an World Championship match. Never saw this before. Queen Isa, are you surprised, uh, Judith, that uh, Jan is playing so fast? Because uh, I somehow cannot believe that he still remembers his preparation or is in his preparation. But because Jan often does this, yeah, he often plays fast, confidently, even when he is not uh, not on his preparation. Because he swindled me number of times doing this. <laughs> yes, there are players who have this uh, attitude that if they are happy with the position, they just can pretend that as there is no surprise. Who cares? I just have a great position. I play fast. Of course, a World Championship match is another story, but I believe that the first five games gave a lot of self-confidence uh, for Jan, because so far we did not see too, too big opportunity for Magnus to be missed. Actually, it was Jan, right? In game two, yeah. where Jan was playing with the black pieces with this very sharp Catalan, it was uh, uh, Jan who had the opportunities uh, much more, where Magnus had to sacrifice material in order to stay in the game and then had to find some extremely powerful moves to get compensation for it. But it was it was Jan who was taking the upper hand. He, he was better, uh, we can say, clearly say that. And also yesterday with the white pieces, it was him who was pushing Magnus. So it is very much time for Magnus to show what kind of difficult uh, moments he can uh, pose to Jan. Knight bd2 on the board. Knight bd2 on the board. It goes, it goes perfectly uh, with strategy. Mm -hmm. So let's try to understand, you know, if I'm very naive and I want to grab a pawn. Let's, let's see what happens. 
Of course, it is a position which uh, Jan probably would like to avoid to give the initiative for white. Knight b3 tempo, and where the bishop goes to d6, probably. And then probably. bishop b2. Say, yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of grabbing this pawn, but just for the sake of clarity, uh, let's have a look. So you want knight g5, so let's say I play e5. Already immediately. Yeah. Ah, you wanted to play knight c6 first, yeah? Well, I just thought that, yeah, there is an option just to de develop, and once I go knight g5, threatening bishop and to play e5. and uh, queen h7, then you go e5, or even bishop e5 as an option. True, possibly. True. Or, or uh, just playing e5, yes. So let's see, uh, b takes, uh, c takes b3, knight b3, bishop d6. Maybe rook d1 first, what do you think? And thinking yeah, about I, bishop g5. I was hesitating between uh, rook d1 and knight fd2. Because if I can get my knight to c4, it's also oh, causing some issues. And I don't know, uh, can I go actually bishop e5, knight c4 or not? Or bishop e5 probably I have to play. I should be able to go knight c4, no? Well, I'm not sure you can just simply play rook b1 and then knight yeah. c4. And then knight c4, also possible. And then bishop coming to a3. But what if you start developing after knight fd2? Knight d7 or knight c6? I mean, knight, knight c6. c6. Knight c6. I'm, I'm not going to take that, of course. So knight c4. Uh, to do now it's not so easy for black it seems like black will be losing his uh, bishop i mean exchanging the knight for the bishop because it cannot be moving away due to bishop a3 stuff True. and let's step back a little bit is cb3 obligatory because i could also try to develop there yeah yes but in that case let's say knight c6 still actually white can go bishop b2 and if I start with e5, trying to claim that, you know, if you take with the knight, I want to play e4, e3. No, I so, start with e4 and bishop f5. e4, let's say here. And after knight g5, you go what? What do you want to go? No, I cannot, I cannot do much. I thought bishop f5. Well, you know, bishop f5, maybe knight e3. Bishop g6. By the way, maybe the simplest is just to go bishop b2 and somehow capture the e4. Yeah. Although, are you absolutely sure about this position? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's just extremely interesting and white has for the moment the uh, uh, development advantage and immediately I'm threatening to capture on f6 and then capture on the e4 pawn. True. Actually, it's a, it's a big question for black, what to, what to do in this position, right? I mean, okay, black can say that I'm playing quickly, but let's face it, he spent already 20 minutes, even though we think that he was playing pretty fast, and Magnus mm -hmm. has spent three minutes from his time. Right. Three minutes only. So he he's not hiding it that this is his preparation, he's determined, and he wants to strike today. Because yesterday also the time management of Magnus was not good at all. During the whole game there was a very clear and sometimes uh, a significant time advantage for Jan. It's not that they had any of them had any problem, time travel or anything like that, but still psychologically, it's, uh, it's, it's not fun for Magnus to be behind in time, I think. Sure, sure. Uh, as far as style is concerned, do you think uh, Jan is a guy who would like to grab a pawn and uh, try to defend? No, not or at all. Not at all, right? So he not at all. Sort of activity here. In the other hand, uh, he can take the pawn, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But if he's not taking the pawn, 
it's also something you may be not so happy because after that white is grabbing the pawn from d2 to c4 he can develop with bishop b2 knight fd2 having the rooks and maybe white is going to be having a fantastic position or even controlling the e5 square so that's also not something very funny for black to to play a very passive position or even worse position against magnus right it's absolutely yeah. not the answer kind of style to be defending for like the next 60 moves. True, as uh, Swidler once uh, commented, yeah, he, uh, in analysis, he grabs a pawn and says, uh, at least now I know why I am suffering. And exactly. I have a pawn, so I can suffer, yeah? <laughs> I don't exactly. want to suffer with equal material. Yeah, yeah, so, and, and I think actually, Magnus is really good in that, and he sometimes also talks about it. That, for example, before the press conference, he said, well, I hope that I'm going to win the, ma uh, win the match by making better moves and better decisions. And I yeah. think many times he's playing the way that he's not afraid of having complicated positions because he feels he has a self-confidence that he's going to make better choices, better decisions when there is an alternative between two, three, four options. And I think this is why it's a very difficult moment for Jan in some ways, because maybe neither of the options is so tempting at first, right? If you allow white to capture with the knight on c4, you kind of think that, okay, white achieved what he wanted. If you take on b3, maybe I'm okay, but it's so much initiative for white. Yeah. So also chess is more about unforced positions, right? I mean, let's take any of our game. How many force moves do we make? We make, uh, I don't know, probably less than 5% uh, only choices. Most of the time we get positions where there are many options. And it is exactly at this, uh, these places where stronger players excel. They make better decisions when moves are looking similar. I'm pretty sure if we, you know, turn on computer, there will not be just one move which is equalizing. There should be several moves which are good enough. But you have to make choice every move and you have to spend time. Do I play e5? Do I grab the pawn? Do I develop my knight? Where should I develop it? Put it on d7? Put it on c6? You know, every time you're having moves which are looking similar and you have to spend time. And you never know when the critical moment is coming when you have to actually select the move which is the only way to go. It was so interesting to see the body language and, and this little thing before the game that Magnus arrived first, he was so focused, he was so determined by the body language, I think. And this is what we see on the board. He He's yeah. making something interesting, something, a very interesting idea. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't be such a horrible position for Black. I have an idea. What happens if C takes B3, Knight B3, and I go Bishop A3, trying to exchange? Okay, let's say I change. Let's say you exchange on A3, Queen takes A3, Knight E5. Knight E5, Knight E5 looks Yeah, that nice. looks the most painful for me because it makes my Knight a little bit uh, passive. Okay, let's say I go Knight D7. So basically, knight c4, you want to go queen e7, I guess? I tried to sneak back, but actually there are maybe other options. Even queen a6, defending here. But queen e7 seems to be the most logical one. Rook fd1. Rook fd1. Can I go knight c5? I just want to come out with my bishop to d7, even if I give your you my b7 pawn i just want activity yeah that's that's also the only issue black has in this position maybe knight d6 yeah knight d6 i was thinking maybe you'll take on uh, b3 and just uh, i don't know start attacking my knight but here at least i can I, worst case i can take knight x8 and take on b7 and pretend i have a what is this is this anything I wouldn't I, worry with I, 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 I also would not be worried here. Not at this point. I think this uh, this this cannot be the way White uh, would want to play. But the question is, how can White uh, stabilize the knight on d6? Or is it possible to stabilize? 
Yeah. Now, what about Queen A3? Knight E8. Yeah, 98. Well, if I get rid of the d6 knight, then it's fine. The d6 knight was the most powerful piece in game two for Magnus, you remember? Yes. That was giving all the compensation in the game. Yeah. And of course, in this position also, it would be extremely powerful if white can stabilize it somehow. But I think white is not in time with this. I was just, uh, oh, this doesn't work. Yeah, I was trying, in the final position, I was trying to see if uh, if I can use the back rank somehow. But it probably does. No, like after the stake take rook d8, if I could go, I don't know, knight f5, rook d1, rook d1, e f5, queen b4. But uh, no, you're dreaming. Saw. You're dreaming. I, I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. <laughs> you know what? Uh, what I what I could do? Uh, let's come back a few more moves. Yeah. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah. At this point, could I could I actually go knight a five? Well, uh, I guess you don't necessarily want to take that pawn, really. You just want to threat and put pressure. I just want to stop b6 and, you know, uh, make sure this bishop is not coming out. My next moves could be rook d1, rook c1, queen c7. I, uh, I, I think it's a strong move. But maybe black can go e5 with the idea somehow trying to play e4 to block the bishop in g2. Yeah. And uh, a queen c7, you want to play c4, right? e4, e4. e4 yeah. He did not take her the pawn, but we have knight c6 on the board. As we said, yeah, uh, Jan is not a guy uh, who would like to uh, grab a pawn. I mean, grab a pawn and defend. Yes, and also he knows that there is uh, obviously great preparation by Magnus. You don't give away pawns just like that in move 9 uh, yes. or 10 when um, you play the match, right? Game 6. True. Okay, so what's the idea? After knight c6, I would think that he's not going to be giving the pawn still by playing bishop b2. Somehow I have the feeling that it's about time for white to capture the pawn back. No, but first of all, now if after bishop b2, you can uh, try your idea, yeah, a b3, knight b3, bishop a3, and just clear one tempo down. Compared to the previous variation here. Uh, yes. No, this, this is definitely not happening. Knight into c4. Well, I'm not surprised a bit that he didn't capture the pawn and the... Uh, mm -hmm playing with an extra pawn, but with passive play. But now I think there are a lot of, lot of can questions. You, can you play e5? I mean, e5 is the most principal move in this position, I believe. This is exactly what I wanted to ask you. What about e5 and playing very actively himself, opening up the diagonal for the bishop to g4 or just to come out? And also sometimes knight d4, I guess. It's, yes. And, uh, and Rook will come to c8 sooner or later. I'm not very thrilled with my queen on c2. What to go after e5 actually? Do I play bishop b2? I think bishop b2. Let's go bishop b2. Attack the e5 because this, this has to be the move, I think. Because you have to push it, right? I have to play e4. I don't have any other If chance. you have to push it, I go... Well, first of all, what about bishop f6? Let's talk about this for a moment. Because taking with the queen, I think white will have a good pawn up. Of course, black has the, the, the bishop pair, but still. I don't, I, sure. I, really, I really don't see any compensation at this point. I mean, yeah, I'm not sure it will be. 
But if phone. you would have to take with the phone, knight h4. I don't know, knight h4, you have to push probably f5, right? Or rook e8. I'm not sure what is better. E either way, this question is not looking uh, particularly. You're not happy with black, are you? I mean, I understand it could be possible to play this position uh, as black, but yeah, I, I would be, I'll be scared as black. It's possible, but know. you wouldn't take black here. No, 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 no chance. Particularly, you know, when I know my opponent is prepared, I'm not going to take gf6. Okay, but after e4, bishop f6, you don't have man, much of a choice. No, no, no. Then, I, then, which means we cannot play. We should not. I would not play e5. Let's let's put it that way. Yes, because after bishop b2, there is no way out. There is just no no choice. So, if actually, it is a very important moment that black cannot play e5. If I, if I try to crawl out slowly, let's say I play bishop d7, rook f d8, rook a c8. And try to claim that your queen on c2 is what I'm going to target now. Bishop b2. Okay, rook a c8 or rook f d8 doesn't really matter. At least I don't have to take g into f6. Okay, rook d1. I would go rook c1 maybe prefer, but so, still I want to have one of my rooks on d1. But you are not worried about b5 at this point? Should I? I don't know where to put the knight. Because you might have to take bishop f6 or play knight e3. What about knight g5? Oh, you are in your element, yeah? But then uh, I don't know. e5, right? Yeah. So you want to say bishop c6 is not possible to rook c6 and you have knight d5 bishop f2. Okay, this is I'm not going to blunder this. But now, now rook is now rook is no, now bishop e5. Now bishop e5 I go. Yeah, this looks good. G6. And maybe here is my end. Though I'm not sure if queen d2 is not possible. It's queen b2. No. Is that queen b2 or not? I want queen d2. Okay. Also, also queen b2 was possible, right? On queen b2, can't black go knight g4? <sighs> Bishop h8 is aesthetically beautiful, but happens nothing after f6. And after f6, all the pieces are hanging for white. Yes. Oh, we managed to create a position, A, which will never happen on the board, and B, three of white's minor pieces are hanging. Yeah, so I was thinking queen d2, but I'm not sure I'm going to be in uh, in time with things, because the idea is after takes, to take on f6, and rook f6, queen d7. But okay, black can go just queen e2. Yeah. Also, we are, at this point, we are really, really far from the game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the game is knight c6. Expected that the pawn will be not captured. And now the question is whether knight c4 can white go and continue bishop d2. You said you would be taking here, and yeah. after takes bishop a3. And there is not much of an option, right? Because if I would be captured... Really. I mean, you don't want to capture with queen again, wasting a tempo. Catching with a pawn, I don't see an upside. No, I believe it should be knight c4. Because it was really critical. If black cannot play e5, this is already something. By the way, can I play b5? b5? I mean, I want my bishop on b7. Okay, knight e5. So bc4 is not there and knight e5 you want to take knight into e5 just here yeah? 
I'll just take back. I mean, I can play knight d5. It's not, uh, and I'm then not sure you're going to be happy here. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even sure what if, I don't know, maybe it's crazy, but what if I just take and play bishop b2? I mean, move b5 is not helping you. No, no. I, I really still believe that bishop d7 or rook d8, uh, I mean, these are the moves which are more, uh, more solid. Maybe after bishop d7, knight e5. Yeah. Okay, let's say I take and play rook c8. Take, take rook c8, and I'm going mm -hmm. to go bishop, uh, queen b2. I like queen on b2, and then I'm going to be developing with the bishop to g5. Rook d1, I love my knight on e5. Uh, bishop b5, should I be worried here? Because I have it after, otherwise I start changing, yeah? Bishop also I can actually rook fd8. Rook d1. Oh, I don't know. I, you also point, have bishop a3 at some point. Exactly, exactly. You know, this position I'm not worried about uh, from black side. There is no obvious weakness. All my pieces are developed. What is actually I'm surprised that Magnus is thinking already for like 10 minutes. Most likely, yeah, that uh, either he doesn't remember his notes or this was not on, uh, let's say, top three choice of his notes. So maybe you can tell us little insights about your experiences how is to be a second because uh, you surprised me by saying before the start of the show that uh, actually you've never been in a match of seeing any of the moves made on the board because you were so much a background person at the uh, world championship matches for an end yeah so um i have never seen anand uh, playing a world championship move i mean um i helped him for uh for his kramnik match topolov match and gelfand match and i never actually saw him physically making a move because we never went to the playing venue it was always inside the hotel yeah i mean we would go for walking or something and usually uh you would be surprised when anand was playing we would actually sleep that's the time to catch up for sleep because you know you're awake for whole night you have been walking so when what we used to do was uh, when Anand would go for the World Championship uh, match, he leaves at around uh, 2.40 in his car, 3 o'clock the match starts. We look at the opening and as soon as the opening phase is over, we catch up on our sleep. So we would sleep and some of us, you know, particularly I remember when, uh, let's say Anand played uh, some move that was analyzed by me or he played a novelty that I proposed and then you just cannot sleep. Uh, you know, you are so tense that what will happen that you cannot even get that sleep. So yeah, I never saw uh, him making a move. I never saw a World Championship match. So how many... Oh, I was present in the city. So how many hours actually you were sleeping during the match itself? Uh, back in those days, um, there used to be two games and one rest day. Two games and one rest day. So before the rest day, we used to sleep like 12 hours maybe. So that that night, you know, we really used to catch up. But when there is a game next day, even if we get, I don't know, five hours of sleep, it's actually a blessing. The, the, the very interesting part is actually Anand never told us that, you know, stay awake and analyze. Or he never said, you know, I need this to be done by the end of the day. Actually, throughout my association with Anand, he actually never gave an order, never. So it was always like a friendly way. And whatever we did, whatever I did and whatever the team did for Anand, it's because of his personality. It's because uh, his humbleness. You know, you just you just give your heart for Anand. That's it. 
and he he won't come and tell you uh, you know i want this surya stay awake at night and i want you to finish this he never never ever it was a very healthy atmosphere very interesting to be continued this this uh, insights but we have a move knight c4 yeah knight c4 on the board knight c4 is on the board this is very interesting. What is the relationship between the players and their seconds? Because uh, of course, it's a, it's a work where you have to trust uh, as a person, right, into your seconds. Because uh, for many reasons, first of all, that he he gives his heart, as you said, that really works uh, maximum he can. And uh, and also it, it means a long term uh, uh, partnership or working process. How does the tension escalate? Let's say in the last one month, or where did you feel? Did you see any pattern which repeated in every match? Uh, tension, the pressure. <laughs> that was that was repeating no matter what, yeah. And was and, it all the same, or it was all different? Uh, no, it was different. I I, I felt uh, it was um, it was really uh, at its pinnacle uh, during the girlfriend match when we were unable to come up with literally any ideas until the until the tiebreak match. In which which match? Which uh, the girlfriend match. Girlfriend match. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I got a I got a message from Vibit, and he actually pointed out a very important detail that we missed. That we said d five here, and knight f e five we decided, but this actually uh, loses to uh, knight d four. Knight d four. <laughs> Thanks, Vibit. Yeah, this was actually. Uh, so knight c5 had, had, had to be played. But actually, why is this losing? Black is just playing bishop b7? Yeah, queen d1, bishop. Well, it's not losing, but it's uh, black is taking over. Nice yeah. for black. Yeah. Yeah, completely missed this. Okay, so knight c5. Or knight c5. Probably, yeah. Okay, now knight b4, queen b2, but at least now I'm happy your knight is on f3. Then at least that gets bishop b7. Where? Now you go bishop b7? No, no, no. I play knight b4 now. Knight b. b. Knight, b4. knight b4. Yes, knight b4. Okay. And then play bishop b7 and I might be on time. Actually, this black is definitely on time, yeah? Well, let's see if after b5, what uh, white can be doing. It's a very aggressive approach, I must say. Jan is not the most solid player in the world. So... But usually they are not so aggressive. Uh, until this point, you barely see these uh, pawn moves, which <laughs> two at a time. <laughs> two, two. Somehow they keep it uh, solid. But B5 is very provocative, very concrete. So what if white goes uh, to E3 with the knight? Then I'm in time to play uh, bishop B7. I'm thinking, should I include knight B4? Okay, let's say bishop B7 because I don't see a threat. So maybe, you know what, I just come back to d2. Okay, bishop b7. Bishop b7, bishop b2. And now you go knight b4. Oh. I'm okay with that. Actually, I'm, why not rook, rook a c8? You want rook c1 or what? I'm always thinking about knight g5 or bishop f6 also an option. Yeah, here bishop f6 is an option, but should I be 
yeah, you should be worried here because GF6, you have... I don't know how much you should be worried, but... Knight, uh, knight B4. Yeah, maybe Knight E4 is kind of early, so why should you be going Rook C1 or Rook D1? This should be fine, yeah? Can I move my Knight somewhere? Now this I'm not particularly scared, uh, unlike the other variation we saw with E5. That was actually scary. Let's go back to B5, because this is very critical. And again, you see, we are, we are reaching out to a position where you're trying to provoke Jan. Come, play B5, be aggressive. It's an interesting idea, right? Yeah. Or you can just go solid, play bishop d7, play rook d8, the, not the most active moves. So it's like uh, Jan must have this battle inside yeah. of him that I want to go b5. Why b5 is not good? It's so nice. It's active. Also, it, it a lot depends on uh, the playing style. Yeah? For example, if uh, Karyakin was black, I would rule out b5 and e5 instantly. You know, he would go bishop d7, rook fd8. Even if he is slightly worse, he'll say, okay, that's it. I'll just, I'll hold this position. A lot depends on uh, on playing style. And many players, uh, they don't like to defend in a, um, in a, getting into a position where they really have to sit and wait. And I think Jan comes to really that category he, where he wants to create a mess. He would not like a position where he has to sit and defend. Well, uh, today was published by Leoncho Garcia, who is writing for El País, a daily article. Mm -hmm. he, the title was Perfection is Boring. What do you think about that? Because uh, I think it was Graham 3 when uh, in the press conference they pointed out that practically it was a perfect game which they played. And B5 is on the board. B5 on the board. Young B5 style. is on the board. Jan said, I, I told you, Jan is exactly like this. He, he does not like uh, to, to get just a slightly worse end game or slightly worse position. He really enjoys when things are very concrete. But I think and, also he has the self-confidence after game five to make such a decision. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> such a concrete move, yeah? Also to play this when you know your opponent is in the preparation. So he... Even if he has not checked, one thing is for sure this position is it's not worse for white, that cannot be bad for white. It was checked by computer. And then you go b5. Hats off to him. I love it. So concrete. And as we did rightly pointed out, there is no knight fe5. So we are uh, talking about knight c5 and knight cd2 at this point. Yeah, I don't know, knight e3, somehow it does not seem to be the spot for the knight, right? On Particularly, e3. you don't want to put the knight on e3 when black pawn is on e6, a kind of control. Yeah, but it's also something, and actually, I think this is what uh, Magnus was uh, thinking about when he, before playing knight c4, because obviously he saw that after knight c4, the b5 is, uh, is coming. He, he saw it coming B5 and he was not sure, but there was nothing better he could choose from. So, oh. <clears throat> so B5, we said Knight C, D2 is one option. Yeah, Knight D2 and Knight E5, right? These are the two options. Yeah. Okay, if I go Bishop B7 and after Bishop B2, can I, can I move but on I, or something? But I think there are many options. Knight b4 is also something that uh, can be very unpleasant. I actually wanted to do this after bishop b2, bishop b7. Might be the same. So I had the following idea uh, to play bishop b7. Okay. Bishop b2. First, I rejected knight b4 because after uh, queen b1, I thought you will kick my knight with a3. But then I spotted it's possible to play rook c8 with the idea of a3 knight c2. So after a3? 
Night I'm C2? I'm not sure you want Knight C2. It's, uh, Why not? I take on A3. I can take on A3 also, no? Ah, you're so greedy. Go on. But your knight is on A3. I'm not sure it's so healthy there. Yes. And in my defense, I am. Uh, this is the analysis board and not the life board. But so now I, I go Queen A1. B4? <laughs> Is this bad? Why should uh, why yeah, should this, this, this is this is not good for white? So okay. then, knight not... but after knight c two, I go b four. Hold on, I go b four. Tricky. Okay, so okay, I move my bishop. Bishop goes there. Then I can I. I think I can take and rook a2. Uh, could I put my or, bishop on Or rook a2 first, sorry. Rook a2 because after bishop d5 you're going to get bishop f6. Could I put my bishop on b6 instead? No problem. You still want rook a2, yeah? I mean this Wait. knight on c2. Let's see what can you do. I'm thinking. So uh, knight e4, is it an option? What about bishop g7? Okay. Yeah, this probably I don't have any tactic. Okay, so let's come back. I mean, with your knight on c2, you have to be a bit careful. That's true. Hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is not... But and I'm not uh, sure you don't have a nice position after a3 knight to b5, bd5. Yeah. No, I was calculating if after b4 I could take on f2, play knight g4 and try to get both the rooks. But... Uh, there exactly? No, you said b4, right? Yes. So bishop f2? Rook f2. It's a knight g4, but there, there's no attack here. Knight g4, knight g4, I want it. Ah, you don't take that first. Well, I want my knight on e3, but rook f1. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, rook f1. Like, if I would get a check in the diagonal, that would be nice, but I don't see how to Yeah, but that. from e7, you don't give so easily. Yeah, no. No, this will not. And even then, it's not the end. True, true. Very interesting situation. In game six, where Magnus is playing with the white pieces, we have after move 11 already kind of fire on the board. Things what are very sharp. Might see if I Knight c5. Actually, that's the most logical reaction. Sure. So, uh, what was it? Knight b4? White queen doesn't have a good spot, though. Queen b2, I go. I go queen b2. So, bishop b7, yeah? <clears throat> bishop b7, and then I'm going to be developing somewhere with my bishop to d2 or to g5. G5 and try to kick it out as quickly as I possible. I was sure about that, that you're going to ask my bishop, <laughs> where are you heading to? You want to put it on H4 or, or take on F6? Well, I don't want to take. Let's say Bishop H4. It looks very risky, but let's see. Because for now, after G5, I'm going to be taking this, right? So this you don't want to try out. 
Yeah. Uh, well, wait, bishop takes g2, I have a queen b7 check, so... And? Well, at least I unpin myself. So you play okay, f3. Now I can move my knight, yeah? But where? Yeah, I would be there. surprised if white has not enough compensation here. <clears throat> Uh, could I could I do bishop e seven to keep everything intact? And instead of bishop h4, could you take bishop f6? If I take bishop f6, I think you just take back with the queen. And there is this pin. So the knight cannot jump, right? Because of the pin here. Yeah. True. All right, so... Uh... What else could you do apart from bishop g5? Sorry? What else could you do apart from bishop g5? Maybe maybe try something else. Yeah, yeah still I didn't give up after bishop g5, bishop h4. But let's hmm. consider something else as well. Let's say I go a3. Okay, knight moves where? c6 or d5? Okay, let's say c6. Let's say c6. Yeah, that's a big question. Uh, how to continue with white to play b4 or leave it that way? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm thinking about this variation. I'm thinking about this variation you sacrificed with knight g5. Did I? Did we just? Uh... You mean after bishop g5, bishop h4? Yeah, yeah. I think I have to start with uh, bishop into g2. What did we see? We saw knight g5 first take and then bishop g2, because there is knight g4 yes. then. Then knight g4 wins on the spot. Oh yeah. No, but I can revert the move order. I could start with bishop g2 first. I guess you have to take knight e4. Knight e4. Wow, what, what, what is this? Bishop e4? Okay, I take this also. Knight into g4. And bishop e7. I do have four pieces. I, I have, four have pieces. Only three and I have f3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, I don't give up all my pieces. Yeah. So, okay, king takes. And now I take, and now I go queen b7 check. That should be fine, no? F3 yeah, it and seems to be, It seems to be that black should be fine here. I think Magnus is thinking already for, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. Yeah, but it's a very concrete decision at this point, yeah? Like, do we play knight g2 or e5? But it's surprising in some ways if he, it's his preparation that on this, he did not make his decision at home. Don't you think so? 
Yes, and also I think okay. Imagine uh, if you were advising Magnus, you were if you were in his team, mm -hmm. and you know at this point, okay. First of all, after third move G three, there are so many options, so many lines they have to see. There is a hypothetical, you know, one percent chance that this position could come in the board, and now there are moves like can play e five, b five, rook d eight, bishop d seven. How much preference would you give that you know b five will be played on the board as as a as an advisor? Would you say you know spend more time on this? This can actually happen. You would reach exactly this position, and you know what? There are out of all these possibilities, Yan will come up with b five. I remember a number of times we had this situation, you know, where we would say, yeah, this is what Gambira says, but you know, it is highly unlikely that you will get in the board. Let's look at you know something which are more likely to happen. So I, I can totally understand even if b five was there in the computer notes. But it was considered as inhuman. How much percentage uh, do you have in your analysis when you were working for Vidvishi, and how much percentage of his notes he's taking with him in his head to the game? Like, how do you sort out the important information and the less important information? What are the points where you say this he doesn't need because he will remember, he will figure it out? More or less, can you estimate it? Actually, many times it even happened that we had this argument uh, among the seconds at night when Anand is sleeping that tomorrow morning, are we going to show him this or hide from him? We even went to that uh, extent, yeah? Because, uh, you know, there could be some obscure computer line uh, which could get into some very messy position. And once you show it to Anand, he cannot unsee it. He cannot uh, delete it from his mind. And then he might end up focusing in this impractical variation more than the lines that could actually happen. So not necessarily all the time we have to focus on the moves that computers are suggesting. Particularly, you know, when you are coming up with a novelty, not novelty, some sort of real line, you know, as early as uh, move three, like in this game. And when you play third move G3, you don't know what sort of positions are coming. And even if you had this position in the computer, I can totally imagine the team Magnus saying, look, very rare chance this is happening and you know this will not take place. And I can also imagine the team Magnus saying, okay, let's not even tell him B5 exists. If it happens, it happens. He will figure it out over the board. He is Magnus. Is because we did, we did to Anand number of times. We we just didn't say and we said, okay, if this happens, you know, let him figure it out. He, he will be fine. So what you're saying is that for a team, when you work for a world championship match, whether you're a challenger or world champion, doesn't matter. Your team is working, try to figure out as many alternatives as possible, ideas. At the same time, your job is also to filter it the way that what do you tell to your player to go there because it would disturb his mind there will be all these dust in his mind which would or could disturb him because he would be would be afraid of it or worried about it or it would make him discouraged to go into that line Absolutely. I mean, think about this. Let's say uh, I can only talk from Anand's uh, team point of view. Imagine this. He always had uh, like all these matches I was there. He had four core members uh, team and some special, you know, uh, top guys helping him. But four of us, that's myself, Rustam, uh, Peter Heine and uh, Vedacek, uh, Radek. Imagine this. We are walking every day for, uh, you know, 10 hours, 12 hours. And four of us are individually walking. We cannot, uh, you know, dump all the information to Anand, whatever we look throughout the day. It is, it is mathematically impossible for him to uh, digest all, the, all that information. And that's why we are there to, to clean it up, to clean the garbage and to give him the gist of it, to give him the most essential part of it. He doesn't need to know many things. Okay, so if we go more deeply, because I think it is very interesting for me and also our audience who wants to feel and understand why is it so special, the World Championship match, what it takes to be 
taking the pressure, uh, analyze, make decisions. Who is making the decision, let's say, your, we pick an opening, uh, whatever, Catalan. Who is making the decision which line he's, he's going to be picking? Let's say you prepare two different lines for a World Championship match, and it's clear that probably you're going to be alternating those two different uh, ideas, or three or four, four different surprises. Who makes the decision which one to start with? Yeah, this is, um, this is an, uh, a very important uh, question and it's not easy to decide. Of course, Anand is the ultimate boss. So the ultimate priority we have is, uh, you know, we say Anand, we give him the positions, like these are the positions you are getting. And even if we like certain things and he says, no, I don't like the look of it, we have to throw it away. So, so sometimes, he, sorry to interrupt, but sometimes he just, you show him something, he says, I just don't look the like the look of it. My intuition says, no, I don't want to see it. That's it. That That's that's the final verdict. It doesn't matter. I mean, if we are absolutely certain, no, no, this is completely good. And, you know, it's the first look uh, by which he's saying the position is not good. Maybe if, if we can explain some more detail, because we might have worked, you know, 10 hours on that position. So if we can go further deep, maybe he will start liking it. That's a different story. But Anand has got a phenomenal intuition. If he says something he doesn't like, you know, usually we don't push it. It has also happened a number of times the reverse way. Like computer is giving some advantage to, let's say, white or black. Let's say white, for example. And Anand looks at the position. No, no, this is easy. I put the pieces here, here, you know, no problem. I'll play this. And then we are happy. We don't have to bring down, you know, 0.40 to 0 0.00 anymore because Anand is happy with that position. By the way, meanwhile, meanwhile, I just uh, got a very interesting message uh, from uh, from a from a grandmaster from Bangladesh, Shifat Pinsatta, who says, "Is in the current position knight g5, b into c4, bishop b2 seems like an option." Ah, knight g5. I might have to start with knight d4. Yeah, knight d4 is an option. Yeah, but then it gets also very interesting. Yeah, like because now if I move my queen, let's say. Where do I move? D1? It should B1. be 7. If I move it on B1, but that allows knight E to check as well, yeah? Yeah, I thought we don't want to give that pawn. Yeah. Okay, so knight G5, knight D4 is really important in this case. It seems like the D4 square is extremely important for uh, white, not to allow true. the black knight to penetrate there. True, true. So actually going back a little bit, because we we are going to see some move and we looked quite a bit of this. Uh, how much the engine is part of a preparation in a World Championship match? How much it uh, leads the direction of the development and uh, the directions which path you take? Huge. Uh so I think it's it's important to be ahead of time. That's all you need. You don't have to find the exact best move or something. You have to just be ahead of time. For example, uh, during Kramnik match, uh, we had access to Ripka. We had this uh, back then, you know, we, we had the remote engine access, which was uh, uh, new stuff. By the way, Knight C5 on the board. Knight C5 on the board. Yeah. So we had this... Uh, uh, new Ripka and uh, remote engines and we thought you know we are finishing all the lines we prepared very heavily all this Meran, Botvinnik, you know F3 Nimzo on today if we look at the analysis and put Stockfish or uh, Leela then you know not necessarily all the analysis are holding but imagine this uh, back in those days uh, including Anand all this uh, grandmasters uh, theoretician, they actually thought completely differently. So sometimes it actually makes me a bit philosophical that, you know, today we are saying, ah, no, this position is not good because stockfish is saying such and such thing. Tomorrow, some other fish will say, no, no, this position is actually fine. And again, we'll start nodding, ah, that other fish is saying this position is good. So is it, uh, it's very important how much actually we understand the position and how much we are just, you know, space burning like um 
like a monkey that yeah this is plus equal this is this yes, is something I, I, I think it's uh, very interesting what you're saying that you have to understand the position. And this we were talking with our nation and I'm always discussing this that even if you, you have a line which you work out and you give it to someone, it's still not a real uh, help necessarily because if he doesn't understand or she's not understanding the middle game of it and the position, it's practically worth nothing. So what happens when you do give some material to an end, which actually has to be, <coughs> sorry, invested a lot of energy to understand the position and the ins and outs and feel it, right? Only one uh, who is going to be faster or what kind of little details you have to understand of the position. How can you give the knowledge and material to an end, which obviously, let's say you worked as a team 40 hours on it and then you just have to give it to him the material is he someone who is catching it so fast that it's a fraction of time what you spent well he is catching it fast but also end of the day he is also human i mean it is impossible that you know we are working for eight hours with computer and then showing him something and he catches in two minutes no that's not going to happen and uh, although we are filtering it we are just telling him the things that he needs to know then of course we he is also having access to all the files whatever we are checking so that you know if he has any doubts he can navigate through those files now the most important part is what is a novelty so many people think whenever you know there is a new move that's a novelty well theoretically speaking that's right whenever there is a new move that is a novelty but imagine this uh, let's say right in this position for example in the game night before is played but Imagine this computer says, no, no, it's not knight b4, but let's say, you know, the bishop b7 is the best move. Everybody in the world knows by now that bishop b7 is the next move. So will you call it a novelty or not? It might be a novelty, but it's actually useless novelty. Because the other team is also working. They also have similar kind of machine. They have access to all the bases, uh, whether it's correspondence base or computer database or human games. So the other team is also working. So you cannot just say, you know, engine says this is the best move. So I came up with this. No, you did not come up with this. Engine showed this. And just like you, there are, you know, thousands of other people who also saw this. So you have to give, particularly in a World Championship match, you have to come up with something which either the computer doesn't say, it is not on top three choice, or, you know, you have to be sneaky. Like we saw, let's say in this match, you know, the move order, the subtleties. Try, I, I, I always wondered how it would be, you know, we give exact same position, let's say this position to different people and we will see the top players will come to similar conclusion, but not necessarily, you know, just because you have access to the best engine, you will analyze uh, in the best possible manner. I think this is, this is for certain. You need to have that human touch. Yeah, this is still uh, interesting areas where we can go deeper on that and we might be having time for that. But now knight b4 is on the board. So the question is where Magnus will move his queen. Not too much of an alternative, I think. The question is whether he's going to be moving to b1 or to b2. Isn't that uh, the two main alternative? I mean, b1 I do not like at all because the main purpose of b1, if I understand correctly, is, you know, you want to have this knight g5 idea at some point, but your knight on e5 is actually blocking uh, the bishop b2, bishop f6. So intuitively it feels uh, queen b1 should not work and bishop b7 should be fine. I actually like the other option which you said, put the queen on b2 and bishop on g5, queen b2 on the board. Okay, so we were a little ahead of time ourselves because we had this on the board and now we were looking bishop b7 right what yeah, other bishop, alternatives are there or I is it worth just, looking at it i just cannot imagine anything else apart from bishop b7 at this point i don't know can black go h6 just to prophylactically playing h6 against potential bishop g5 moves black can i mean i'll be nervous about this Hanging eight rook. 
Yes, okay, it's hanging if it would be attacked, but how can you attack it the way that I will have problems? It's also true. I don't see any it, obvious tactics at this point. It should be seven in the next move, whatever white is going to be playing. Unless it's a3. Let's do a3. Let's do a3. Let's do a3. Knight d5. Knight d4 or something? Knight d4. And I want to take on b5? Yeah, I see you want to grab this pawn. Okay, so I just go a b uh, a six. <clears throat> can I can I create? Uh, I mean, I'm calculating some lines with I don't know e four knight c six e five b four, but uh, not sure in which order. Okay, let's say e five. Yeah, and after knight moves away somewhere, first of all, I don't really have a good spot. You want to go knight c six and e five? Of and course, we have bishop. E5. We have bishop b7 on the board, the most logical yeah, yeah. move, not wasting time with development. So now, is bishop g5 the best move or uh, what to play? a3 is possible. Okay, mm -hmm. what about a3? Where do you go with your knight? d5? <clears throat> uh, didn't we see this position where we were not uh, sure? And actually it's on the board a3. We said both are possible, yeah? knight d5 and knight c6. I think we saw knight c6. Knight c6, and now the question is if white is uh, developing to be g5 with the bishop. Or, or playing knight d3, yeah? I don't like knight d3. Because bishop d6 you don't like. Yeah, I mean, after b5, suddenly you have such a great shelter for your bishop on b6 keeping it on the diagonal here so what can go wrong for black and knight on d3 is doing what yeah and as they say yeah, in catalan the <clears throat> if we have to summarize catalan uh, like in a very basic manner then if black gets c5 and uh, without anything happening immediately then usually black is doing fine because the main problem in catalan is the c8 bishop once you solve this you don't have any weakness yeah Absolutely. So, at this point, if nothing is happening, any con anything concrete, strategically speaking, black has zero weakness. And black bishop is out, so strategically black is doing fine. So what if I go bishop f4, let's say? Rook c8 or something? Which rook one? A? a? Ah, rook a. Yeah, it's a question, how can uh, white grab any, or create any opportunity for himself? Yeah. I mean, eventually one day knight d5 may come from black side, right? Looks like black got a very good Catalan. Somehow black is more energetic in this position for the moment. Somehow yeah. a little more space. I think b5 was a star move. I really loved b5. Psychologically speaking, b5 was uh, really a star move. To play this in World Championship match when you are caught unprepared, you know, you have that much of uh, that kind of confidence in your calculation. It's very concrete. Let's go b5. In a world championship match, how much do you know from your opponent's camp who are their seconds? Uh, it gets tricky. Uh, most of the time we had information. By the way, talking about seconds, uh, I really like the inclusion of uh, Peter Leko with uh, Jan. Because I, I don't know if he's physically there in Dubai, but we all know he was helping him for candidates. And judging by the fact that he is not on any commentary just uh, right now, it is more or less clear he's there. So 
I think it's really a good, great combination. And I am personally very curious, you know, to see how they would be analyzing uh, on the board because uh, I, I worked with Peter on a number of occasions uh, in Anand's team and also I visited him, uh, stayed in his place, worked with him. Uh, Peter is a guy who openly says he does not believe in attack. And we all know how much uh, Jan likes to attack. So it, it will be very, very interesting to see how they will be analyzing. And I think it's a, it's a very good blend, uh, you know, that uh, Jan got Peter to, uh, which, which definitely will make him more solid. There's no question on this. Yeah, I'm getting back to your question, Judith, that, um, uh, yeah, how much influence, uh, how much we get to know about the other uh, team members. I remember we had this, uh, this this mild mild you know like uh, shock and attack when we got to know that uh, for Kramnik match Kramnik had Rublevsky, uh, Fresinet and Peter for the Bond World Championship yeah. match, and all of them were E4 player. And by now it's public that uh, okay take a guess what did we prepare for the Kramnik match if Kramnik would have played E4 in game one. Or any 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 moment. What was our opening? Sicilian. Yes. What Sicilian? Shvashnikov. Dragon. Dragon. We prepared dragon, and also uh, even I remember when we went to Bonn, uh, we were complete. The seconds were completely paranoid that okay, you know. Uh, are we seriously going to play Dragon? At some point, we should start working on uh, D4. But Anand was confident that uh, Kramnik is not going to play E4. He was so confident on this. And at some point, only in Bond, we were like, no, we really, really have to check Dragon very heavily. You know, we sit there, we start working. Before that, we always work only on D4, C4, Knight F3, all these things, not on E4. Wow. But was so, there E4 game? No. I mean, not from uh, from Nick's side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting what feelings the players have, right? Because, of course, to cover everything, E4, D4, C4, Knight F3, it's almost impossible, right? Yeah, so but you, you have to... Well, uh, it depends on the player. Like, for example, with Kramnik and uh, Gelfand, uh, we could be more or less certain, although it backfired because we thought Gelfand is very principal. He does not change his openings much, but then in the match, he comes up uh, in a completely different uh, shape and opening repertoire. But for example, with Topolov, okay, you have to see everything, yeah? And also when Anand played Magnus, uh, I was not in the match, but before the match, uh, uh, I was there in the training sessions. And there also, you have to see everything. I mean, how do you know what, uh, what move can possibly he play? capable of playing anything and everything. So what do you think, what is the most difficult uh, part for the player of the World Championship match? Is it the pressure or about the opening? The pressure about the fact that they can lose or win the title? Is it the pressure, the outside? people put on the on the player or the player themselves they put on themselves i would say one of the most difficult part is to um to stay at your best shape as a player when you are constantly 90 percent of your time you are actually uh checking engines and you know you're working with openings so often it happens we have seen you know when players are playing match matches they're their actual strength sometimes goes down because this is not an open tournament. So, you know, you were spending a lot of time on openings and engines, and this is not necessarily very good uh, as a player. The kind of match preparation, uh, the kind of uh, amount and energy it takes, you know, just to go through all these lines, this insurmountable variations that you have to check and, you know, keep that takes your memory space. And it affects you to some extent as a player. Did you ever calculate how many pages or rums? 
Well, at some point, Gigabytes you, know, you have on the, what, let's say, an ant had to memorize, go through? Sure, sure. I mean, number of times, you know, we were checking like, uh, particularly first few matches. After a novelty, it would be normal to analyze, you know, 5,000 moves. 4,000, 5,000 moves, you know, after a novelty came. So the files will, files are of course bro broken into number of parts. It's not like, you know, one file will have 20,000 moves, but uh, at some point, you know, you start, you, you also get paranoid. You start checking every line again and again, and you come up with something then you start checking again. So it, it just builds, but from Anand, the uh, one thing uh, that I saw in all these matches, he would really like to deviate early, as quickly as possible. Not to find a novelty on move 20, but you know, come up with something move 7, move 8, you know, deviate quickly. Which is what, by the way, we, we also saw in this particular game. Third move, G3. It's not, it, I, it has been played a number of times, but you know, it's not a very common uh, move order. Yes, we have knight C6 on the board. <clears throat> yeah. Magnus still has a little advantage on time, but just a few minutes compared to Jan. And we are reaching move 14, so it's quite okay the time management what the players are uh, having right now up to this point. Is White going to be playing Bishop G5 maybe now? Yeah, this is what we have been... Uh... No, we had bishop g5 no, we had bishop before. looking we had bishop without a3. True, true, true. Because now I don't have h6, no? You just take on take on f6. Why not? Well, you take on c6, take on f6. Ah, you mean take here and there. And why? Ah, now finally the b5 move yeah. can be. But even this is not a problem because it takes. No, then rook f1. Bishop ah, no, I, I want bishop d4. The rook c8 is also just fine, right? Yeah, yeah rook c8 looks fine. Rook c8 is And how is this ending? Uh, I don't, do I have pressure? So let's say rook fc, ah, you have. Knight yeah, d3, have we have knight d3 in the game. Knight d3. We spoke about this, yeah, you said bishop We spoke d3. about this, yeah. Well, maybe knight d3 can be interesting because now black goes back, let's say bishop b6, and mm. maybe he has in mind some time to b4 and to get something out of the c5 square, what do you think? Though white has the c4 square, which is very weak. Yeah. So what do I do here? I mean, okay, it's hard me to imagine that black has any problem. Black can go knight e4, for example. Right? Yeah. So I wonder if after bishop b6, what white has in mind? Because bishop g5, I just don't... I'm not impressed. With h6, bishop f6, queen f6. No, this what? is nothing. No, I this mean, is it's not. absolutely nothing, right? No, no, no absolutely nothing, yeah. And a4 you take or you play a6 or you play b4? Sorry? a4 you take or what do you do? a4? Why should I be worried about a4? I can also but go a6. I was hoping you will take, I will swing my rook to h4. No, please. I would never take and make you happy this way to go here. This is what you want. More importantly, you covered the e4 square from my knight. Exactly. No, I think I was not even considering b8. b4 even I would consider maybe. I, but, yeah. Also, I, 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 don't see, I don't see a single problem for black. Yeah, b4 also, why not? No, but I think he would be going b4 somehow to control the c5. Don't you think so? Yes, but I also feel uh, c4 will also be weak, yeah? It's And it's not like knight c5 is happening after b4. I really don't know what uh, white has in mind after bishop b6, because knight e4 is a move which can be extremely annoying shortly. True. 
<clears throat> also b4 okay let's say i'm playing rook fd8 I, I just don't understand what white is doing at this point rook fd8 mm -hmm. how to play no bishop f4 knight d4 knight e4 no knight d4 i wanted uh, knight d4 Actually, already putting some pressure. Going to more unpleasant directions. We should be six on the board, of course. Yeah. So these are the positions um, where I remember, you know, we would, uh, in our notes, we would always say, this will be your bailout. You know, it's like, if you get, if your opponent plays this, you know, just make a draw and come back. So I, I would believe at this point, Magnus will be happy with the bailout. I don't see any advantage really. Yeah, but can we say already after Queen Bishop B6 that I think Black has no problem at all. Zero weakness and Bishop is out, Rooks are connected. He's more active, more developed. And most importantly, his moves are very natural. I mean, if I'm Black, my moves are flowing. But from White, I actually have to come up, I have to create something. quite happy with uh, black at this point i think ian is happy with black at this point too yeah though black is not better no i don't think black's better i, mean, I think it's more pleasant though to play it with black yeah, but White can also say he also doesn't really have any weakness. Yeah, he moves his bishop, connects the rook. Although, good question is where do you move your bishop? Where do you move your bishop? Bishop g5, did we want to play h6? <clears throat> yes. So now take, and we said this is nothing. Yeah. Well, takes, takes. Okay, let's say take, if I want to just play simple, take, take. Uh, knight d2. I thought rook c1, knight c5. Pick up the bishop. Knight a5. Okay, so then play rook a c1 in this case. Also knight a5. And then knight c5. Knight c5. Why not? You're really trying to reach a draw, right? Yeah, I'm happy with the draw at this point. I mean, should I be better in the curve, in the current position? I don't see any reason why I should be better. <clears throat> it's pretty drawish after this. Yeah. Okay, Did bishop you... takes, rook, rook takes. takes, I go a6. So what can I do now? Knight d4, can I play? Knight d4. Well, I'm hoping I'll stabilize my knight with e3 and if you play okay, e5, I, I, have take, to take. I mean, even if I go e5 here, I don't think you're going to be better with white. I'm not claiming I'm better at all. Okay, but I don't play e5. I go probably rook d8 or something. e3. Actually, this I don't know. Maybe e5, knight f5, knight b3, rook c6. I have. Yeah, maybe this is better than what you had up to this point. This is the best position I'm seeing so far. Exactly, uh, for a long, yeah. long time. Yeah. So, what are we looking at now? You played bishop g5, right? Actually, after bishop g5, h6 is not even a must. I mean, no, if I can. can I just go rook d8. Yeah, you can completely ignore. That's true. With the idea to go move into the center with knight d4, right? Oh, well, Anish, I see. I was just trying to check, you know, what Anish said. We are already missing his commentary. Although I'm commenting, 
It says Jan didn't take the pawn. Both players out of shape. Draw again. So he predicted a draw already. Well, I also predicted draw by now because I yeah. like it more to play with black. But of course, Magnus is controlling so much a game when he feels that it's little suspicious or whatever. I mean, he just goes automatically okay i will simplify if i have to i play passive as he did the, in the previous game and just goes for it. he went bishop g5 yeah but it will be extremely difficult for him to crack uh, Jan. it seems what do you think is coming uh rook fd8 or h6 i don't think he will play h6 why, why to waste time? For now, there is no threat, and he can go h6 later also. Yeah. I think I like rook d8. Look, look, at, look at Jan's it. speed. Look, look at Jan's just speed. Just played it. Yeah, instantly. Yes, because he was uh, calculating and thinking, right? In his yeah, head, yeah. Uh, while he was out in, uh, in the room area where... He, can, he has a monitor, he can be out there, calculating. There was not much of an option for white. Sure, sure. Well, I, think, I think if white would go not bishop g5, he would be possibly risking already giving the initiative completely for black. If let's say black can go knight e4 and f5 or something. Yeah. So bishop g5 is keeping it safe. Yeah. <clears throat> So Jan should be very happy with this uh, his play so far. What do you think about the World Championship format itself? There are uh, so many talks and so many debates, I think on all level, between amateurs, between chess enthusiasts, between professionals, within FIDE, I think on every level there is a debate for the, especially since 2018, since we had all the classical game drawn between Caruana and Carlsen. Don't you think it's about time to change something drastically? Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a possible, but it's also, it has been a tradition with the matches. What is the most uh, decisive match we saw? I think it will be Kramnik Topolov. So many results, yeah. Less than fifty percent games ended in a draw. But uh, after that, yeah, so many draws uh, are happening. But again, I cannot blame. I mean, players are actually fighting. We are not seeing many dull draws. They are trying something. They try to take uh, the opponent out, and then you know, um, it just doesn't work out. Uh, what I, uh, I mean, knockout was tried. You played uh, the World Championship match in a closed format, so that was tried. Uh, how to make it more, uh, more, more authentic? Like you know, the idea should be the strongest player wins, and should we give this in uh, one tournament in knockout? Not, not completely sure. I'm in not. The, I think the match format is not bad, and we have a heritage of that. That that's how really the two great minds, they battle it out in certain number of games, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, as I see it lately, there is, of course, they increase the number of games, they have less free days. Somehow they try to make the players come out of their comfort zone in a way. So how to make it more challenging for the players at the same time, not losing the, the tension, not losing the seriousness and the mm -hmm. value and the pride what is around the World Championship match. So I would think, for example, that maybe we should be merging the World Championship match in different time formats. What do you think to have classical game one day, the next day a rapid uh, few games, the third day you have a mini match of a blitz game. Even it can be much more number of games even than 14, but to mix it with, uh, with uh, different time controls, which need a completely different temper, different preparation. 
So the players are really getting a little bit confused or something. Yeah. By the way, this brings to me uh, brings back to another question which I often get from non-chess players, and I always struggle to answer. They, if they ask me simple question, what is the rapid time control? What is the classical time control? And what is the blitz time control? Because you know they are also following tournaments, and it's like uh, so many time controls we have. So what is a classical format, for example? No, I would say I would say that classical format we say maximum five hours. I would say I should I don't think they should be playing more than that. So what we have now, the players are having what two hours? Well, we have more two hours each for forty moves. Then they have one hour each for another twenty moves. So that's already six hours, and then fifteen minutes each. And from move 61, they get bonus time of 30 seconds. I think it's a little bit too long, especially for these two players, Magnus yeah. and Jan. I think they would absolutely not need this time control. First of all, I think it could be shortening. The rapid time control, I think if we talk about World Championship match, I would go for the 25 or 30 minutes for each, having 5 or 10 seconds per move. And in the blitz game, of course, I would like to avoid all all kind of uh, smashing the clock and losing on time kind of things. So probably in the blitz, I would be going for um, well, five, four, two, four, three, something like that to keep the blitz uh, spirit of the game, but not to be able to lose on time. Sure. By the way, Bishop F6 is on the board, and at this point, we have to take a break for two, three minutes for, uh, uh, for some technical reasons and uh
Great. Hi, everybody. We had a little small issue, technical issue, but we are back with Surya. And let's make a summary of what has happened in uh, the first uh, two hours, right? Because we have nearly two hours already that the game is running. This is game six of the World Championship match. So far, we had five draws with some very exciting ideas and exciting games. From our perspective, Grandmasters, we do appreciate the ideas which has happened there, even though for some people who are uh, not professionals and maybe the ideas are not so clear and not so obvious, the players are having a lot of pressure in this match as well. This is game six. It's supposed to be, or it should be, up to 14 games, and we'll see who is going to be scoring seven and a half first, or we are going to have a playoff. But what is happening today? Magnus is playing with the white pieces, and he was playing an interesting opening, which was uh, 3G3 at the very, very early. I just want to show it on the board, the G3 move. So it was kind of unexpected. It was not a Catalan in the very beginning, but it was a very strange setup holding back the C4 move. And then later on, there was a pawn sacrifice and it was not taken by Nepomniachi because he's not the, that kind of player who wants to capture a pawn and wants to be passive. So he said, no, development is much more important for me than your pawn Magnus. And he played B5. This is the move of the day, I believe. What do you think, uh, Surya? Absolutely. Uh, psychologically also, I think this is the move of the day. Because at this point, um, it was clear that Magnus was uh, in his preparation. And to believe in your calculation, to believe that, you know, nothing, nothing is wrong here. And to go for B5, particularly when there, was, there were options like Bishop D7, Rook D8, some solid moves. But this was very concrete, and I think this was uh, the first bold move. And by the way, the second bold move happened just when we took the break. And which I must say is very surprising and also typically of Fion style. At this Didn't point, it's like, yeah. yeah, that he did not, he was not ready to exchange the queen, right? So he took with the pawn because he said, it's a middle game. I want to see what's going on. And the c5 square is protected by the queen and the bishop at the same time. And white played rook c1. Especially the move gf6, g takes f6 is surprising because, you know, if you take with the queen, you know this, nothing can go wrong at this point. You know the position is completely equal and most likely the game would end in a draw. g into f6 is basically saying that, you know, I want to keep the game going. I mean, I don't believe that uh, Jan for even one second thought that after queen f6, he can be worse. There's just no way this is happening. So g into f6, he is saying, okay, let's play. You know, I'll keep the position dynamic and let's continue. At the same time, maybe this is the moment what Magnus was waiting for also. That let's do something, let's have decision which is made by uh, Jan. And we could see by him playing b5 that he was ready for a fight. He was maybe ready for sharpening out a little bit more than previously. So th in this game, we see really in some of the decisions what Jan was making, that he's ready to, to battle it out and not to go always on the, on the safest road. True. Well, I mean, if black would have changed queens, then it's just impossible to imagine anything can go wrong here. But I think it's also a matter of uh, style. I wonder what Ian has in mind. Does he want to play knight d4? Or I mean, what's, the, what's the upside? Why would you want to keep the queen? Let's put it this way. Yeah, knight, d4, knight d4 looks the most obvious continuation for black, I believe. Mm -hmm. At least justifying that, you know, I kept the queen on b2 so that after knight d4, I gain one extra tempo. So the question after knight d4, maybe white just wants to go knight h4. What do you think? To, to exchange the bishops and let's say go back with the knight and uh, play for a long-term uh, game that the f6 pawn and it's a double pawn uh, maybe. 
Why is it going to be? Can I pick queen b7, queen e4 or something? Queen b7. Yeah, this knight on d4, of course, uh, is kind of annoying. I'm, I'm still very surprised that, you know, in a match you are black and you you know you are getting easy equality with queen takes f6. But you want to keep the game going. Yes, but at the same time, uh, if you know that queen f6 is equal, you know it's a simplification to equality. You know g takes f6, it shouldn't be anything, any problem. You're happy to play this structure. You know that eventually... You have to win a game to beat Magnus Carlsen and become a world champion. You have to make a decision at one point that, okay, it's a sharp game, it's a middle game, let's fight. Yeah. The move b5 and g takes f6 both are in similar psychological direction that showing I am fine with, you know, I want concrete, uh, complicated positions. And, you know, if, it, if I'm making some strategical concession, it doesn't really matter because the position, the nature of the position is very concrete at this point. At the same time, it it does not seem to be any real risk for white. If we look at the position, right? It is so stable. It's, it's like a fortress, this position for white. There's no weaknesses. The only problem for why that he lost his bishop pair, which he got in exchange, the doubling black spawn. There is this fantastic potential c5 square, which can be taken and occupied with the knight. So white's next move can be b4 next move and to go knight to c5. And if he's reaching that, he can claim the advantage for him. How would you consider this position if you remove all the major pieces from the board? <laughs> Imagine if there is there are no queens and rooks. Would you still prefer white or would you prefer black? Only the two knights for white, the bishop, and for black, the bishop pair and the knight? Yes. Because I would rather prefer black at this point because bishop on b6 yes. will not have any match. Yes, especially if I can bring my king to d6. The only yes. worry I would have is the c5 square, nothing else. But I would rather play it for black with the bishop pair. But what? we are far from that. Yeah, but what kind of endgame is white aiming for? White is okay. Well, I'm not giving my b6 bishop. So what is the endgame you could, you would like to choose? No, in endgame, it's only if I play knight c5. Yeah. But, it, but we're not going to see a queen exchange for quite a long time here. Now not, no, now not, for sure. Knight d4 seems very principled. Is there any other idea for black than knight d4? I thought e5, but e5, knight h4, yeah? Yeah, e5, knight h4, and I think it's such a uh, such a weaknesses in black scam that it would be... Still, still knight d4? Knight still d4 knight. you can still go, yeah. Give the... yeah. But it doesn't look good, this e5 at first. No, no. I, even now, I'm not very thrilled about why should I make unnecessary weakness. Though it seems like for quite some time, white will not be able to play e3 to eliminate the knight from uh, d4, which is... Uh... Okay. You play b4, knight c5. Now b4? Yeah, I don't, I don't see what is black threatening, so... Okay, so rook c8, let's say just keep the tension. <clears throat> yeah, it's not easy, yeah, somehow. What do I do now? Do I play... Can I actually play e3 or not? e3? I'm thinking, can I play e3 or not? I'm very much afraid of playing something like this in this position. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's very suspicious. Bishop b2, g2. Ah, uh, no, no, no. No, Queen I don't like seven. it. No. That's it. No, I don't like this. No, I cannot play it.
I mean, it looks so obvious after e5 to go knight h4, right? If not knight h4, I don't even know what else. Ah, uh, no. So the question is, why did I play e5? I need a justification that why I'm no, playing he played e5. Knight after knight d4. d4. Exactly, because after knight d4 also, we were checking knight h4. So why do I need e5 if I can play knight d4 directly? But actually, what if white takes on d4? Let's consider this for a moment. Okay, Bishop, Bishop takes d2. d2 and I would go knight c6. No, no, but I take bishop takes d4. No, I come with the tempo. No? Okay, true. Logical queen, uh, yeah, two. queen a2, which is pretty ugly. Takes, takes. Okay, put the queen on four. So queen g7. F3. Then bishop e3, rook c8. I might take over the c file at some point. Oh, I don't. Uh, yeah, black is just like, doing. Like, Fine to say the least, right? Yeah. So, okay, knight d4, knight h4. What about playing knight af4? Reaching out to h5. That's a nice uh, square for the knight. Let's not uh, exchange so straightforward on b4. And if I, let's say, take everything, play bishop d4, this you are happy, yeah? You want to take, take bishop d4. Well, I'm not happy to go to a2 with my king. I'm completely frustrated to see my queen on a2. <laughs> it's outrageous to have my queen on a2. I would go maybe your queen e2. I, I don't see, again, I don't see any issues for black at this point. I mean, every time I will have this f5 move, which should save my queen, uh, save my king. But look at this, how actively Jan is playing today with the black pieces. He played b5, he's crossing the half board, right? He's yeah. obviously like pushing and being very active. And he captured on d4. So bishop d4, he really wants to play queen a2. There's just well, no other way. Probably there is not much of a choice. Man Unless he wants to sacrifice, but I don't believe in that. If Let's say after bishop d4 to go queen d2, in order to after bishop g2, king g2, queen a3, b4, and uh, the queen is out of the play, so maybe white has enough compensation because I'm going to go queen h6, knight f4, knight h5. Even then, just one move, uh, f5, and at least I'm not getting mated. But you're not going to be happy either, are you? I mean, I can play f5, for example, right away. Bishop d4 is on the board, of course. Oh, queen a2, I think. Uh, queen a2 played instantly. Queen a2 is played. Oh, I think bishop, bishop g to king g to queen b7 also we'll see pretty fast. Looks very natural to get, the, to get that diagonal. And somehow I feel, okay, allowing bishop e3 is... Uh... But I'm not even sure about queen b7. Why not to play a5? Why is going to go a4, right? Also both. No, a5 I'll play. But what is this? Sorry? If you play a5, I'll play a4. Yes, but I don't know what is your your d3 knight doing over there. Even maybe at some point I'm going to go e5. Because that d3 knight will never, ever reach to f5 anymore. <clears throat> but here... Uh, but, yeah. Well, I was thinking if I can play knight b4, but probably you have uh, queen b7 check then. Well, at this point, uh, I see that uh, Bishop G2 is on the board, King G2, and now what Black is going to be playing? 
a5, queen b7, f5, e5, rook c8. Plenty of options for black. I mean, rook c8 queen looks not the most normal. For me, queen on e4 looks very uh, logical also. I mean, active, centralize the queen all the way to e4. Let him play f3 or no, f3 cannot even play. So queen e4. Like, optically, it looks like black is simply uh, dominating. He has more squares. Queen d2. Okay, so rook c8, I guess. And no, at the moment, no threats. Yeah, I'm not sure why it will have to worry at all. I mean, he can play b4, knight c5, rook c2, rook c1. <clears throat> yeah, equalish probably. It is pretty much equalish, I believe, also. But I would rather be black here. I mean, in general, I prefer bishop also, so. Yeah, how can black take over? This is a question. Okay, this position, uh, queen b7, king g1, queen e4, queen d2. Let's say I play king g7, I stop your queen h6. My question is, do you want to go really queen e4? Don't you consider queen d5, let's say? Or rook c8 first and keep the option that you go queen e4 or queen d5? Uh, I wasn't sure if uh, changing everything is good for me. Like imagine, okay, you take and just play rook c1 again and then... Am I better here? How much? Also, uh, you could, uh, after rook c8, maybe it's better to start with a4. Let's play a4. and then start changing everything. Well, it will be not easy for Black to create uh, opportunities for him either. Yeah. So what happened to this Queen e4, Queen d2, let's say King g7? Okay, Queen b7 is on the board. Queen e4, Queen d2, okay, let's say King g7, I'm waiting. <clears throat> Rook c7? Bishop b6. And then I have to come back. Okay. Actually, I can play bishop b6 next move also. Because I imagine this, I put my bishop on b6, queen on e4. There is just zero entry on the king side. I can then think about a5 or doubling the rooks on c d5. I like black's position at this point. So if I go to simplify. I cannot go simplifying queen f4, right? Um, you can. I mean, maybe if I just go at g takes f4. But this black is better, yeah? I mean, black is the only one who is pressing. Yeah, but knight f4 I cannot go because of bishop b2, I thought. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the g4, even if computer says equal, it's black will be pressing in a, in a, in a practical game. Maybe after queen e4, also e a4, just to get over with this? Yeah, a4 is uh, a4 is good strategically. So a6, can I go? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Catalan, so, so Catalan is not uh, ideal when you don't have the Catalan bishop. You need the Catalan bishop to play good uh, to get this advantage. I am pretty sure Nepo must, Jan must be very happy at this point. King G1 is on the board. Why did not play F3 weakening his position? Which yeah, was expected. Bishop e3, yeah. F3, bishop e3, then eventually we would lose the battle on the c5. Yeah, I think this after this, black would really take over initiative completely. Yeah. Okay, so king g1. Now the question is whether queen e4 will be played fast or uh, does Jan have something in mind and consider something more important? 
<clears throat> do you believe in H5, H4? I would, I would not do this, but... Not really. I don't, I don't, I don't think... Uh, I'm ready for this yet. The question is, can black do anything to this D3 knight? Probably not. Probably not. Because, okay, the only way to remove this knight is to play e5, e4, which is uh, weakening uh, the king. What is white's next move? White would probably like to play a4 as quickly as possible. a4, then he doubles the rook on the c, I think. Okay, let's say maybe, so brings, some... maybe brings the queen back to d2 and only after that to try to double the rook on c. Okay, imagine I play king g7 just to see what is the next move. Okay, a4. Okay, a6. a6, queen d2. And we are back to this position where again I wanted to play this move queen e4. You can go maybe queen d5 to attack the b3. Mm, yeah, queen d5 is also possible because there is no knight f4. Looks like black is pressing a bit. Yeah. So talking about this uh, matches, yeah, I remember uh, during Moscow we had very tough time. Uh, as I told earlier that uh, when against Gelfand, yeah, against Gelfand, when Anand would be playing, that's the time we will be sleeping. But many ma many games ended in quick draws. And that was uh, not ideal because, of course, we don't want uh, Anand to come to room and then see, uh, you know, all his seconds are sleeping. So when whenever he would come, you know, then we want to be ready. We want to. He also knows he's perfectly aware that when he goes, we are sleeping. But many games ended in very quick draws, and then we are like, oh no, game ended. Now we have to get ready and go to the board again. So we were. If all of you were sleeping, if all of you were sleeping, how did you know that it was an early draw? Well, no, because there will always be uh, someone who is be will someone be on shift. Yeah, particularly uh, Peter Heine, he could never get uh, sleep uh, because he would be. Uh, I, I think usually he was the last one. But also, <clears throat> imagine if uh, I suggested a move and that was played, then uh, my sleep is also gone. Pin e four is on the board. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> feels so natural to centralize both the uh, queen and bishop with the I queen mean, on a2 basically black should be better in this position right but it's not clear how he will be able to to improve it the way that it is significant so yeah black's pieces are better without a doubt black has bishop but i think white's main trump is he does not have any weakness I mean, we can call this e2 pawn, but okay, how do you target? You have queen Maybe on e4. Maybe he wants to go rook d5. Maybe he wants to bring his rook to the fifth. I mean, that's why I really like this a4 move because it kind of... Okay, uh, so after a4... Okay, a4, a6. So now there is no more rook d5, yeah? There is. It's coming. You so you would play rook b5, a b5, rook b5, yeah? Yeah, why not? Okay, let's say rook fd1, for example. Rook fd1, rook d5. <clears throat> what can I can I take on uh, d5 on uh, can I take on b5 and play queen a4 or something?
Yeah, somehow with this D3 knight, it's not easy to crack. No, no, no. Maybe not rook D5. Just to maintain. King G7, F5. We are likely to see a draw. I mean, maybe white can even go something like e3 and queen e2. What do you think about that? Ah, e3 have, takes I mean, and rook d3, sorry. You just yeah, take yeah. and bishop d3. Yeah. And rook d3. yeah. Queen c2. So I think Magnus will want to simplify the position somehow. Play knight c5 oh. or c2. Yeah, he would be very happy, uh, as I said, to bail out as quickly as possible. What is king g7 here? What about knight c5? Ah, you want to play knight c5, yeah. Maybe b4 first. Maybe I just go b4 first. Or a4. Though I don't know if you want to go rook c8. Immediately? Now. <clears throat> Yeah, here I would go rook c8 and queen takes c2. Uh, uh, okay, queen c2. So how is this? Bishop c5? No, oh, then it's just you take him. Yeah. Sorry? No, then you take with the pawn rook fc1. I'm not winning this. Somehow it should be okay for white, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, this black is not going to win this position. It's also an idea for white actually to go knight b4 in the next move and regroup his knight to c6. What do you think? Possible. If my king would be on g7, I would seriously consider playing rook c8 and take on a2. Yeah. But here, here if I play rook c8, you just take and come back and... I don't think black is worse there, but... Uh, black should not be better here. King g7, rook c2. Black can't be worse with this queen and bishop. It's no big deal either. How do you, how do you uh, play against h5, h4 actually? Or oh, h5, you play h4. h5, h4. And one day after knight f4, this can be also attacked. Mm -hmm. Though I, yeah, I mean. Can I, can I create something here? I don't know. e5. Maybe yeah, but previous... still you have no threat. No, but previous move e5. But I'm pushing it too much. I think I go here. And F3 next, yeah? Yeah. No, this probably will play king g7. <clears throat> but if you play king g7 and not rook c8, then uh, then I think I would try what happens on knight b4. Takes, takes. Mm -hmm. uh, here you want your knight on c6. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm aiming for. I don't know how good is that. Maybe I just go rook c1. But the bishop on b6 looks so stable. It is stable, but so what? I go knight c6 and I go a4. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, it's... Yeah. Not... To create uh, real winning chances for black, it's also not simple. No, but here, why white should be worse?
And if a5, then knight c5, I think. A5 also, I'm, I'm scared about a4. What did I gain after this? Yeah, a4 is good. Yeah, it looks like this, this is the thing in this position, that it looks so appealing for black because it's very energetic. You have this beautiful d4 bishop. At the same time, white is saying, okay, you have one d4 bishop. One d4 bishop you will not win the game with. Yeah, no weakness, basically. So, okay, once again, king g7, you played knight c5. I played knight b4. Ah, you played knight b4. Oh, that's, 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 now, am I... And you I cannot am, do anything else. You have to exchange queens. I have to exchange queens. That's right. <clears throat> not so, so easy that, with black. No, that uh, yeah, that was not that was not easy. Jan is spending time. He has 40 minutes in move 23. Okay, I have... Okay, let's say king g7, knight b4. Knight b4, you play, yeah? Yes. I take and play rook c8. And I do this. Knight c6? Ah, here, no, no, no. I have to play rook. I wanted bishop b2 somewhere. Uh, can I play? Oh, you can go bishop b6 back, but I go here. No, I thought could I I wanted to bail out basically. Can I play bishop b2 and just make a drop after knight c6? A4. B8. <clears throat> so you want to draw with black? Now, yes, with your knight on e6, I just want to finish okay, the game. Okay, but we are looking for something more for black, no? I don't think after knight b4 we can. Uh, I I would not consider as good chance. I mean, how else could I play after king g7 knight b4? With this knight coming to c6, even after bishop b6, the move you said yeah a4 a5. At that point only I I will be scared as black. So what can black do here? Okay, a5, let's see. He, we have... he didn't want a5. to see knight b4. You see. Yeah, yeah, he didn't want the knight on c6. But a5, we said uh, he could play a4, a4. Yeah? try to fix uh, this pawn structure. Maybe he will go rook c8, takes, takes, and rook c8. What do you think? Takes, takes, rook c8, let's say takes, and a4 pawn can be a weakness because takes, king g7. So what is white playing? Knight f4, maybe, oh. or rook c2. In the rook c2, then let's say black. How to grab the a4 pawn? You have to move your bishop somewhere, yeah? but where? What a trick. Look at this. Look at this one. Rook a1, bishop a f2. <laughs> Found a trick. Yes. <clears throat> That's actually a good one. No, white would probably not like to see this position. Could I play something else, like not to take on c8? Because here in rook c7, bishop b6, and next move one pawn is dropped. So here white should be playing this. And queen c4, knight c1, but this doesn't queen look c4, good. c4, rook a3, e5, I mean, from a distance, two. white would never get into this position. Why? Mm -hmm. So let's say a5, what did we say? We said a4. We said a4 and then we took and rook c8. Why can't I play queen d2 and attack your pawn? Queen d2. Yeah. No, the only thing is that before that we took on c8, right? I mean, yeah, but that was without the inclusion of a5, a4. Yes. Here, okay, we go queen d2, let's say. 
I mean, I would rather like to have queen and knight against queen and bishop than rook and knight against rook and bishop. So I don't want to trade, I want to keep my queen. Well, without the queens and only one rook on the board with the bishop, it could be tricky for white, I think. That's the best simpl simplification for black, I believe. Take one rook off and take the queens off. True. And now I think white has to be careful because if he doesn't play a4, black is going to be playing a4. And this pawn, if it stucks on a3 with the black square bishop, it can be dangerous. Well, there is this uh, other option. Uh, can I play knight c5? Yeah, knight c5 is always a debate whether... But knight c5, the only thing is here, literally I'm kind of begging for a draw, yeah? I'm asking like, okay, I, I, I'm practically offering a draw. Well, I think with white, I don't think you want to do... What do you want to do here, then offering I would, a draw? I, I, I would rather play a4 and uh, keep the tension. And try to provoke black trying to provoke because knight c5 is i'm saying okay look you know it's your choice make a draw or if you want to continue continue so now magnus is hesitating which direction to go in this game to play a4 Actually, he has a concrete uh, simplification, does he? No, he, he cannot play queen c6 yet. Or so his question is, a4, b4, knight c5. Well, what happens if I play rook fd1? Are you actually and rook fd1, yes. Okay, so a4. Well, my point was now I can take BA4 and then there is maybe I'm avoiding rook A4. So what do you do? Yeah. Uh, move the knight somewhere. Yeah? Where? Yeah, the problem is you take on C2 and I cannot take with the rook. Yeah. Well, yeah, the problem okay, yeah, is Bishop yeah, F2, yeah. right? Yeah, Bishop F2. Yeah, yeah. No, I can't move the knight. I if you go knight b4, you can, but then take... Oh, but knight c2 you don't want, yeah? You don't want knight c2. You don't want take and rook c8. Yeah, yeah, no. You don't, definitely, you don't want to move your knight if you have to take knight into c2. So rook fd1, a4, okay, takes, takes. Um, can I... Can I kick this bishop out or not? Can I play e3, queen e2? I like queen e3, queen e2. This is, I also tried it, but my queen, it was, the d3 was not protected yet. That was mm. my problem there. Actually, after queen e2, it gets stabilized a bit because the bishop uh, is now hitting at a wall, yeah? With the yes. pawn on e3. No, I think now in this stage uh, to play e3, which means... As so rook fd1 actually threatens e3 queen e2. Yes, yeah, actually that's uh, that's a nice idea. <clears throat> you want to chase this bishop out. So what to do? Good question. Yes. There is no prophylaxis against e3. Not much to do against it. I think I like rook d1 and e3, queen e2, because uh, we cut the power of the bishop on that diagonal. Maybe, hmm. maybe to, after rook fd1, you, the, there is at least one thing that can do, is to maintain the diagonal by playing f5. Yes, but after f5, you're, uh, you keep the diagonal, but then the c5 square will be not for, not covered. Yeah. Oh, okay, bishop f6, let's say. 
whenever I see this bishop attack on this diagonal in this structure, it reminds me of Bishop Petrosian, Bishop H8. His bishop was on b2 and it was not even attacked exactly this structure and he goes bishop b2 to bishop h8. Wow. So, okay, queen e2. Okay, what happens if I now go in? So, knight f4 kind of thing sometimes comes to mind, right? To reach no, out f4, h5. It doesn't scare me. No, this... but. No. Okay, let's say f4 a4 and after knight c5 let's say <clears throat> i mean your queen can be in trouble kind of where where can yeah. it move yeah well i'm thinking if i can play queen g4 I think I can take and bishop queen b5. Well, then I thought rook d1 takes takes queen d5 check and create some mess. And then a into b5 at the end. So this I'm happy. I can go. Ah, in. you can come back, yeah? Ah, you can come back. But still. Well, this is not, it's not you who is going to be playing for a win. But it should also be a very direct draw. Yeah, but somehow it seems like whatever we want to be uh, trying with either color eventually is going to get a draw, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's very symbolic. I mean, either way... Um... I mean, I can imagine... Uh, I cannot imagine that Magnus would lose this game. It's not that he feels so good, but somehow I feel that now playing Queen C2, he will say more or less the same thing like what he did after after 98 yesterday. And okay, I go passive. I'm not happy about it, but that's how it is. Then he plays yeah. queen c2, and he knows that he's going to simplify in one way or another, uh, and he's going to be okay. So I don't think he feels any danger in this position, and probably he shouldn't. Also, again, I mean, this brings back me to the thing that we were discussing that when Magnus was technically outplayed in from a slightly worse position, very rarely this happens actually. I would be extremely surprised if uh, actually if anyone gets outplayed at this point. It looks very close to end in a draw. We did we could not create a serious chance in any of our analysis, right? So far. Not really. Side. It's more uh, when it's something happened for black, it was more of a blunder. True. But I'm very curious what Magnus is going to be playing now. Rook D1. Rook D1 Rook on D1. the one. Yeah. yeah. Rook D1. Rook D1 was actually found accidentally by us because when I suggested Rook D1, I actually did not even see 3 Queen E2 is the idea it was more like okay i develop my piece then no and actually think... after e3 if white is reaching e3 queen e2 mm -hmm. i think uh, i mean i'm not even sure that i would be playing rather black than with white at this point i would uh, i would really hate my bishop on b6 after e3 so yeah, because suddenly its uh, its power somehow disappears. I mean, imagine my bishop on e b6, pawn on his white pawn on e3. This bishop is doing nothing on white's king. It's also not supporting black's king. So once e3 happens, you would really want to change the diagonal for the bishop. And at this moment, we can choose which diagonal we want to keep our bishop. So. From that perspective, it makes sense to play f5 and just bring back the bishop closer to the king so that our king is safe. <coughs> king g7. So he's wow. not choosing that diagonal. No. no, he's not choosing that. So what is he wanting to play after e3? You know what he wants to play? 
What do you yes. think? Maybe after e3, bishop c5? No. No, because then takes and bishop and queen's b5. b5 yeah. Magnus, thank you. So what does he want to go after e3? Well, probably he should be going back to b6. <clears throat> well, he's ready to, to attack with rook c8, if it would be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, if it is black move, rook c8 is coming. Actually, after e3, e3, rook c8, there is nothing. I cannot take on e3. So take, take. I don't have bishop e3 because there is knight f2. Yeah, but b3 is hanging. And how do you defend the a3? Rook d3. Though maybe oh. just rook d8. Just rook d8. Oh, this this looks so scary. This Where looks, I mean, is D five F five. I mean, White could also just play Rook D three and take it slowly. Eh? Yeah, true. White cannot be in danger here. No, yeah. It's hard to imagine another move than E three here. Yeah. No, once Rook F D one is played. It has to be e3. Okay, so after e3, he goes back to b6. Then queen e2. Queen e2. Now we already. I e5. Mean, okay, makes sense. You want to stop knight f4. Yeah, I don't want your knight on f4. True. What if I start long maneuver, knight e1? Where are you going? Still you F5. want to be reaching out. Yeah, F5. dreaming, dreaming. No, but I'm also attacking b5, so it comes with some yeah. threats. If the knight lands on f5, then it's going to be a very bad news. Actually, I don't like what has happened in the last few moves for black. Because I, I think uh, after e3, queen e2, white made a huge progress. And even black can have some problems. question is, why is Magnus thinking so much? And what are the other options he has apart from e3? The knight on d3 does not move. Because of bishop f2 check. He's just j double checking. I'm pretty sure his plan is to play e3. What, what, what are the positions uh, <clears throat> in general after e3, rook c8, <clears throat> if I don't take on e3? Just queen e2. No, no, no. I mean, I take on c8. <clears throat> ah. But I think white can just simply go queen e2. Or no, knight rook c1. <coughs> yeah, rook c1, you have to take with the knight then. But you can take No, with the but it's possible. I will just go not queen c8, I go here. And after it takes, I'm going knight to be one. taking with this. And after bishop e3, I go knight f4. Knight c5 also. What do you think? Yeah. <clears throat> so bishop e3 is not possible. Black has to be moving away. And then knight f4. And then look yeah, at this. Bg4 check. Knight h5. It's tricky. True. I did not like this... Uh... King g7 move. 
By the way, I can see in the screen uh, the computer evaluation. It says e3 bishop e5. What? We need to h5? Seriously? That's the variation it is showing in the computer screen. Yeah, okay, but that means uh, black is not going to be even dreaming about advantage. No, h5 is interesting. Yeah, he's trying to get h4. It's interesting, but it's it's completely equalish, right? Right e5, queen e5, so what? Yeah, yeah, black has no advantage, that's for sure. But I, I don't think after e3, black should... Uh, I mean, why white should be worse after e3? I'm curious when Magnus will be playing e3. What, what, what there is, is the other option? Goes differently. I don't even see another option. <clears throat> yeah, I actually see zero options other than e3. Actually, it's strange that he's thinking. Yeah. Maybe he wants to think ahead. The only other option to stop uh, rook ac8 could be rook d2. Because king f1 is not a good news. Yeah, but so, rook d2 seems very strange. But yeah, if you think about it, you if you reach out to queen d1 and then play e3, maybe. Uh, That's a possibility. That's actually a possibility. Yeah. Also, what black goes with d7? Let's say. Um, do I have some sort of knight c5 move or no? Knight c5, okay, fine. You take and play rook d5, yeah? Takes, takes. Rook d5. Rook d5. <clears throat> I'll stabilize this. Okay, yeah. I'm really curious what he's going to be playing and what is he thinking right now? E3, rook d2. Is I don't see any force line after e3 unless black plus rook ac8. A4 also... is still maybe an option, though I'm not sure after a4 black is not reacting with b4 and reaching with the bishop to c3. Yeah. Yeah, this time I'm really curious why, why he is thinking so much. And for the first time in the game, they are equal on time. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there is no increment, yeah? So until move no, 40. only from move 61. And there is no draw for under 40 moves. Okay. Which was the first world championship where they banned the draw for up to a certain number of moves? Was it Kar uh, Karyakin? Well, there was this unofficial... Uh, well, Topolov said, yeah, he would not offer a draw against Anand, so they never... But it's only that he said it. It was not in the rules, was it? Uh, yeah, probably this was not in the rules, but he said, yeah, there will be no draw for us. I mean, that is also a rule kind of funny, right? I mean, I remember, let's say 15 years ago, somebody says that you cannot offer a draw. Though, maybe it's already 13 years. I think the first Olympiad was uh, dressed in 2008 where you were not allowed to 
uh, offer a job under 30. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so actually the game is changing and there are new alternatives how to make it, uh, sharpening it out. Everybody's trying to avoid uh, all these draws somehow, how you can make it uh, decisive, right? Yeah. But I just wanted to say that uh, in the analysis board position, knight d4 uh, doesn't work because of bishop f2. I mean, this was not for you, for the viewers. Ah, yes. Yeah, this would be not a funny blunder from white side. <clears throat> what did we say after rook d2 once again? On rook d2, let's see, rook d2, we said uh, rook d7 for the moment. So queen d1, let's say, continuing with your plan. Okay. Uh, so after rook d8, you want to go knight c5? I'm not sure because there is bishop f2. No, bishop f2, I have. Yeah, bishop f2 is possible. Yeah? And queen check yeah. and fix. Okay, yeah, so knight has yeah. fine. Blunder. No, but then uh, what does white then, want? Yeah, then there is no e3 also. Yeah. And I think this is what uh, Magnus is observing right now that can he play for something else? I mean, now he's just put order in his head. What is exactly this position, the evaluation of it? And once mm -hmm. he says, okay, I don't have anything after rook d2, maybe he just goes e3, queen e2, go for the simplification where he can, and okay, game seven. Yeah. What was the most difficult moment for you between the three matches? Oh, uh, clearly Gelfand, for sure, without a doubt. Um, what, what, what was the feeling and the atmosphere when uh, when uh, Gelfand won the first game? Or you, or you don't want was, to relive that moment? No, no, it's, it's, I mean, end of the day, it's a very happy memory for me. So initially, um, it was a shock uh, when Gelfand started playing Sveshnikov and Grunfeld. These are the two openings where uh, we had one bailout systems, like, you know, one bailout system for uh, Sveshnikov, saying that if Sveshnikov happens, which is very unlikely, first game you play this, you have some half idea, make a draw, and then the team works. Same in Grunfeld, this bishop b5 check, we had one half idea and like, make a draw, come back, and then team takes it from there. So we tried e4, we were hit by Sveshnikov, we tried d4, we hit by Grunfeld, and suddenly our team, did not work in these two particular openings for last couple of months that heavily. And we are facing a team, we are facing a force who only worked on this area. Now, to refute this during the match, you know, to come up with some interesting idea that they did not check, was becoming a nightmare. So what was happening was uh, we were hitting a wall every time because Gelfand was prepared and he was equalizing uh, pretty easily. And then at some point, uh, he plays a great game and he beats Anand and he takes the lead. That night, I, I remember we could not sleep at all. In fact, we were walking uh, like at five o'clock, we were still not having any ideas and we went, went for a walk. Uh, we were staying uh, in a very good hotel in Moscow with fantastic view and all. So we went for a walk and we were thinking what to offer Anand in, you know, like in another four hours, he'd be coming, nine o'clock he'd be coming and we still don't know what we are offering him. Then finally, you know, we continued working. We came up uh, with some ideas and it turned out to be a fairy tale when Anand goes and wins in like 17 or 18 moves. But uh, that was a big relief. But even then the game goes all the way till tie break with a lot of tension. And somehow, you know, Anand won. And even on today, I cannot say uh, Anand won because Anand played better or he was better prepared because, you know, Kelvin was also extremely prepared and he also played at very good level. Yeah, we were, it was a great match.
Yeah, when I asked uh, Vichy about his most difficult moment, that, that's what he highlighted also. That yeah. night of, of uh, that loss was... Uh, I mean, yeah, we would have our, our own uh, typical um, wind-up things. Yeah, Anand is a huge fan of Faulty Towers and Yes Minister. Uh, this uh, you know TV series, so which also the entire team is infected with that. So we are also into all sorts of. Uh, we would listen to music, uh, some some video series to to wind up a bit. It's also very important. Uh, I am sure if somebody would accidentally enter our working room, it is very much possible that the atmosphere is very light. You know, people are joking. There is music going on. But very serious work also. So I think Anand, yeah, in Moscow World Championship match also he would uh, he would be watching Yes Minister, Yes Prime Minister, and we would have some light moment. It's also very important to you know wind up a bit. Like you have to. Uh, what there is one thing is to focus on something which is important, and there is also equally important to take out that focus, and you know just forget all the tension that you have and. Have a little bit of fun time. In fact, Anna, Magnus does this by playing sports. Is Anand the, uh, a good play, a good per character, and he's able to switch from the incredible tension of the match and to to talk about something else? Absolutely. I think I. I mean, you know Anand for uh, for years, yeah. So you know he is a different personality in general when you. When you're not in front of, you know, when he's not in front of camera, when he's talking just, uh, when you're having friendly dinner with him, he's a completely different person. And then again, when you face him at the board, that's a different personality. When I'm working uh, with him for his match, that is again something different. But yeah, in general, very pleasant, I would say. Of course, there will be match tension. There will be some moments, you know, when you can feel the tension, you can feel the... Uh, feel the heat but still as i said earlier never ever you would say you know this is the job i want this done you know stay awake for whole night or work for 18 hours he would never do this but he has his own charm he has his own way of doing things and people would do it for him well usually it seems and uh, what what people hear about uh, the work of a second it's definitely not something that you're not work going to have long working hours <laughs> yeah so i had this funny moment uh, during i think uh, topol of match so as i said you know when arm goes to play we look at the opening and then we go for uh, our usual nap so before the topol of final game uh, Okay. We decided it was decided that Queens can be declined. We played. We had one and a half days, and we walked with all our force. We found so many interesting ideas, and then finally, when uh, the game started, we saw the opening. We saw <clears throat> exactly one of the ideas that we found that is on the board, and now Anand has a comfortable position. So it was at this moment, uh, you know, people decided. Uh, to get to their room so all of us went to our room some of us slept some of us kept on watching the game i was sleeping and at this point i get a call from uh, indian uh, one of the indian tv channel very renowned and they call me and okay i'm completely like half dead i pick up my phone i'm like hello and then they say hey what are you doing you know anand is winning and the guy was very excited there and i could barely open my eyes and i said you know i'm sleeping and probably the guy thought, you know, this is what seconds do. They go, <laughs> they do nothing. They don't even know the, you know, Anand is winning. And this guy is actually sleeping there. I didn't even try to explain him. I just, okay, let me sleep. <laughs> yeah, you had to treasure sleeping uh, when, when you got the opportunity, right? Yeah. Interesting how long Magnus is taking time for this move. He's like thinking already for at least about 15 minutes or so. Do you think it is? Do you think he's hesitating between E3 and Rook D2? 
Is he going to touch the rook or the pawn? There is no <laughs> other move, is there? But twice, twice he did this. Twice he lifted his hand. He wanted to play something and then he hesitated. So he's also not sure. I'm very he's curious. What is, the, what is the evaluation? Actually, pulling me... behind in time. Yeah. Hmm. I will cheat here a bit. I want to. I want to see what the computer says. What does it say? Notation in G7. E3 0 0.18, rook D2 0 0.08. Rook D2 B4 would not have offered to me as first move. According to the engine that I see on the website, it says top three moves. Uh, rook D2 B4 is possible. Yeah, rook D2 B4, that's what it is given in the. Yeah, with the idea takes, takes, takes bishop F2. Yeah. No, it's super surprising. What what could he be calculating after e three? No, I think after his next move, he's going to be playing pretty fast. Well, first Wait. of all, he does not have too much time, but also he understands the position, what where he wants to uh, put his pieces. <clears throat> this e three bishop e five. Queen e to h5 is not the most obvious move that comes to my mind. See, and third, again, time does, third, time, it, third time he does this. Yeah. So much hesitation, yeah? Hesitating, but about what? Why? Fourth and time? Now. Seriously? Fourth time? And now? For the fourth time, he wanted to make a move and decided not to. Rook D2. Clear. The hesitation is clear. He was not sure. So what about B4 now? <clears throat> it, I never considered this move uh, until until he actually it, it was shown in the chess 24 uh, website so what happens if i take twice you want to take on f2 and take on b4 that's the idea yeah yeah but what about takes x and queen c4 <clears throat> why did i play b4 this is my first question sorry why did i play b4 uh, to get bishop c3 and queen c4 yes there. and what is your threat now wait a second after queen c4 if i play after queen c4, you are not threatening to take on b4, so your threat is to play e3. So if I play f5, what do you do? I'm threatening to take with the queen on b4. Ah, <laughs> ah bishop f2, that's what you're saying. Okay. So I thought your threat is e3 right now, so I want to stop that with f5. Mm. Yeah. And you want to have bishop c3 as a threat. Yes, exactly. B4 is again a move uh, strategically you don't want to play, but again, there is tactical and concrete reason for doing so. But why? Positionally, if you create you create your the square C3 for the bishop, this seems to be promising. Well, yeah, I mean, from, from a long-term point of view, you would rather like to play f4, no? Okay, so what about queen c6 after takes takes? F5? f5? Queen f5 or f5? <clears throat> Actually, what was your move after queen f5? I am, I was not threatening anything. Okay, I'm not threatening anything. Bishop F2, why don't you threat? Oh. Because the A8 is under attack. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, seeing this move before I don't like rook d2. But actually, b4 is a move which can uh, appear in the next move also. So if black goes f5, for example. Mm -hmm. So we have been uh, saying that queen d1 is the point of b, uh, rook d2. But okay, after uh, queen d1, uh, ah, b4 it does not work because take six and my rook b4. is hanging. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, no, your, your higher rook is hanging because queen b6 is your queen d4. What do you think about this rook d2 move? Do you think Magnus felt e3 is uh, equal, so let me keep the game going with rook d2? Or he, he saw something in e3? And that's why he felt rook d2. I don't, I don't see anything and I don't understand. Because e3, e3, queen e2 was very straightforward, no? Yeah. Maybe he thinks that uh, he wants to provoke Jan. That rook mm -hmm. d2 is not worse than e3 and he can play e3 in a later stage. <clears throat> he wants to keep the game, game going. This is move number what, 25, so 15 moves for 23 minutes, yeah? Absolutely. And I'm very curious how Jan will be replying on this. Is he going to play b4? Is he going to go f5? <clears throat> so far, his style is to play b4. He goes to c8. Very interesting decision. Rook c8. Now we will see some. Yeah. He we'll plays rook c8. Kind of... Yeah. Practically forcing, uh, forcing white to take. Why? What about queen d1? You want to allow uh, bishop c3 or rook c3? Uh, bishop c3, rook c2, yeah? b4, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so let's see queen c8. What can black do here? Very interesting decision. Change uh, the but material. There, there are quite a few interesting decisions in this game. Yeah. Which, is, which was done. So somehow yeah. they also want the game somehow to, to be unbalanced and uh, be decisive. It is also difficult to play positions where there are, you know, every move you get uh, five or six different uh, moves with similar evaluation. Actually, this is a very tricky situation now because in time, Magnus has 11 minutes down and it's only the 26th move. So, and now it's Magnus who has to make a decision. Is queen c8 having two rooks against the queen and the knight bishop, I mean, the bishop is very powerful. These are the positions where you cannot calculate, uh, you know, there, is, there are no concrete variations. I mean, okay, black can play bishop e3 at this point, but I move by rook. Black can play h5, but there is h4. 
so it's more about uh, purely about understanding how do you evaluate this position i have absolutely no idea i would be thinking from white it's fine white should not lose from black also it feels fine that queen and bishop both are active and these rooks will not be able to create uh, any threats because his king is also weak i mean how do you um, how do you stabilize your position with this pawn on e2 and activate the rook from uh, d2 okay if judith if you have to pick a color here what color would you pick which color would i be playing very tricky question i don't know after, at first after queen takes c8 rook c8 rook c8 imagine you have given a choice you can pick any color and play what color would you pick let's also ask audience what color would you pick after rook takes c8 sorry rook c8 queen takes c8 and rook c8 c8 we we i can see in the screen the position uh, computer says 0, 0.00 yes also, it's matter of taste which is actually probably true the evaluation it's just really from which side you you want to be playing yeah <clears throat> can we can we have a poll on this what color would people prefer black or white i'd be very interested to see And it's a good question whether Magnus wants to be on the white side. At because least that he, will go immediately. He may decide to go Queen D1, though it is incredibly passive. Yeah, Queen D1, it's like, I'll be very surprised to see Queen D1. Well, I don't know which color I will be picking. Queen C8, Queen C8 is there. Okay. But there is a lot of hesitation today in uh, when Magnus is playing the moves, yeah? Well, in principle, I would rather play it with black because it's somehow appealing to have this bishop on D4. Though I don't know what is my next move, Queen D5. Okay, so after... <clears throat> H5, D5, H4. What, what was that? Queen D5 is on the board. <clears throat> I wouldn't like H5 with black because I would be afraid to lose it with knight F4. Yeah, example. true, true. So now after B4, I think he's going to be playing A4. Okay. I would really like to play three at some point, then get rook c2 maybe. Actually, after e3, where do you put your bishop? Uh, at which stage? Instead right of right now? Uh, yeah, here after. Right now. Uh -huh. well, I can go bishop b2. Oh. Wow. So rook c5. Am I going to fall into something? Queen B, Queen uh, D seven. <clears throat> Looks scary, but I cannot. Ah, oh, can I have? Can I play King F one? I might actually take over after King F one if it works. What do you mean? You just give away your A three bishop pawn? Well, after King E two, your bishop is trapped there, and your queen is also fixed. I'm threatening rook six. I could actually nice. win this. B4 is on the board, by the way. And A4 is on the board. So we are analyzing what is happening in the game. Yeah. Yan is playing so fast. But okay, that's typical. Very fast, taking even further time advantage. It is only move 28. Magnus has only 17 minutes on his clock. No bonus time. 
it's yeah this is i don't know what is the exact term here this is not time pressure can we call it a time crunch maybe it must make magnus nervous i think that uh, now nearly half of the time what he has of uh, Jan's time. And also it's a very tricky position, I believe. I like e3 because I really like this trap of uh, if bishop goes to a3, this king f1, king e2. Okay, so after bishop b2, you said king f1. No, rook c5 I did first, I think. I did rook c5 first. Oops, sorry. You have to maintain the... Goes you know. back, you go king f1. Very interesting idea to give up the pawn and then the, pawn, the bishop is kind of trapped. Bishop is trapped, but queen is fixed. I'll take on b5. And well, here at least white is playing only for two results. Look at this position. So what Magnus is up to? E3 or? So if after E3, black goes back bishop B6? Yeah, this is what I was thinking. Just to cover this uh, C5 square and you want because to Because still, black wants to go queen B3 and capturing the A3. So if rook C3. I had another very interesting idea, but probably doesn't work now. No, I was thinking if I could trap your queen on a3. Imagine, I mean, just hypothetically, yeah? let's say I play king f1 instead of rook c3. It does not work, but okay, let's say you play queen b3. Queen b3? Yeah, let's say I go king e2, king e2, you take queen a3, and I play rook b2. Ah, that's a nice try. But queen a1. Queen a1. Yeah, queen a1, I have, I have rook c1. Rook c1. Okay, so I go e5 first. Okay, I have to make a draw here with king d2. Sorry? I make a draw with king d2. So with the uh, move repetition, rook c3 and rook c1. Yeah, but of course king f1, when I played, you could play queen h1. Un unusual way. repetition of moves. <laughs> yes. But here I think I can go check and take on h2. Yes, and you are also going h5 check at the end. But even here, I have knight f4 actually. Because this queen is so misplaced. Knight f4. And the bishop is unstable as well. Mm -hmm. What I like the king on e2. It's actually not about king safety, but it's about rook safety. Yeah, the very interesting position. Yeah. 13 minutes. Now it is getting actually... He will soon have one minute per move. Very tense, very unusual for Magnus to run down in time so much. And we are still only at move 29. He's going to be making just in an accident. <clears throat> so what Black really has in mind after E3? My problem is if I don't play E3, what is the other move? I have this move, rook c, c2 and, no, rook c, c2 is... You don't want to play rook, uh, you don't want to bring your back uh, rook from c8 to c2, no? No, but I like e3. Yeah, e3 is really a very principal move. In other hand, after e3, I think black do have to play bishop b2. But imagine if... Is like after e3, bishop b2, rook c5, queen moves. What if I actually don't play king f1, but take on b2? Am I going to lose this? Queen takes d3. I'm not losing this. Ah, rook c1. Eh, sorry, rook a2. Ah, rook a2 is queen b1. Rook a2, b, b, queen b1. Yeah, rook, 
ya ruke tu pun bewan ya so ruke si tu pun dia tu ruke bisa ya iya Well, black is on the How? Queen A1 check and Queen B1? What am I doing? Sorry? Queen A1 check and Queen B1. Queen B1? Yes. I want to have that E4 check. And what? I give Rook C7, Rook A5, Rook doubling on the A. Yeah, drop. Extremely interesting that Magnus is going down in time and only 11 minutes left. Uh, now it will get really interesting because we will reach some critical moments when Magnus has to make uh, rapid decisions. Looking on his score sheet, seeing which number of movies he, getting a little nervous. <clears throat> But in reality, it seems like he's not in real danger at all. Yes. Although think about this, at this point, try to find a move other than e3 or uh, rook c2. If it is black to move, black will actually win after queen, a, queen b3. Um, so much of hesitation today. Once again, he hesitated. Yeah, black to move, queen b3, just zero one. What do you mean zero one? Knight to c1. Ah, you have knight c1. That's true. We don't give true. up so easily. It's it's. But wait, takes and queen b2, and then you'll eventually sack the. Yeah, the yeah. knight. And Magnus is about to go under 10 minutes. No bonus time. No bonus time. And still he has to make 12 moves, which is not easy unless you calculate all the way, which is not really possible, right? This, yeah, yeah. Very Actually, unusual situation. E3. E3 is on the board, finally. E3 on the board, yeah. But Magnus does not like what he sees on his clock. We could see on his uh, eyes when he was looking on the clock. E3 I, is on the board. And Nako is like not this. happy that he yeah. sees this. His usual way of sitting, putting his leg under himself. He would play bishop b2 quickly. I think that's the best way to keep the pressure. He has a self-confidence. Yeah. He knows that he's uh, having a match of anything can happen for three results. He had five draws in the previous games and game six, which most likely if I would have to make a prediction, I would say it's going to be a draw. But I think still there are some potential ways of uh, being decisive with this time management what uh, was happening here it was very surprising because magnus had up to two hours he had an advantage clear advantage on time and then little by little he dropped 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 and now actually he has under 10 minutes while napomniachi has 30 minutes still on his clock though not many options mm -hmm. <clears throat> Actually, I just um, realized that, uh, let's say bishop b2 you played. Yes. I played rook c5. And now, let's say if you play queen d6, I don't have the king f1 idea anymore. Because king f1, bishop a3, king e2, bishop b4. But I don't understand actually after king f1, bishop a3, what happens on rook b5. Bishop c1, a3. 
Yes. Oh, I see. For A3, you want to play Rook A5 and claim that uh, White will hold. And uh, uh, let's go one move back. Yeah, so if I get my queen to h1, still nothing. Yeah, king e2 and very difficult to create. Okay, rook a5 is possible, but okay, let's say I'm forcing. Yeah, yeah. Is fine. yeah, no, this is not, uh, this is fine. And it's, it's like even if black goes queen b1, I just go, I don't know, rook a5, bishop b4 is not possible to rook b5. Though in this position there are no. I mean, but why wouldn't you just take on a4 at this point? What do you mean? You give up your rook? Yeah, and clicking takes d2. Is black going to win this position? Probably. But why to give up? Yeah. No, because after this um, material one. Yeah. So, okay, let's get, get back once again. Queen d6, king f1 happened. Oh, bishop b5. Bishop b5. Bishop b5. But this is a straightforward. This actually we saw, yeah, we said rook c5 at this point. Rook c5, queen b3. And okay, this should be a draw now. Take on e5, take on b5. And rook d7. Rook d7, yeah? No, not rook d7. I'm blundering queen c1, queen c6. Yeah. No, no. Um, maybe something just simpler. King g2. Queen c1. Rook d6. <clears throat> Yeah, you just need to take this pawn and that's it. Just to double the rook on the a5, right? Yeah. King g2 is a safe move. Yeah, and there will be perpetual. Okay, after rook c5, he might go queen d7. Which after king f1 is played, bishop yes. b2, king e2 takes and then rook c3 so it's not possible oh actually hang on, hang on. after bishop b2 no uh, this queen d7 yeah here am i just winning a piece after rook cc2 no you want to say rook c3 no, rook a2 no. rook a3 or bishop b4 no rook a2, rook a2. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm just winning a piece in yeah. e5 after k to e5. Well, e5 knight c5 check. No, there's check. Yeah, you can play e4. Yeah, you can just play e4 and f3, yeah? Or f3. Either way, yeah. Well, f3, yeah, queen f5, king yeah, But it's definitely take... white who is looking for more, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So bishop e5. He was afraid that the bishop will be trapped. with. Magnus has six minutes, yeah? Very strange, no increment. Only move 30 and he's down to six minutes. And he's going to be making a move, I think, just within seconds. He's gonna make rook c5. He played h4. Wow. Why h4? 
would have never occurred to me at this point. Strange decisions. So if now Queen B3, let's see it quickly how it goes. Maybe he doesn't want to exchange the bishop. So rook c5 takes. Does he want to take this? H4 actually, this is a clear sign that Bankers wants to keep the game, keep the game going. Yeah, maybe he wants to go takes, takes, rook d7, queen a3, rook c7, but yeah, this looks fantastic, no? Oh, here white is not losing and black has uh, every reason to be scared. Very interesting decisions in the last few moves. By the way, in the final position, I just saw a very funny mate. The one which we saw. There, after rook d7? Yes. Let's see what you have in mind. Rook d7. So let's say queen takes b4. I saw rook f7, king g6. Uh, yeah, rook g7. Oh no, this was straightforward, mate. Okay, you okay, know. Yeah, no, after king f7, I mate, thought I had. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought I had e4, but yeah, just rook cf7 also wins. It's mate. So let's see after h4 what black wants to be doing. So this actually means that Magnus. With six minutes on clock for 10 moves, the h4 move indicates that he does not want to bail out with a draw with rook c5. I think he just thinks that this is the moment. Let's sharpen things out. I mean, not even sharpen things out. Just keep the position and let Jan possibly to make a mistake. Rook c5 is no rush with that because black anyway has to be playing queen b3 now. But queen b3, 95, it's just... Uh... And no the way yeah. I think. And Magnus... the king on h2, the king on h2 can be standing very well. Also, at some cases, maybe the pawn will be a helpful piece, teaming up with the rooks on the sevens. Yeah, I mean, usually uh, one of the simplest, uh, simple way to to tell this to viewers is that. You know, when bishop e5 happens, uh, you just ask what is your opponent threatening. And when you notice if queen b3 is not a threat, is he threatening bishop b2? No, but then why did he play bishop e5? So exactly. there is no threat. There is no threat. Okay, let me find a useful move. What can be a useful move? Okay, let, let me safeguard my king on g1. Give it more space. And h4, which is targeting the king on g7 in case uh, the minor piece get exchanged. Well, actually, h4 is a move which can be a critical moment for black. But let's see again. Queen b3, knight e5, takes, rook c7, rook c7, takes, rook d7. And this now let's fun. say, what if I go queen a1, king g2, e4, takes, okay. I go out. G4. Is this a win? Well, one thing is sure, only black is, white is playing for win. It looks deadly dangerous for black. But okay, a3. a3. It's your specialty, Judith. Find a mate. It looks incredibly dangerous for black. That's a fact. H5 was split. H5. With the same logic. Now, black also uh, says... Maybe okay, king h2. Two. What do you think about king h2? What do you want next? Well, so, whenever I play rook c5 and stuff, you don't have a check, so I win a tempo there. And Magnus has five minutes for ten moves. No increment on yeah. the time. 
no increments i like h5 black is basically saying the same what white said just now show me your yeah. plan show me your threat yeah so let's see what happens if rook c5 queen b3 knight takes e5 takes rook, rook c7. b7 queen a3 rook c7 and then black is just doing fine because all these pawn moves g4 h5 is not possible. exactly no, here king is very safe and even it's very important h5 because in this moment rook g4 is not possible to win the queen <clears throat> uh, okay let's go g4 no i thought you could play no, g4, here g4. Yeah, but king g4. e4 hey g4 king wins king e4 king e4 it doesn't win ah not yet but okay Maybe it will win. Who knows? Yeah. Who who is faster? Let's have some extra queens on the board. A three, A three. Okay. No, I cannot you play three. You can play A three. You have to move uh, with your king. Yeah, king but I give you check. King E two. H six. Okay, I have to push. No, no, no. Let's push. No, no. Let's push the pawn. A three. I don't take on H four. Okay. I told you. Let's have some uh, extra queens on the board to have fun. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. Queen. And you have to play king h2. Yeah. Now you have only one check. What do you mean one check? Where is your check? Uh, no, white, you white has one check. Yes. White has queen h5 check, but that's a very deadly check. What kind of line is this? What a position we have created. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't give these positions to our hands. <laughs> Which has got no connection with the, uh, with the game. We but why? What do you mean? It's all forced. <laughs> what is this position? Oh. Magnus has three minutes on his clock. Ten moves to make. Ten Imagine moves to make. Look at this. H5. H5. King H2 on the board, by the way. King H2. It was a logical continuation. Follow up after H4, though. Yeah. So, to... Open. Here only we started, yeah? Queen b3 we said. Yeah, we said queen b3. This is this is the line we're looking, no? Let's do it one more time. Ah, no, this is not the line we were looking. We were looking rook c5. We were looking rook c5. Look, queen, queen b3 queen. takes, takes rook, rook c7. c7. I take queen on it. Queen a3. No, but we end up the same line. Yeah, queen b4. If queen b4, maybe queen b4 shouldn't be done. Maybe queen b2 has to be done, you know. Maybe queen b2 is the move. So after check here. No, but e4, I'm very scared about e4 at this point. But how can we checkmate? A3. Um, well, it's 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 scary, obviously. No, rook e7, rook e7. Ah oh, no, rook is three cannot play. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, this is this is why I think queen b two is a better move. Wait, I have an idea. I play king g two at this point. So a two, if you play, I go rook g seven check. King h six. Rook g rook. No, 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 no. Rook e seven. Ah, rook e seven. And queen b three, rook c six. It's mate. Wow, it's not a mate. It's not a mate. It's not a mate. It's not a mate. It's so actually you go rook a seven first. Yeah. No, I missed. Uh... No, there was no mate. Yeah? King g six. No, then then I lost the momentum. No, you did. Uh... No, there is king king f six, and I have to make perpetual. It's a tooth one. You are kidding? Seriously? No, I have king f6. Eh? Rook g7. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say here, king f6, rook g7, and no stalemate because uh, a1, rook f7. 
no i will not, black will not allow white to play e4 this feels insane let's not allow white to play e4 okay I so i want to take on e4. Uh, e4 yes no no, no i want e4 what do you think about e4 No, no check. This... Oh, yeah, I lose the pawn on g5. Yeah, sorry, yeah, pawn on b5. No, this this is just winning for white, I think. Yeah, and you then pick up on b5. Yeah. No, let's say the most principal move. Let's say I take queen takes b4 one more time. Okay, hold on. Takes, takes, takes. Rook d7, right? Or rook c7. Rook c7. Rook c7. Rook c7. Let's be precise. Takes here. Let's say I take on b4 just to analyze this one more time. Rook f7 check. Okay, king has to come up. So let's say king g6. Now g4 I move. Now g4 I move. Takes. Mm -hmm. Check. So I have to. Okay, let's check. Say. No, check, king h6 you go, because after this I go maybe rook g8. You also have rook g5, rook g8. Yeah. Rook g5, king h6. Rook g5, king h6. So let's see, maybe g4 is not good in this case. So rook g7. King. Uh... If king h6, we played rook e7. Here it just wins because uh, the pawn on f2 is not attacked, yeah? But king g6. King g6, again the same same story, there is no e4. f3, king f6. No, you have, yeah, you might have king f6. No, king f6, rook g7. Ah, same, same, same trick. Although there is queen f8 this time. So, okay, in this position, takes, takes, king g6. But Jan will not be happy to enter this poli uh, position like this. But, is he, but can he do something else? What does he do? I save my bishop. Put it somewhere else. Play bishop b2. Okay, finally you go bishop b2, where my king is already on h2. So this time I play queen. Okay, we wanted to go king to e2, right? But still, rook c5, queen d6. Yes. I mean, what if just rook h5, e5, yeah? Maybe e5. Yeah, e5 looks good. Okay, so in this position, if takes bishop a3. <clears throat> This actually looks better than what I had before. It's scary for black though. What a what a play actually by Magnus. Yeah, he wants to win desperately. Spending I mean, his yeah. time making this moves like he wants him to suffer, Jan. Make yeah, a move which is not the best. This is like he's like giving the option for black to to make the wrong decision exactly this this sense yeah like uh he smells there could be slightest chance and then he takes it he doesn't care about three minutes and, or and he feels that he's not he understood the position and he's he knows that he is doing it under control and black can make much more mistakes than he can i think in this position yeah. with the two rook it's very typical right yes yeah no this was fantastic actually starting from this rook d2 and h4 yeah how he's sensing oh, how he senses. to create something where you would think already okay it's pretty drawish let's simplify yeah so i think uh bishop b2 was b was the move from jan which probably should have been played no instead of bishop e5 yeah and also he might be uh, 
thinking why he did not play five when he had the chance. And now he's thinking for quite a long time already. By the way, is Bishop A1 a move? Well, it's uh, pretty desperate, I must say. Ah, rook c7, yeah, I wanted again by putting the bishop on a1. Well, okay, let's try queen b3. No, allowing the knight on f. Oh, no, knight f. But you want to go f5, no? Ah, actually, finally, I can play f5. And the uh, long diagonal bishop can be quite useful in, in the defense. Yeah, bishop a1 could be a move. <clears throat> so what about rook c5? Queen b3. But knight f4, what am I doing now? Yeah, the h5 pawn is uh, is is hanging. Takes. Takes. I this don't know. On a, this bishop on a1 is a savior, yeah? So queen c1 and rook d8 f5 right oh, I, wait was there a mate trade because i had queen f1 ah oh, you had knight f4 yeah i have queen f1 yeah check king g6 check and king g7 check and mate ah mate. not mate no 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 oh. no, no. No, because you give it check. I have queen d1 then... check. <clears throat> I have queen d1 check. Okay, so it's not there yet. So this is uh, only. Yeah, this is not there. B rook c what? Bishop c bishop b2. Rook c5. Okay, okay so this is what we have. But uh, the so, engine, engine says it's blunder, by the way. I mean, the but this we saw, right? But this is what we were looking and we saw that white, bl uh, black is in trouble. But why is it a blunder? Why can't I play queen d6? I don't understand this engine. Queen b6? Queen d6? Queen we, d took on, we took on b5. I understand, but computer says plus 3, which I don't get it at all. The in the screen maybe after queen d6 no i think it's just blabbering am i are we missing something concrete yes some pieces uh... what is happening after queen d6 rook cc2 is that a move and no. bishop this bishop a3 I don't see anything. So queen d6. Plus 3.38 in your screen right now. No, but queen, I understand queen d7 rook cc2, but what is wrong with queen d6? Can somebody explain? Because if queen d7, then rook c2 and the white wins the bishop. This we saw, this we saw before, but queen d6? Isn't it possible just rook d1, bishop a3, rook b5 and your bishop no, doesn't come let, out? Let me, let me check in the website, let me make this move queen d6 and see what it is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Knight f4 is so easy to miss. Yes. <clears throat> but it means that this idea would work also probably without black playing h5. Because this is a problem anyway. Because after knight f4, it's not about the h5 uh, pawn. It's about the seventh rank and the e6 weakness. 
but it is also about your uh, white skin safety on h2 it is secure yes F4, no h4 h4 was the move h4 was the move where uh, he created for himself opportunities oh this is absolutely brilliant wow rook c c2 and knight f4 so rook c c2 is basically to attack the king queen d6 is king on the board and rook d1 he plays yeah it's i can imagine i mean we knew this was winning but still i mean it's, he made it within a few seconds let's see what's after rook d1 Now bishop into a3, yeah? Bishop a3. And now rook b5. This is what I wanted to play also. <laughs> yeah. The solid way of doing it. No, but I, it's understandable, yeah? Like even when computer was showing plus 3, it was not obvious how rook c2 and knight f4 is. Yeah, but now the computer is not showing plus 3. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's one thing to look at the engine and say it was winning and so on. Yeah. But as a player, you know how difficult uh, it is, yeah? Obviously, I mean, to switch in this, you know, from one side of the board to another and suddenly realizing it that, wow, now it's the moment knight f4 and the seventh ranks. So what kind of uh, uh, memories you have from these kind of moments when you saw something like this? Because I'm pretty sure you also had something like this when you said, oh, it's a blunder, oh, we survived. Yeah, the, the most difficult part is always, you know, when you know it's a blunder, but opponent is thinking. And you have spotted it, but you don't know whether your opponent spotted it or not. So your heart is beating fast, you're probably inside you are burning. But you cannot show it because then, you know, opponent might notice. Like, for example, it's very much possible if Nepo would have, Jan would have spotted uh, Rook CC2 and Knight F4. He had to keep that poker face. And he would be under tremendous tension, yeah? Like, would Magnus see it or not? But I think things are going out of control in any case. Uh, even though objectively not winning at all for white so what's the best move for black now magnus went down under three minutes and we can say that actually it uh, cost him this this uh, fact that he went down on time because maybe if he's not down on time so much he could find it actually so if i play queen c6 now you have rook c5 Queen c6, rook cannot take on h5 because of queen f3 queen double c2. attack. Ah, also queen f3, yeah. But rook c5. Queen f3? Yeah. Uh, yeah, queen d7 was played. Actually, after queen d7, uh, there is no place for the rook to go. Oh. Rook b6, rook b6 and rook b8 runs into queen c7. Rook a5 and rook c5, you lose the b4 pawn. Rook c5 is played, so he... Bishop into b4. Bishop b4. Things are like a roller coaster in the last few moves, I must say. Wow. So all the Magnus fans, they got a... They were cheering probably, and then they went down. Yeah. And now the young fan... Young fan... <laughs> I'm thinking about this, yeah, like, despite knowing that this was plus three, actually could not find uh, the winning idea, and Magnus did not know it. It makes a lot of difference. If uh, somebody would tell Magnus during the game, here, this is the moment it's winning, he would immediately find it. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't so need we any... Didn't, we knew that it's winning and we didn't find it. <laughs> But we are not Magnus, I understand. We are not Magnus and we are not playing in a tournament. So we can be excused for suggesting bad moves. 
So let's see, rook c5. So what's going on? Bishop b4. He goes rook c4. And bishop just goes back and he's going to have a pawn on a3. Yes. Wait, here knight b2, you have queen b5. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely not funny. Move 35 and only 2 minutes and 35 seconds on the clock for Magnus and 5 minutes 30 seconds for Jan. This is the first game where we see something like this, that the players are in time trouble. Yeah, we should definitely get back to this rook cc2 position uh, maybe after the time control. It was such an important moment. Well, Just let's see. I think the that. next four moves are still uh, opportunity for the players to make mistakes, blunders, and it will be very interesting to see what kind of position we are reaching after move 40. True. When the players will have the opportunity to reconsider everything and uh, think about it. Of course, this is not something very nice for white to have still the a4 pawn there because it is going to be moving towards to a3. What do you think uh, Jan is thinking about if not bishop into b4? There is no bishop b2, so what else could he be considering? e5 or what? He's thinking even with four minutes on the clock. Well, e5 is kind of the only other move which he can be thinking, probably. To, to understand if inclusion of e5, e4 favors him or not, yeah? But wait, e5, e4, now I suddenly have rook d5 ideas. But I'm not sure why it should be playing e4. Why not rook c4, maybe? Yeah. Well, okay, you can go queen d5. No, maybe e4 and rook d5, yeah? Ah, okay. And white is doing fine, yeah. And he went e5. Wow. And now the question is whether e4 or something else going to be the reply. Two minutes and 20 seconds. With how many moves to go? This is move 35. So five, five more moves. moves. Five more moves, two minutes without, and seven seconds. Without increment. Without increment. Uh, from which World Championship match it started or it is the first time? What was the previous World Championship match? This increment from move 60? Uh, no, I think in the previous they had uh, from move 1. So this is like the first time. This is the what they changed because they wanted to have... Uh, uh bigger challenge this to the players <laughs> this situation they wanted to have exactly this is exciting one and a half minutes complicated position so what are the options e4 looks well after e4 maybe queen, queen d4. d4 there is queen d4 but white can go maybe rook a5 takes takes ah queen but the queen e2 Rook a1. A bishop b2. Bishop b2. Rook a2. Uh, rook a2, rook a2. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. E4. Now. C2 was played. Rook c2. What is the point? I don't know. What if bishop b4? What does he want on for bishop b4? I don't understand this. But I'm uh, maybe, not even sure e4 is not good. Ah, maybe he wants rook a2. What do you mean? Where? Bishop b4. Can I play rook a2? And can I can I sacrifice this? But or am I losing f2? Well, so knight into b4, knight into b4. Takes and queen b2. Queen d2. Ah, because you have e4. 
But even that is a fortress, yeah? What do you mean? Like, Ah, uh, you mean here and knight f4? Knight f4, knight g2. Okay, this is a fortress. I'm not sure, but it feels. I'll keep my rook on fifth rank. You'll play f5, f4. I'll take g into f4. Okay, let's see. After rook c2. e4 is also possible. Queen d5. Something, I, I don't know what will happen in move 40. Look at this, Magnus is under a minute, under a minute. And Jan is two minutes, zero, three seconds. Crazy, Magnus this has to really, make really four exciting. moves and the position is not fun. 43 seconds. Yeah, Rook DD2, completely consolidating. Rook D2. But suddenly white looks safe. Yeah, the heartbeat probably is not ordinary for the players right now. Not to take this. Now actually I don't even see how uh, black is uh, creating any pressure. Well, it seems oh. like evaluation and the situation changes in every move. I mean, I'm willing to go this far to say that uh, Jan probably Queen missed. Queen B3. You know. Queen B3? One minute, 27 seconds. Magnus is down to 35 seconds. Rook A2. Ooh. But this cannot go wrong for white anymore. What about bishop B4? White will be probably taking rook D3. And then oh, no, no. it's black who is going to be suffer quite a bit. No. If you play bishop B4, I play rook D, B2. And then take on B4, take on A4. And this will be yeah crumb. yeah but yeah i mean uh, you have several ways of doing this exactly yeah. and after this magnus will be playing another 40 moves well like kramnik like obrisago 2004 two rooks versus queen same side uh, pawns what about e4 knight f4 or oh, wait a second can i play knight c5 and knight e4 Probably, but what about rook c2 here? What a stalemate. St not stalemate, but <laughs> nobody can move. Look at this. E4, knight c5. E4, knight b4. c5. Queen b4. Magnus 28 board. seconds. Knight e4. What about queen b3? Black goes queen b3 and moves away with his bishop a3. Maybe it what was not just, the best. What just happened, yeah? Move 40, black goes down to 6 seconds and he just made it time, queen b3. Oh and we're reaching God. out, both players received the one extra hour. And what is this game? What an excitement. What an excitement, seriously. But I think uh, White made a mistake because in the previous move, if he goes rook c2, he would torture black forever because knight a4 would be a threat. If we go back here and white goes rook c2, look at this. Black cannot make a move. Oh, wow. It's a stalemate, yeah? Rook oh, actually, c2. F5 or something, yeah? F5 or something, whatever white takes and plays rook c3, right? <clears throat> Yes. Although this would be very hard to... It would be very hard, hard to win, but it's a one-way ticket, right? Absolutely. 100%. And right now, after knight e4, queen b3, black's idea is to go back with the bishop to e7, push a3, and once black has a pawn on a3, it's not white who is going to be uh, pushing, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Do you want to go back a little and uh, break it from this uh, winning position? What a, what, a, what, a, what a game in the last 10 moves. How exciting yeah, was... it became. The last 10 moves, right? Starting from h4. Yeah. So let's see. So h4 we said, uh, yeah, black doesn't have threat. So black played h5 here. 
Yeah, which seems to me that Black maybe was not aware of it, what is really the plan of Magnus, right? He mm -hmm. spent all his time practically Magnus and created something out of a position where not many people thought that it's possible to create something. It's like squeezing water out of stone, bishop b2, rook c5, and bishop c2, after rook c5, queen d6 was a blunder, or...? No, this is this is the blunder, and here rook c c2 is uh, apparently... And rook c c2, yeah. the idea completely shifting to the other side of the board. I mean, how is this, isn't it? If we wouldn't have computers, nobody no would be... No, so, I mean, how could you imagine rook c c2 is a move that with the rook on c2 you actually target with the, the intention to go knight to f4 and put your rooks on the seventh, right? Yeah. But what about queen e7? It's not on the seventh, it's the eighth. So actually it's the seventh or the eighth and it's just mate. And okay, let's go back. Uh, if I but go even back, here, why is it a checkmate? It's not checkmate yet. Oh, knight h5, <laughs> yeah. Knight h5 is mate. King g6. Rook h8. That should do. Yeah. No, but it's uh, it's it's not easy to see but this. If you, it's possible, but, if, but it's not easy. Yeah, but if you not go... Uh, after knight f4, if you put, uh, let's say bishop into a3, knight f4. And if I take on b4, then you go on 8th rank or you go on 7th uh, rank? I think rank. to the 7th. Very unusual. Like, first you retreat, protect your rook on d2, unpin yes. your knight, and then, then start attacking. And what was on the case on, uh, on rook c2, if bishop e5, then f4, right? Yeah, this was the problem, yes. F4 and on bishop a1, white goes... Rook a, rook, rooks, right. <laughs> 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 maybe just knight e5. Yeah, maybe knight e5, yeah. So, Black would have to go back. Actually, you could also play rook d1, Judith. Could you? And then slowly. You have no threat for the moment. <clears throat> no, knight, knight, knight f2 is a threat. Knight f2 is a threat, sorry. Yeah. And after queen d5? I was hoping to play rook c1, but I'm not sure. No, but it's correct. No, queen a2? And queen c2. Bishop b2, yeah? Bishop b2, yeah. Uh, bishop b2, there is rook d2. Not rook c2, but rook d2. Hello. Uh, but this is not clear again. This is not clear. Again. Not clear again. No. So go back. We must have missed something for sure here. Ah, uh, no. Knight f4 anyway. Knight h4. Knight f4 anyway. Uh, knight f4 at least. Yeah. At least knight f4 takes the pawn coming back. Yeah. So, okay. What happened in the game then? By the way, there is another way, yeah. In the game it happened after queen d6, white went rook d1, bishop a3, rook b5. e5 was played here, yeah? No, no queen d7 first. Very important. And then he went d5 instead of taking on b4, which was not clear why uh, it was not taken on b4. I think bishop b4 was the move. Bishop b4 was, uh, yeah. Bishop b4 should be the move. And then simply going back, maybe he didn't, he th thought that black goes back and knight b2, but after knight b2 you have queen b5. Mm -hmm. So rook b bishop b4 should be the move. He went e5, rook c2. Uh, I don't know what would happen. Uh, here, yeah, here, why he did not take is very surprising. So this is the fort, some sort of fortress we were trying to create here yeah, with rook a two. Yeah, rook this, a2 no, play, but rook a two a three. Well, this we saw. Yeah, knight into b four. I wanted. Yeah, this is what we saw. Yes, yes, yes. I yeah. don't. I 
it looked like a fortress but i don't know if we missed something no i don't think there is anything because after night b4 takes takes unless black goes e4 no but i mean okay my b4 knight a3 rook and f2 everything is uh loose but uh, no maybe just here and it's nothing no but instead of e4 do you have something else well what we looked queen d2 knight d3 e4 here but i think this is nothing yeah this is nothing mm. well 92 what's wrong with that f5 f4 will be nothing yeah f5 f5 take yeah now i have too many i think you just time. have to keep your rook on a5 uh, this time even a6 yeah i can even keep on yeah a6 a5 I yeah. mean, the only idea white uh, black would have to play king g6, sacrifice the pawn, and then maybe to come with the king to but g4. Then, yeah. And we then what you want to ask? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go what happened. Queen d5, rook d2. And then this this was a missed opportunity for Magnus, rook c2 here. Because uh, rook c2 was a very nice spot. <clears throat> ah, but queen b1. Knight a4. No, but queen b1, knight a4, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, rook c2, rook d2 was brilliant. But you know, there is a funny idea I have. What do you think about playing takes takes and rook d b2? <laughs> Wait, but I, I should be able to untangle myself, no? How? And you were saying I cannot move my queen because you have rook d3, but you also don't have a threat. I can go rook b1. Ah, you want rook b1, yes. My plan is to go king g2. After that to go, I'm just passing, I just show rook b1 and rook a1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though you should be playing f4. <laughs> four, seven, yeah? seven. You didn't you didn't need king g2 actually. F5 play rook b1. Yeah. But after that you go queen c4 and queen c2. This is what I wanted to avoid. Oh, okay, so rook f1. Rook f1, king g, g1 will slowly crawl out. Yeah, so knight a4 was still possible. He went knight e4, queen b3. This is the position and Magnus is thinking already for 10 minutes now. So now the players have an extra one hour each. And from starting from move 61, which I think that we have very good chance that it's going to be the longest game of the match so far. From move 61, they receive 15 extra minutes and 30 seconds per move. Let's see where we are standing after queen b3. Is there a way for white to get rid of the a4 pawn? Probably not. The knight is standing in the center in e4, but after black moves back with his bishop to e7 and plays f5 possibly, it's not going to be uh, easy for white. Yeah. <clears throat> also, what is uh, black? So, you know, there is a way. What do you think if I go rook c2? Mm hmm. And what I wanted to show that maybe move after bishop b4, I would be able to go rook b2 and sacrifice. Yeah, sure, and play knight c3. Yeah, and somehow the idea is, but after this, queen a2 comes. I no, just no, wanted... queen c4, no, queen c4 you cannot play because you take on a4 then. Ah, yeah. So what can you do? You have to go queen e6 or no? Rook a4 anyway. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, so after so in this position after bishop e seven, you're doing yeah, bishop e seven. Bishop e seven. 
But okay, Ruby too. Ruby D too. C B two. <laughs> so Queen D one Knight C three. And if Queen uh, C four only move. Knight d2. Queen. Queen c3. Queen c3, knight b1. Anyway, I'm heading there. Mm -hmm. Basically, if white gets uh, the opportunity to sacrifice the knight, the rook, for the, uh, bishop, and the pawn? bishop and the pawn, and, yeah, then the, knight, the, and the white rook from a2 goes to f4, it's a draw, right? Yes, b4, f4, anywhere. That draw. Yeah. Or Not even if it is... Rook I mean, B4, D4 or F4, and it's not very difficult to reach. Sure. So probably Magnus oh. will be thinking quite a bit in this position, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> so after this position after queen b3 we were looking rook uh, d2 to c2 yeah bishop e7 looks like the most natural move bishop e7 okay one second judith what color would you pick white or black I think it's roughly equal now. Yeah, but what color would you like to play in this position? As white or as black? If you could choose. Mm. Maybe white. Yeah. Me too, because I feel at any point, uh, there is always this escape route I can sacrifice and create a fortress. I mean, let's say I go knight d2, you go queen b4, and I go knight f3. And I oh, put queen, my knight on d4. Queen b4 is rook c4. I ah, sorry, 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 sorry. You went, where did you go? Queen d3. Yeah. Okay, queen d3, I go knight f3, you go a3, and I go knight d4. No, there is no, there is just, black has zero plans in this position. I don't think white, I mean, white is not running any risk. There is only one thing white should be avoiding, allow the black bishop to b2. Why? I'll take on b2. No, but the way that I'm protecting b2. Ah, you mean you have your bishop on b2 and let's say queen on b2. And BC. queen on b1. <laughs> queen, you want everything. <laughs> well, I just uh, mapped out a scenario where I would be happy with black. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in two minutes. Sure. So let's see the position right now. Well, for some of our new viewers, I can say that we had an incredible interesting game today. As yet, after the yesterday's free day, it seemed like both players wanted to sharpen a little bit things out, even though in the opening it was not possible necessarily. But uh, both players were playing some critical move. If I just go back a little summary on this game, uh, there was a very interesting move by, uh, by Jan with the black pieces. He went B5, where we could feel that he's, he does not want to go for the solid way, but he wants to go take his chances. He wants to be active. And he wants to create some opportunity and chance for himself if it's possible. At the same time, Magnus was also similarly in uh, this kind of move that whatever happens, he tries to squeeze out the opportunity for his favor. 
And later on, where we had this moment, uh, I'm just looking here, already we could feel that in this position where black seemed to have a wonderful position, middle game, white played queen c2, bringing the queen back to c2. And after that, when in this position, after king g7, we were expecting that white is going to be playing e3, and after that, to stabilize the position with queen e2, and somehow there's going to be simplification and most likely a draw. Magnus started to spend a lot of time at this stage of the game, especially, and he went rook d2. And already here we could feel that he has the sense that I want to give the opportunity for Jan to make a mistake. I want to give the chance for him to make a bad decision or somehow to try to play for a win and maybe I will get some chance which I can be grabbing. So after rook d2, black made a very interesting and kind of surprising move because after rook c8 it was pretty obvious that it's going to be this uh, strange uh, piece uh, material in the game because now black has a queen for white's two rook. And the two rook in principle usually can give more trouble than the queen alone against the two rooks. And this is what happened here also, that actually it was pretty okay for black playing queen d5, a4, of course, this a3 pawn was there, which can be weak. But after this, after e3, bishop e5 was played. We thought bishop b2 was maybe more logical. And now h4, this was a real sign for uh, Magnus that he is playing for a win. He wants to create some opportunity for himself. He wants to allow Ian to make a mistake. And he did. And he did because he went h5. After that, King h2, which was very nicely thought out by Magnus, spent a lot of time. And at this point, he went already down to three minutes, which is very unusual for Magnus, that's for sure. And then Bishop went to b2, and in this point, this was the moment of the game, which finally in game six, there was an opportunity for Magnus to take over and collect the point according to the engines, but it's very difficult to uh, find this move for white because instead of rook d1, white's winning plan was to come back to c2, protect the rook on d2, and after bishop a3 to jump the knight to f4 and not the main problem for black the h5 pawn but after queen e7 the eighth rank is the real problem for black because he cannot stop white controlling the eight eight and actually black is going to get mated even if the pawn would be on h7 it would be difficult for black but this way it's definitely black is reaching nowhere and actually he's going to be mated in this game so this was the opportunity for magnus he does not know it i'm pretty sure about that because he would go nuts already which he's going to be at the press conference i believe but uh, i i just sorry, sorry for interrupting i was just uh, about to ask uh, what do you normally uh do in this in such scenario like after 48 move would you calculate what did you miss is that a wise idea or you know just say forget everything else and focus on the current position no i think the best thing you can do go to the bathroom refresh yourself say okay whatever happened i don't know what happened it was a mess somehow to forget about that if i had opportunity or i didn't of course it's different for both players right because jan has a reasonable position here magnus mm -hmm. might have felt that there was something, but I think he's more professional than that to be annoying, you know, uh, thinking about something like this. Because mm -hmm. if he doesn't find it, he's just wasting time. If he finds it, it's much worse <laughs> because cool. he cannot focus cool. on the rest of the game, right? Yeah. So he cannot, he cannot uh, think about that. He, he just has to be focusing on the exact position what's running now. Yeah. Bishop also, rook c2 and uh, knight f4 is not the first move that comes into mind. Where? Well, the winning combination, yeah, to play rook yes. c2 and knight f4, it doesn't come into mind 
automatically. Though it comes to mind, especially after Black Blade Age 5, but it doesn't come to mind, it's very hard to connect, that you give up all your pawns on the queen side in order to jump to f4, and not the main idea is to take on h5, but yeah. with your two rooks you can go either to the 7th or the 8th rank. And yeah. either way, whatever chance you have, it's going to be checkmate, because black simply cannot hold uh, the seventh rank because of all the pins and all the problems. So those extra pawns and the bishop cannot give any help for the king's side for black. True, as in, and as you rightly mentioned, it works especially well after black has played h5. Without h5, at least the king could hide on h6. But when you have little time, it's very difficult to realize these details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, the players are always looking that, okay, I want to create chances, but not on a cost that I can uh, suffer or I can uh, get uh, problems, right? So of course, yeah. Magnus is also playing the way that I want to create opportunity for, for myself. But I don't want to give a chance that, well, maybe I miscalculate something and then I'm just much worse. And I gave up pawns for nothing. True, true. true. So bishop f8 was played, not to e7. What is the idea of the rook c8, let's say? Uh, threatening knight f6. Yes, I was just wondering about that also. What happens if white goes uh, active instead of going passive on the... Uh, keeping the rooks on the second, both of them. Okay, but a3. after rooks c8... a3, let's say, yeah? a3. What Knight about f3. just making a rook, a rook d8? I'm sorry. You want to mate, as usual. I said, as usual, you want to mate. No, but this is uh, over, no? Mm. Probably not because you go queen b4 and no, after no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, no. How is it over? Judith, f6 is protected. I can play a2. Rook d8. I play a2. Rook f8. Wow. I play. You have no oh. check. You have. What do you mean? Rook h8. That's, that's a bad news. Bye bye. King g6, knight d6. Ah, oh, it's not bye bye yet. Okay. I thought it's over, but I'm, I was over optimistic, it seems. But knight d6. Oh, I'm not. I'm not over optimistic. I just go knight c5. Oh, but then knight queen, queen d4. Queen d1. Queen f4. Queen f4. Queen d4. No, you, you could play e4 and uh, rook h5. No, what I have to do here to go g4. g4 is the move. And now rook g8. And go knight c5. And then I have queen e5. I can't believe it. No. Okay, let's slow down a bit here. Uh, before g4. Uh, but anyway, knight c5 was split. Uh, ah, so knight c5 now. <laughs> well, same queen d1, yeah? Queen d1. Yeah, queen d1. h5 is protected. You can get one queen, but not both. Yeah. <clears throat> Knight c5 on the board. Knight c. Ah, he just wants to grab maybe, or what does he want? Ah, but for black, it's. Uh, he cannot go queen b4 because of rook d4. Well, even this is possible, though. B1. Queen B1. Queen B1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so knight c5, queen b4, knight d7. Bishop b7. Maybe the idea is uh, not knight d7, but get the knight to f4. Knight d3. Ah, uh, knight d3, knight f4, of course. Of course. Of course. 
Yeah, I okay. see Keep our computer, there. which is below the live board game, zero, zero, zero. What else? Yeah. Very clear, and, cut, uh, right? Yeah. Very easy to understand. So, knight c5. Well, there is not much of an option for black, right? Queen b5 or queen b4. So, queen b5, knight d3. A3, you go knight F4. F4. <clears throat> okay, just keep waiting, let's say. Magnus went down uh, to 37 minutes. But if he gets the H5 pawn, so then that he's... can be challenging. So what about... Queen F5? And then you want rook C7, no. Actually, it's a very difficult position to play with black, I think. Extremely difficult. It's like 10 times more difficult to play it with black than with white. Because also another reason is if white makes a mistake, he will have to bail out with a fortress. If black makes a mistake, he can get mated. Exactly. Practically, the knight is kept on f4. There mm -hmm. is no, no scenario where black can have anything. Sure. Simply there but is no scenario. That... Even if he's getting with his bishop to b2, you're just playing uh, or no? No, he needs bishop on b2 with uh, yeah, with my rook on a2 and that also has to be trapped. But I'm always one move away to play knight d3. So white is having zero danger. Yeah, but I want to say, let's say we just... Uh, <clears throat> let's say I'm just making stupid moves. And okay, so this is something that black wins, right? The only scenario, but even in this position, if I just go rook a2, and after bishop b2, just go knight d3, yes. it's a draw. It's still right? a draw. Exactly, absolutely. So 100. This is a draw. So white yeah. is not risking anything. This is what we have on the board, obviously, what you say, knight d3, <clears throat> and knight is reaching out to f4. And this is so annoying to play with black. Yes. Oh. It's like you have to make a difference in calculation. What is better? Queen a5, queen f5, queen b6. Yeah. So maybe when we see go... for many um, uh, viewers, you know, those who will be seeing uh, only engines, they can say, you know, it's 0 0.00, but it's not the same. I mean, for computer, for example, imagine a position where white has 10 different moves to make a draw and black has 10 series of only moves to make a draw. Computer will say still 0 0.00, but for exactly. human, it's not the same. So, exactly. what do you think about bishop d6? And being very straightforward with black, let's say knight f4, I just want to take it. Isn't this the best for black? <clears throat> I guess I have to take with the e pawn because I to make sure this king okay. is safe. Okay. A3. Rook a2. No, no, rook a2, no, rook a2, I cannot play. Then queen b3. Then uh, rook a1. Ah. This pawn is gone four by four. Say I get rook a two. Ah, so actually, I cannot hold. I cannot uh, hold my pawn. Well, you have to keep on attacking my other rook. So you have to play queen b. No, queen b four. You cannot play. No, but you cannot. Yeah. No. This pawn is gone. This pawn is gone. Okay, but if this pawn is gone, then most likely the game is gone. Correct. <laughs> so okay. I... So bishop cannot be captured. Uh, exchanged on f four. Which means that probably the defensive plan for black is continuously the counterattack. Let's say playing a3 or no. No, you, you know, know what it... I do? I go bishop d6 and after knight f4 I go maybe bishop e5. Giving the h5 pawn with a check? No, not bishop e5. I go back bishop d8, b8, let's say. Uh, rook d5. Queen b3. Now, rook and C somehow to a counter. Uh, rook is bishop f4. Rook is bishop f4. Okay, we have a3 on the board. So knight f4 will happen in no time. Yeah, it should be the move, I believe. 
Now I was thinking, um, what should be the defensive setup and what is the attacking but setup? But they should be four. They should be four. I go. They should be four. Unless you go rook d eight. Okay, rook d five. No rook d five. Rook d five with a four. Knight h five check. Am I mating or not? No rook idea. King king h six. Okay, let's try. rook c eight. I know I have I have a draw at least or not. Okay, check rook g six. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Was there? Ah, rook h five. You want here? Yeah? So now it's over. How f five? Knight h five. Ah, yeah. Yes. I mean, to calculate these lines for Jan, it's whew, it is very stressful. Interesting so, that Magnus is not in a rush to play knight f four. But after knight f four, I I do not like to move this bishop immediately because maybe it is defending me. Maybe I should make a move which will yeah queen b three queen f no the knight h five check is there. So let's say queen a5, but rook d5. Anyway, rook d5. <clears throat> but okay, bishop is an f8. But knight h5 check still. Yeah? Knight h5 check because after king h6 still there is rook c8. But this time a2. This time it's two yeah, queens. Takes. Okay, queen. It's still the same story. Check. So Knight f4. King g7. King g7 and you go rook d8. Rook, rook, rook d8. d8. Knight. Nice, no? With two rooks yes. and knight. Yes. Not bad. Only if there would be a pawn on f5, another pawn, then actually it's a draw. With a beautiful stalemate, you want to With say. a beautiful stalemate. Yeah, we can share and reveal that we both like very much chess composition okay. studies. Yes. So that's why we realize it in a second how it could be saved by black. Yeah. Maybe you can show this. Eh? We cannot do this right now because there is a five move available. Yeah. This will not work. Ah, yeah. No, that also I can solve. H8 rook is hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there would be an extra pawn of black here, then there would be no move. Yes. But this is not the case. This is not the position here. Knight f4 is on the board. Whew. Very tough for black. Indeed. So what would you think in this position if uh, an ant would have something like this? Where you see that it's it's very sweating and it's oof, very difficult to calculate and save because probably black should be playing only moves. Well, there was a moment I remember during this match we used to tease Anand by saying he is the boss of fortress. If there is a fortress, Anand will spot it and he will sit tight. How many times he swindled with fortress? Uh, you know, creating a fortress and then uh, making a draw. So he, he he has this. I know Magnus doesn't believe in fortress, but yeah. very common, he is very good at spotting fortress. But okay, here it is not. It is definitely not a fortress. I mean, this is very dynamic position. Black cannot just say, you know, I'm sitting and waiting. Exactly, and the the problem he has, I think, that it's a lot of sharp calculations. Because it is only, I think it's only about counterplay. That's how he can save it. Yeah, queen a5 happens. So I'm curious what he has in mind after rook d5. I have a feeling that this uh, Magnus will win this. What do you think? There's very good chance that he will actually uh, win this. Uh, maybe after, no, rook d5, what does he want? In a4. Moves we were looking. 
what did we say? We said 19 to H5, no? 9th H5, King H6, Rook C8. A queen B4, no, queen B4. Ah, no, maybe you know what he wants to do. Rook D5, queen A8, I think. What do you think about this move? Not queen A4, queen A8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Control the back rank. So rook, C, rook A2 has to be played, right? Yeah, now queen B7. Ah, no, then knight H5 check. This is a bad news, no? Okay, but the problem is if he goes queen a4, check, rook c8, <clears throat> this was the line we looked at, a2 takes yes. and mate. <clears throat> rook a2 was played instead. Safety first. Safety first, yeah. Well, actually, it's a logical decision because the, rook, the the h5 pawn will fall off in any case. <clears throat> By playing rook d5, you mean, yeah, sooner or later? Unless bishop b4 is possible. Maybe black has to be what we were talking about it, right? To be somehow very concrete. I don't know, queen a4. So after check... Black can go, let's say, king h6 and queen b3 next move. <clears throat> so, poor rook on a2. Yeah. Oh, and you want to start I... with bishop? Bishop b4 on the board. Bishop b4 is out there. So black has to rely on tactics, yeah? I think so. Which uh, Jan is pretty good at. Yes. I think it's uh, the, the full defense for Jan is about concrete calculations and counterplay. Mm -hmm. It's not a position where you just say, you know, I, I keep my pieces here and I sit. That's zero, not zero, zero. You just say <laughs> zero, zero, zero. Let's agree to a draw. <clears throat> well, only if you could play f6 to g6, that would be really nice. That's a very different story. That's a whole different story. So where is he going to be moving with his rook? Because now it's a serious decision to make. If rook d5, queen a4, <clears throat> knight h5, king h6. And now queen b3 is coming. Uh, and I cannot create mate with just rook and knight. I was trying to think if after knight f6, queen b3, g4, queen a2, there is some mate, but no. No, it's not enough. I can play... You can have a draw though. Rook g5, yeah, I can play rook g5 and make a draw. Which is nice, mm -hmm. but with the draw, you don't take the lead in the match. No. Which probably will be the case, yeah? I was over optimistic maybe by saying that Magnus can, will win this game. But you never know. So he will play rook c2. <clears throat> How black is defending his uh, pawn on h5. Also possible maybe just to go rook d3. What do you think? Uh, with the idea of d5 or what? With the idea just to sit and wait and let uh, Jan to make a mistake. Sounds Jan is like very a comfortable. You can see at the board he's, mm -hmm. he has a self-confidence in his position. Walking in the fish tank. 
Ian is also very, very good uh, when it comes to the short tactics. Yeah, now it's a big question where the rook will be moved because wherever it's going to be moved, it will be not so easy to regroup it to anywhere else. Also, mm -hmm. even if you get the pawn on h5, it's not clear how, after that also how it is going. One thing we can say, the game will last for a long time today. Okay, the h5 pawn, I think Magnus just wants to collect it and then we'll sit and wait. Yes. It's better if it's not there. Yeah. And I think still some effort has to be made in order yes. to, to take that off. True. This could be the longest game, right? I think it will be. What move we have? Rook d3. Rook d3 on the move. <clears throat> But now what happens if black goes, let's say, rook, queen c5, and I want to reach out to c4, <clears throat> then rook, rook d4. D rook d5, you want queen c4, basically. Yeah? Yes, but maybe you have rook d4. Also, tell me something. Imagine, okay, instead of uh, just to get this position, let's say I don't play rook d4, Hypothetically, okay, you play queen c5, I play king g2, yes. for example. King g2, let's say. Queen you c2. go queen. Ah. Yeah, and I take on a3. I am again playing for two results. Probably this is a draw, but okay, well, it's only white who will try. Yeah, it's, uh, it's clear. The question is what happens if black, let's say, goes after rook d3? He just goes, what, yeah? That's the question. Just goes what? I would really like to play king h6, but then rook d5 and rook h5 comes with a check again. But maybe that's still okay. Because uh, rook d5, queen a4, rook h5, king g7, and you don't ah. have enough time to get back. Uh, my rook doesn't have a file. The a2 rook cannot enter. No, you can't get back. Also, rook a1, you play queen c2, you keep on restricting my rook. Yeah, no coordination between your pieces. So after rook d3, king h6, which is also a tricky move to find, I think. Should I get my knight back to d4? Not yet. I think. What about knight d5? No, knight d5 is interesting. No, knight d5 is good. Ah, but wait, uh, you're not... Bishop f8 back. Bishop f8, yeah, bishop f8. And after knight f6, queen f5. Yeah, f5. Exactly. Uh, still a draw, but okay. Why is it only a draw? Rook d8? I might gh check, yeah. Queen b1? Rook d2 back. Ah, queen b1, rook d2, yeah, yeah. No, this is why it's such a crazy position for black. Because you have to calculate so much and white is really not risking anything. Because whenever I'm back, I will be okay simplifying in some way or another. Very true. Very difficult defense, I think, for black. I wouldn't like to be in the place of young. But computer screen 0, 0.00. I understand that it's 0, 0, 0, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get it. I mean, probably I could be able to play with a computer in my hand. Move 46. Ah. And uh, Magnus is down under 30 minutes. Still, Jan has an advantage in time. He has 44. What if I go bishop c3, bishop b2? Trying to make it uh, very concrete. I guess you take on h5. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. I don't know, king h6, let's say. <clears throat> Knight f4, bishop d2. 
yeah, I'm giving you this position, let's say. Uh, I don't think I can stop rook b2. So. So where do you go? I'm scared of knight d3. So queen f5, let's say. So why do I go knight d3? Yeah, you will you'll take at some point, yeah? I just take it. Yeah, take, take. So this is the... 100 moves will be played after this. Oh, yeah. This will be a very, very long torture. Very long torture. Yeah. Until the maximum time will be used. We are yeah. in the third time, final time control after move 61. Why Why would love to get a position like this? Yeah, <laughs> of course. I don't know, with, with the pawn on a, uh, even with the pawn on h5. I mean, think about this, if there was a pawn on h5, yes. I just, it doesn't matter. Rook yeah. d3, rook d5 and you take. This is what I thought also, that if let's say black just goes queen c7 or whatever, I mean, of course it doesn't. Because knight d5, no, but even it's not easy to make a move. This is the problem. Okay, okay let's say queen f3 <laughs> and you take rook a3. <clears throat> For example, yeah, let's say black goes queen f5, I take rook into a3. Black cannot do anything to stop rook d3, rook d5, rook f5. But maybe I can go queen c2. Yeah, you have to create some counter here, yeah. So and queen c6 check. And queen c6. So now, for example, this rook is in trouble. Yeah, yeah, it got very specific. Here it got very no, but still I will manage. I'll play knight h3. Now. Okay. I have all the time in the world. Get my knight to d4. Uh, rook. Yeah, get rook to d4. Okay, queen f1. Rook d2. Ah, you'll keep on attacking my. No, but this is why the defense is so difficult. Because it's always about counterattack, counterattack, counterattack. But here, rook a2? Rook a5? Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe I can't uh, escape from that. No, you have to play queen f1 and just... Uh... But it could be some sort of zug zuang. Queen f5, I play rook a5. And what is your next move? No, no. Then no, no, no. Otherwise, I play king g2 and again knight f4. Yeah, king h6 is on the board. Ah, this we said, yeah, king h6 was a tricky move because you want white to take on h5 with the rook. What did we see here? We saw rook d5. Check, I think yeah? knight d5 was also something we looked at. Yeah, we saw rook d5 and knight. Ah, we settled on knight But d5. now it's, this is a, well, not a pawn because he goes back here. And after knight f6, queen f5. But I think now white can go, for example, rook d4. Or go rook d2. What do you think about rook d2? Yeah, I just feel King that King F7. it's a nightmare to play this. Okay, so King h6. We were discussing about rook d4. Rook d4 I played, I think. Or no? This but now I go rook d4. I go rook d4, what do you do? I'm just first of all trying to understand what is your idea. My idea is to give the move to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you are making... always make a mistake because <laughs> you have to think where you bring your bishop. So bishop c3, then you want rook d5, yeah? Let's say I play bishop c3. Bishop c3, I can go rook, bishop, uh, rook uh, c4. Bishop b2? 
Knight d3. Then I thought queen d5. Ah, then you go on a queen d2, queen d5, queen d2. <clears throat> and if this move, queen b4. King g7. This rook on h5, rook on a2 is probably the best thing black can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, can yeah. coordinate them somehow. Okay, so let's see king h6. We were talking about knight d5. Mm -hmm. What did we say after knight d5? On what? Well, after king h6, knight d5. Bishop f8. Ah, because of this queen f6, queen f5. Queen f5 on knight f6, yes. <clears throat> Do I want to play e4 or not? Once I play e4, I'm compromising with my king's fp. Eh? E4. Also... <laughs> I know, uh, I understand. Because but after also... e4, everything changes, right? All the fortresses, everything is changing. Correct. It's very committed. So it's, uh, it's like... There is no way back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there in some cases, black can also take over, right? True. Rook D1. Well, just what you are doing to me, she is doing to, yeah. Passing the move. Okay, so yeah. what about Bishop C3? Rook B1 or what? Rook B1. But then why didn't he play Rook B3 in the starting position? Sorry? Then why did he play Rook D1? He could have played Rook B3 if he wanted that. Okay, now I think it's uh, it's about shuffling things and uh, moving, moving around for the next uh, 30 moves. And at yeah. the end, someone gets confused. True. <clears throat> that, that's the strategy. Mm -hmm. Touching every square with all the pieces, how Carpo would be doing it, right? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't like to play this against Carpo. Ooh, no. That's not fun. Yeah. No, particularly when uh, there is no risk from uh, for losing. This is so so dangerous. I think. I mean, I, I, I totally understand. Computer will say zero point zero zero in every line, and probably it's it's true. There's no doubt on this. But just practically, black has to do more work much more work and your heartbeat is like this like am i going to screw this up oh no i can't lose this it should be okay it should be a draw but where oh what Although Very do, you scary. Think, do you think it is about uh, perception do you think that there, there will be many players who would say no this is just 0.00 it's just you know i have to just defend one or two things and it's equal i don't mind playing black well, I think if you analyze it at home, let's say we go back in time and we have an adjourn game here. Mm -hmm. Then you go yeah, home, mm -hmm. you have your people, your seconds. I mean, I'm so happy for the seconds that there are no adjourn games. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say we will go back in time about 30 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's a journ game. So your night is gone and your time is gone. So you have to be paying attention on this, how you make a draw. And after that, I think you can say that, okay, it's a draw. Because you look through all the different uh, parts where you have to be paying attention. And I think there is a good chance that you can say that, okay, it's difficult, but I know what are the, the key, mo key ideas I have to pay attention. Yeah. But now I see it's zero, 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 and I say, oh my God, how is it going to be zero, zero, zero? Queen exactly. A4. Hmm. 
I really like this move king h6. It makes sure that if you have to take the h5 pawn, please put your rook on h5. Look what he did. Rook a1. So I think he has a very specific idea. He's saying do whatever you want. I'm playing 92, 94, 92 and taking the pawn. And please show me how you're stopping. So oh, yeah. after uh, the best you can do is you know after 92 you play bishop exactly. c5. Exactly. And I don't care if you want to take my rook. Take yeah. it. Yeah. Again, I, I will consolidate. Have... I will slowly bring my knight to f4, rook to f uh, fifth rank. It goes on. It will take time. I'm, okay, we'll probably not get knight e2, but knight f3, knight g1, knight h3. Oh, this was actually amazing. Just rook e1, rook e1. Straightforward, very clear. No chance for black to think about it that you can, you may even have something in this game. No way. <clears throat> he points out that you made your double pawn on the F, you put your pawn on H5, you're going to be regretting it. Yeah, basically, now he has to defend. There's just no other option. Bishop d6. 92 will be played. What else, right? After king g1. Put... Look at the king g1. <laughs> he, he's incredible, Magnus. Look at this. King g1. Without thinking. No, I, I know why king g1 was played. To protect f2. Yeah, because after knight e2, bishop e5, knight d4. Maybe you can make the moves on the board. Yes, takes uh, takes and the f2 is yeah to protect the pawn. Incredible. Yeah. But probably even here it does not matter. No, but we should be fine. Uh, Hold on. Uh, here he take. Here he could take. No, I think he's just not even thinking. He just goes yeah, to p1. Yeah. It's just better there. It's just defending yeah. the f2. I don't know when and why and how. I just make this move. Absolutely. You want knight to knight d4. And what do you think about this endgame with uh, two rooks? No, but this should be lost. Yeah, I will put. I'm just imagining, uh, let's say I lose my e3 pawn, You, but I get the a3 pawn and knights and bishops are gone. That Which should be lost. What do you get in return of the a3? Okay, let me make some move. Let's say you play, um, okay, queen a5. No, not queen a5. Uh, yeah, fine. Fine, let's play queen fm, not a problem. Knight e2. Uh, queen somewhere. No, bishop e5. Yeah, okay. Basically getting this position. You mean this one? Yes. This should be dead lost, yeah? It's dead lost. I just get my rook to f file sooner or later and that, that's it. End it's of the story. even extremely difficult if the f6 pawn is on g6. Exactly, exactly. And the reason is, unfortunately, I had experience against Karpov in this. You know, this Benoni line where you exchange everything and you have eight pawns on the side mm -hmm. and three mm -hmm. against three. Mm -hmm. And it's considered to be a draw because somehow you attack the pawn all the time and white cannot get. I was squeezed there. I suffered. I know what I'm talking about. And here, basically, the only question is, how will white uh, go to he, with his rook to f4? No, he will get there. This is not a... And somehow he will get there. So you yeah. have to keep your rooks on f4 and f3 and then you just sacrifice, simplify uh, that. So even if the pawn on, on g6, you do this, you provoke the move f5, and then you go all the way around with your rook to the sevens. Yeah. No, this is... It reminds me once again, uh, Kramnik Leko from Brisago World Championship Game 1. From Petrov, they got uh, this queen versus two rooks, which. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Queen b3.
Thank you. You know, it's tricky. Look at this, how tricky Jan is. He knows what he's doing. The idea is, I think, after knight e2, he's just going to be playing whatever. Okay, knight e4. Knight e4. Okay, now what I wanted. Yeah, so he's making a move, okay? Knight c2, bishop e5. And after knight a3, to take and queen b3. And the knight is very badly placed. <clears throat> mm. No, here, yeah. The knight is gone, actually, not just badly placed. I cannot save the knight. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's... We are happy that it's placed on the board still. <laughs> yeah. So knight e2 is on the board. So how is going to manage this? <clears throat> so let's say queen c4. Knight d4. <clears throat> what about bishop c5? Ah, rook, uh, yeah. Bishop rook c5. C2. Rook c2. Rook c2, queen b4. Not yeah. so simple. Not so simple, no. Black should always be finding some counter chance. If the king is on g1, then you cannot take on a3 because queen c1 checks, right? I mean, mm -hmm. this is what we are talking about, that white cannot exchange here because queen c1. Yes. <clears throat> if in this position white goes out to h2, then already bishop takes, takes, queen d4. Though oh, in this, this position white can go back. Here it is winning, yeah. So probably we will see some king moves later on in this game. Going back and forth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very difficult for black. Black has 32, sec 32 minutes for the next 10 moves. Knight e2, now black has to make a choice how he's reacting on the plan of knight d4, c2. It's not easy at all. I like your idea of just, um, just staying and waiting for white to take knight a3. Queen d3. So knight d4 will happen quickly. That will happen quickly, yes. Yeah, there is no reason not to be playing knight d4 quickly. Unless you want to play king h2 again, just for the sake of it. Ninety four on the board. Ninety four on the board. Am I threatening knight c two or not? Sorry. Am I threatening knight c two? Probably not. Yeah, because knight c two you have bishop e five. So yes, what am I and I think this is the saving uh, the defensive methods for black. That now he's going to be making, I think, king h7 or something. And white goes knight c2. Now black goes bishop e5. And we're getting there if knight a3, then takes and queen b3. And mm -hmm. if knight d4, then bishop d6. So the question is how to break up this setup for white. Get the rook out again and try something different. 
Oh, he will. That's for sure. Yeah. Maybe, by the way, what about knight e c2, bishop e5, knight e1? Maybe I did it. Maybe it's done. Oh, no, queen c4. Oh, no, yeah. Actually, it's done, yeah? Yeah, I don't see. So maybe it's not even King, difficult. King it's on on the board. What is he doing after knight c2? Bishop e5 he has to play, yeah? Well, otherwise knight a3. I don't know if he has bishop g3, no. So there is king h2 and nothing happens, yeah? So you have to play bishop e5, knight e1? And knight e1. So... <clears throat> I don't see a way. I mean, I'll have to get to this position, yeah? Queen c4, rook a3. Yeah, no, okay, baby got there where he was aiming to get, right? Yes. Yeah. Three rook d one. Yeah. And then, then again, knight, knight g two, knight f four. Matter of time to reach with the rook on d five and knight on f four, and capture yeah. the pawn on h five. And then another quite some moves. But it should be very good chance for white, isn't it? Yeah, this is fantastic. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? We are going to see some moves going back and forth king with the king. By the yeah, way, does he think he why to yeah. hurry? Why to hurry up? Yeah. When the engine says zero 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 anyway. Yes. <laughs> So it's a good question what uh, maybe there is something which we don't consider you know you know what mm -hmm. if we go back one move and we see knight c2 mm -hmm. maybe black is just going back queen b3 and after knight a3 bishop e5 and now bishop e5 yeah Yeah. Yes. So just to wait. So we have on the board King H2, King Queen E4, actually immediate threat of Queen H4. So we are going to see King G1 back now. Ah, but then Bishop G3, look at that. Oops. Oh, but I don't understand. Not there. It's a blunder, no? No, I'm not sure. If I take rook a3, what are you ah, doing? Ah, rook a3 is possible suddenly. You have to take queen h4, though. But then you go out. Then I go out, and I, I don't even get the rooks. Ah, so you see, he, maybe it was then queen e4 is a mistake. He had to be <clears throat> playing what? Is it a tux one? I'm curious of one position. So queen e4, you play uh, rook a3, yeah? Yeah. I think queen it's the only move. Check. Yeah, yeah. Queen h4 check. Now you have to play king. Can you play king g1? And knight f5 is there. No, knight f5 is not there. What's oh, the bishop, bishop g3? It takes. It takes king f1. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, h4. What else can I do? I understand, but can't I go king e2? Okay, h3. No, 
Okay, let's say rook g, rook f1. Yeah, this is also going to be very long term. Probably this is not going to last. But it's long. not only rook f1. Well, but there is no other way, I think, because after queen e4, if white goes king g1, then bishop g3. <laughs> Magnus will take rook into a3. I mean, this is his best chance. <clears throat> I mean, it's also possible to play rook a3 and king g2. Yeah. And F3. But although ideally you would not queen like G6. to play. No, Queen G6. Also, you would not like to play F3 in general, right? Yeah. But probably it was not expected for uh, Magnus this Queen E4. By the way, what if I continue my attack? So you play rook a3. I take on h4. Okay. Queen g4. Sorry, queen g4. Yeah, and I want to play h4, h3. Ah, but if you move the rook, and now I, now I want to take. But uh, why are you so happy? You're going to have problems. Why? This, because rook f7, rook g7. Ah. And rook a8. Beautiful. Beautiful. Some bad news. Bad news. No, so what I do is I, I don't play bishop g3, but I play h4. You go h4. Mm -hmm. And then I take. And rook a7. <clears throat> Yes. You cannot mess around with two rooks and a knight in this kind of things. Well, I was thinking if I have some perpetual with queen d1 check, but probably check not. king g2. Well, h3, king h2. Do you have mate there? You probably will have mate there, yeah? Well, g4 is not a check. g4 is not a legal move. No, but I have two rooks to do the job. To do the job and that I cannot stop and bishop g3 is unlikely to be a perpetual. Okay, come back a little bit. So here before h4, rook a7. And if you go king g7, I go rook a5 already with the other one and knight f5 kind of stuff, I think. <coughs> so maybe I should play king g6. And you want rook a8, yeah? I go rook a8, yes. And then rook a5 here. I don't know if it's uh, it's so bad, but it's so dangerous. Yeah. But I think queen e4 was missed. Queen e4 was missed or rook a3 was also missed? Queen e4 was missed. Sorry? No, I, I said queen e4 was missed, but also rook king to a3 was missed or not? I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe rook a3 was also missed by Napo. Very interesting game. Very interesting game and extremely difficult game. Especially by now for Jan. Also, it's an amazing game where, you know, uh, it can be very easy to say that computer says 0 0.00 or computer says win. This is what is anti, uh, anti engine game kind of like, it's very easy to, um, get a wrong conception from the engine. You know, you, you look at the engine, it says 0 0.00, but okay. It's so complicated. What do you think about uh, the AIs like Alpha Zero, Lila, and uh, these ones? How much did it change the preparation of the elite? Well, they changed a lot. I mean, with all these new engines coming, uh, in fact, uh, the game itself changed uh, a lot. In general, we see this uh, 
particularly after alpha zero the we long term case three on the board in the meantime sorry yes alpha zero yeah yeah this alpha zero this uh, long term compensations and uh, also when lila you know started showing different kind of moves and now uh, more or less all the engines have uh, evolved i can only imagine you know how back in those days uh, when we were using ripka we used to get sometimes very excited with some lines but mostly then again it will show 0.00 out of nowhere and with every engine coming things are uh, becoming better and better uh, and um, whatever lines we don't check like we haven't checked with newer engines it might be uh, it might be useless who knows what the new engines are saying i remember once anish told uh, he's always revisiting his lines he's always uh, making sure you know he's checking not only is uh, revising but he's actually improvising on those things so actually what happens when or what happened when uh, after ripka the you started to use uh, artificial intelligence on uh, on the lila for example did you have a lot of discoveries and the wow feeling i yes we did but also at uh, personally i felt uh, you know at some point it's very important uh, i think we had this discussion before that actually to understand uh, the difference because today it's lila tomorrow it will be uh, something else tomorrow it might be pila and then you know uh, the, that engine comes with some different evaluation different moves and we get uh, we nod once again there is also a perception difference like for example i cannot say what is the difference between a 1200 rated player and an 1100 rated player i cannot i don't know likewise i also don't know what is the difference between a 3000 uh, player or 3200 player i just do not know it's impossible to tell because whether we are playing a, i don't know 3600 or 3500 the result is going to be same anyway hmm. so if today 3500 engine tells me in this position queen g5 is best move i'll say aha that's right tomorrow 3800 says no no it's not queen g5 but you know queen g4 is the best move and we probably will also not because we are seeing the numbers not the position only if we actually end of the day understand the position it makes a difference otherwise we are just looking at the numbers and the engine bar yes but the uh, alpha 0 for example uh, it was a, a very clear sign in 2019 i think when the book came out also the game changers mm-hmm. uh, it was i think very clear for example on magnus also he said it he, there was talks about it but we could also see in his play that in many of his games i remember very well in uh, what he played in the summer i think in stavanger for example that uh, he just sacrificed the pawn completely for nothing practically completely mm-hmm. influenced by the uh, the the alpha zero spirit or something that you sacrifice something and later on in 20 moves or 30 moves you people will understand why you sacrificed it absolutely also this famous game where alpha zero goes uh, queen h4 to h1 created such a huge impression we have on the board king g1 again there but uh, now of course a huge change happened there is no a3 black pawn no h4 pawn for white so again the players have to re evaluate not only the position as it is but also that completely new patterns new ideas come to the position right so they can forget about all these knight c2 knight a3 how to sacrifice it how to get the knight on f4 because now everything should be deleted from your mind completely new ideas has to be discovered here exactly there were so many shifts and chapter in this game isn't it yeah yeah this was a very very dynamic game 
Queen e4. Starting with uh, d4, knight f3, g3. Let's not forget that. Yes, yeah, starting from move three, we have so many critical moments and so many different structures developing from uh, within the game. <clears throat> Talking so about uh, Alpha Zero, it's also uh, quite well known that Alpha Zero started playing uh, H4, H5, H6 in so many games. But let me ask you a question. What is the first uh, game you saw in this thing? H4, H5, H6. Why pushing the pawn? I don't remember. I remember that H4, H5, it was Larsen. Bent Larsen for me. It was Bent Larsen for you. Uh, for me also, uh, it was, yeah, it was Larsen. It was uh, Botvinnik. Petrosian, it was Brandt, I think. Brandt, Petrosian. But there is one game that always uh, remained... Uh, like, I, I get absolutely amazed that in 1930 uh, Olympiad, it was Sultan Khan who went for H4, H5, H6. And this, this completely blows my mind. He did not have Alpha Zero. He did not, uh, he don't, he did not study chess, you know, in a conventional manner. You know, he, he didn't know Botvinnik, of course, back then. Botvinnik didn't play H4, H5, H6. How did he come up with this? It's a very interesting game, by the way, in uh, 1930 Olympiad. He goes H4, H5, H6 and wins in a very, very thematic manner. Wow. We have a move, Rook A4. So White uh, wants to control the fourth rank fully. My question is, what is after H4? White just goes Knight B5 and wins the game. So this is not Wait. possible. Ah, yeah, because Rook H4 happens with check. Check. So yes. what happens if black goes bishop g3? Then I think knight, knight e2 is the move. Yes. Maybe not the only move, but maybe the best uh, to start with, and then white wins. So for the moment, black cannot touch the g3 pawn. Not with the bishop, not with playing h4. Whew, what a difficult position for black. What about bishop e5? Yeah, looks natural. somehow try to protect everything but still black cannot exchange the bishop for the knight because after that he will be probably lost so what if just white goes rook c1 and tries to double on the eighth though after rook c1 h4 is possible already again yeah no yeah that's true So the question is what to play after bishop e5 now. Yeah. Position is completely pinned everywhere. Maybe knight e2, what do you think? I go knight e2. Queen d3 I was... Queen goes wherever and rook a2. So now I'm defensive. Queen d1 check. And I go to f4 with my knight. King g2. Queen d5. King uh, h2. Ah, this h4 is always a check. And after queen f3, queen f4. I don't want to allow you to go h4 somehow. Then play knight g1 first. That's what I thought too. Knight g1 somehow to push away the queen. And first play rook e2. I mean, com completely protected or rook c2. Then play rook h4 and then knight h3, knight, knight f4. Yeah. I would be actually surprised if Magnus does not win this. If, if Young can defend this, bishop e5 is on the board. Though Magnus has 12 minutes left for uh, five moves. This position time will not matter as such. Well, still, you will have to come up with the best moves when it's needed. And sometimes you will have to calculate. That's true. And it doesn't come by itself. That's for sure. So I think 92 has to be done. Also very natural move, right? 
Nike to play it in 39 seconds. And he did. <laughs> yeah. About 39 seconds he spent. <laughs> Jan has 22 minutes, double amount of time than Magnus, but it's not going to make a difference most likely in this position anymore, that he has so much more time. Now he has to make a decision where to go with his queen. So we were talking about queen f3, rook a2. So or queen, d, or queen d3 we were saying. Or queen d3, but it's the same kind of story. <clears throat> It is very important for white to control the fourth rank and not to allow black to go h4. Very important. I wanted bishop b2. I was thinking if I could play bishop b2 here, but I don't know. That's a funny idea. I mean, knight f4, I Not wanted queen. queen d1 and h4. But this is not even... I mean... But h4 you will be having... Problems. I will have problems practically Sorry? in every move. This. No, I said I will have problems practically in every move. Uh, by the way, knight d3 probably does not work because I have h3 check. And? Queen d3, queen d7 check and pick up your a4 rook. No, but after that I... I want king h2. No, but then... I give uh, it check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And I go here. No, but uh, go back, then I start with uh, queen d3 and then queen d5. Sorry? So, one more move. Yeah, knight d3. If I take on d5, take on d3, I mean. Then I give a check and take on b3. Ah, you always give a check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, that's true. True. No, it's crazy to play this with black. I don't know if it's still zero, zero, zero. Probably not. But it's, uh, it's crazy to defend this position with black. It's painful, every move. Yeah. It is so difficult to save for black, even if it's possible. I don't know if it's possible though, objectively. But Magnus was so determined when he arrived to the game. Yes. We were talking about this, that he arrived first. He was like in focus. So he was, he was so much focusing that he's ready today. Whatever happens, he's going to try his chances. Exactly. But also Jan showed uh, some real boldness uh, when he played the B5. He played B5. Example. He played so well until a certain point. Yeah. But okay, when you play against Magnus, sometimes it's not enough to play your best. Queen c2. Mm -hmm. Rook a2 will be played in no time. Well, exactly. Magnus has not too much time to spend in this game anymore. Well, unless he wants to repeat once with uh, knight d4, just for completing 16. I'm moves. not sure it's uh, this is the moment when he wants to repeat. Yeah. Because he wants to, he has a plan to regroup his knight to f4 and to have his rook. So he's, and I'm not sure black will be repeating. Probably black can go something else. Yeah, no, rook a2 will be played. Rook a2, yeah. I mean, he would, I think, repeat if it would be a clear repetition. That mm -hmm. there is no way to make some other move. True. So let's see where black goes with his queen. Finally, it is not 0, 0.00 anymore according to the screen. Maybe black should be going queen b3 to keep an eye on both rooks. Okay. Uh... So rook a7, you want to play h4, 
four. Yeah, that's your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow I want to break up your uh, stable uh, structure because this is very annoying. <clears throat> I'm not sure it helps me, but definitely I would be happy to break that up. Yeah, probably you just capture it, right? And then you ask why were I so happy to give up the phone? Yeah, because Rook will come back to A4 and protect it. And no, also but now, no, but now I can give a check on D1, I check on D5, you have to go F3. Yeah. Then I might go back to, well... No, Queen D3, keep trying. Yeah. Yeah, you have to come back with the rook, maybe. Actually, rook f7 was possible. <clears throat> I don't know. It's uh, very difficult to make a decision with black because it's not concrete that you blunder something, but it's uh, it can be still... Uh, it can be difficult to find where the queen stands the best in defense in this position. I'm not sure it's clear. Can it go to be f3? But anyway, white is going to play rook h4, knight f4, as we talked about. Yeah, no, I like queen b3, actually. Queen b3, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think black cannot allow white to regroup his uh, pieces the way he wants just rook h4, knight f4, because that's the end of it. Yes. In other words, if you just remove the bishop and knight from this position, it's just end of it. It's over. Mm -hmm. Jan also going down in time. He has only 16 minutes, while Magnus has 10 minutes for the next... So after 16 moves, after 16 moves how many minutes they get? 15, 15 oh. minutes for each. And also but, they start receiving 30 seconds per move until end of the game. This is going to be a very long game. And the players will not have a free day so fast because they play another two games in the next two games, two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point, irrespective of what computer says, black is in very good practical danger. Very bad practical. Maybe engine. three is on the board. Well, it was the most practical move, I think. Mm -hmm. By the way, what is your next move? Because your queen is ideally placed, bishop is ideally placed. You want to say I'm in Suk Swan? King h6. Yeah, king h6 is unclear. Or uh, king g7. And knight f4 you take, yeah? On knight f4, I definitely take, and you cannot capture with the rook. That's the point. And uh, I don't like when the white pawn has to be captured. Queen d1. No. No, no. King, I, I, g2. king g2. Good yeah. old stable moves with the king, right? Yeah. Whenever. King h2, king g1, king h2, king g1, king g2. Yeah. But maybe queen d5 check and queen b3 again. Some of the most annoying moves. Queen d5, he goes king h2. Queen b3. Queen b3. Queen b3. Can you maneuver the knight somewhere? Knight g1. That's what I was thinking. Why not to get knight g1, knight, knight uh, f3? Knight g1. Knight g1. Knight g1. Maybe. Uh, can you go back to uh, one more move after king g2? Sorry? Yeah, go. Uh, I'll not play queen d5. Maybe I should play king g7 
but then rook h3. You go queen b7, right? Mm -hmm. No, he went queen d5 check. He's not happy. Well, no one would. Yeah. Though at some point, maybe e4 and f4 can be the moves. At least not in next 30 moves, yeah? He will first <laughs> keep on shuffling and then play e4. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand your point. I understand your point. Though I'm not sure that f3 is not good, you know? What do you think about f3 and king f2? What am I aiming for now? So let's say king g7. King g7, you have no threat, of course. No, I'm not. Now I can do rook a3. Hmm. Queen b2. Rook d3. Bishop g3. <gasps> that was a blunder. Yeah, that's another 30 moves until we play a pawn move like that. <laughs> You're right. We're blacking it too. But it's not so easy. Why not to play king h2? Yeah, king h2, you go back. I mean, you came from there. They are repeating moves, then it means. Yeah, like g1. Like g1. King g7. Knight f3. Knight f3. Oh, then I'm very happy. If I get my knight to h4. Trying to get to that side. was I think that was the plan of Magnus also with King G2 to play knight G1 F3. That was a very serious plan already. Yeah. Are we actually repeating if uh, Magnus plays King H2? No, he came from G1. He yeah, came so it's from not, G1. Uh, it's not repeating, yeah. So he will be playing, I think, King H2 here. <clears throat> Under seven minutes, Magnus. Two moves to make a move, but only 15 minutes in the next, after the next control. Okay, the options are king h2, f3, e4, 3. Or king g1 back. Yeah, anything apart from king h2 will do. Why, you don't want to go king h2? No, 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 I said anything apart from king h3 will be ah, fine. king h3, yeah, king h3 is not very advisable. Yeah, he's hesitating a bit. But we saw in the previous time control when he had three minutes, he was also hesitating a lot, but he came up with the best possible practical solution. No, but there he had an opportunity. He wants to play rook c2, do you remember? No, but when he played uh, h4, when he created chance, just before the... Yes. But that was move 30, h4. That was move 30, it was not exactly time pressure. Yeah. <clears throat> time crunch, but not time pressure. Soon he's reaching five minutes. <clears throat> what is he going to do, you think? King h2 or king g1? King H2 looks more natural, unless he wants to play F3. But F3 feels very committal also. 
actually a lot depends what what do you think about knight f4 in general after bishop into f4 if i have to take with the pawn no i don't want to take okay. with the pawn then we are uh, we have to show some plan yeah maybe king h2 knight g1 well this is what we are standing right here right yeah knight g1 is there. or wherever it goes maybe you, now you can stop uh, yeah but now you free one of my rook yeah so rook c2 i think why not to play rook, knight h3 first because i'm not sure if i want uh, knight f4 anyway rook c2 bishop queen b he went f3 look at that decided to go for f3 yeah <clears throat> Little bit surprising, I must say. It's a very committed decision, though. Very interesting. Move fifty nine, four minutes. No, I, we were considering this F three. Yeah, we said Queen B three here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Queen B three. King, king b2 f2. king e, uh, king f2 king g7 i think i said i think at some point you know what he wants he just wants to go f4 knight d4 rook a5 knight f5 that's how he wants to win the game f4 <clears throat> I don't know, maybe now he goes bishop b2, right? So what about not playing this, but playing, let's say, rook a5? Bishop c7. Rook a3. Oh, rook a3. Rook a3. And again, we have a pawn move with f3. Again, all the ideas what we had previously. Everything changes. Everything gone. changes. Yeah. gone and now again you have to switch your head and this is why he makes it so difficult for uh, Jan to defend because when he's already okay I know that I'm going to be defending like this f3 whole structure changes and again new defensive ideas has to be developed by Jan yeah <clears throat> king h uh, what f3 he did not make the move yet I mean, there are quite a few ideas for white after f3, I must say. I mean, king f2 and later on at some point, rook h4, g4, for example, knight placing it to f5, pushing away f4, the bishop. It can be very, very difficult for black. If you can untangle your rook, this is already a huge improvement. Yes. But it's the a, thing is that the white knight will be protected by the king. Yes. So that's an important uh, part. Although uh, black white has to watch out for this bishop g3 idea. Yes. Um, yes. I see in the screen. Him. I see in the screen computer says f5 f5 crazy yeah, defensive move it Very means tough. the idea is that whenever white goes f4 the black bishop wants to stay on that diagonal so the white knight cannot be just coming to d4 yeah so Very after rook a5 i have no idea mm, let's see queen c4 Queen C4 looks good. Queen C4. No, actually, I don't play Rook A5. I go King F2 first. <clears throat> By the way, Queen D1 on the board. Queen D1. What move number is this? It's move 59. So Magnus, Magnus has to make his final move before receiving the 15 minutes mm -hmm. extra.
Ah, queen d1 was against king f2. That's the point. Because oh, after yeah. king f2, my black goes queen no, there is no, no, but there is... Uh, ah, yes, that's the point. That's the tricky part. Queen h1, rook h4, bishop g3. King g3. Queen e1 check. Ah, what okay. a tricky idea. What a tricky idea. Wow, for Prachecha. <clears throat> That's a good one, but he's not going to be falling into that. No. Of course. But although it is the final nice move. Idea. But what about rook h4? Queen b3. F3. F3. I don't like that he played F3. Wait, can I play rook a a4 here? No, 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 no. Rook ah, here. No, no, no. I understand. I One moment. Here. Yes. Yes. And? And, uh, ah, I cannot move order. I want to get rook. No, here if I play rook e4. Rook e4, king g5 maybe. F4. Oh, rook g4? This is what you wanted, right? Yeah, but queen f5 or queen h6. It feels like I got black there, but I don't know how to finish it. No, I think you have f4. I have f4 here? Yeah, I have f4 here. But okay, what happens if I just go with this? <clears throat> So I guess I have to take and just come back to page four. Is this dangerous? I know I'm playing for two results. Well, this we have already for quite some time. This we established, yeah. So maybe this is not so dangerous. <clears throat> Queen D1, nice idea. Yeah, Magnus has to make this decision under one minute whether to play King F2 or Rook H4. Whatever it is, it needs concrete calculation. E4, F4. Forty seconds. Maybe rook e4. What do you think about rook e4? I like this non-committal move. F4. Queen F4 is on the board. Pushing away the bishop from e5. Wait, so Jan has, still has nine minutes to, for the last move? Yes, and after that he will receive an additional 15 minutes. Again, things are changing with the defensive yeah. plan. So black should be going away. We were considering now bishop b2 also, but I think after yeah. bishop b2, white just goes out king f2, right? Yeah. But queen b3? <clears throat> actually, actually, let me put the queen on b1 to have the queen h1 option also. Here after king f2? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, king g6 or king g7. What is this? Queen f5 is no. No, you just go back with the king and you I have your bishop b5 square. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my point is if you move your rook, I want to play. He queen didn't h4. go to b2, he went to c7. Okay, this is good news for white. Uh, maybe he wants to get to b6. Okay, he wants to go bishop b6, right? Looking for counter chances on e3. Yeah, but I feel <laughs> now white king is slightly exposed. I agree. 
I think uh, Pawn was better on F2 for some time. Yeah. And the bishop c7 also protecting the a5 square from the rook, so all the kind of attacks on the fifth can uh, arise there. <clears throat> yeah. But imagine this, eh? like after such a fighting game, if the game ends in a draw, and then players will be asked sometimes, you know, it's too many draws, boring games. It's actually such an exciting game. Yes, and there were so many chances that it's going to be decided, right? Yes. Absolutely. I think F3, F4 was too premature. It happened very fast. I, I really did not expect that there will be two pawn moves uh, within, within like a span of five moves. Yes. And the players are having their second score sheet because most likely the score sheet was enough only for 60 moves and now the third time control is starting for both players where Magnus has only 14 minutes while Jan has 24 minutes so it's much more time than Magnus has and probably there is a good chance that it will be enough for him for the defense. King F2 going out from the all kind of checks on the on d5 and also protecting the knight on e2 i think that's the most important part what happens if black just goes queen h1 in this that, that is the question i was going to ask i was calculating if uh, he could play rook a1 and then king f3 so let's say queen h1 rook a7 Because after queen h2, probably white wants to go out to e1 and the knight on e2 defends everything what is important. Can I play h4? Now? No, one move before. Here, giving up yes. the bishop. Yes. Okay, let's go for it. Takes h3. h3. <clears throat> Check. King g6. Rook a7. Am I getting mated? I'm getting mated here. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, I think no, I no, H2. No, no, H2 I cannot play. I have to give. I have to include Queen G to check, of course, and then play H2. And how do you get mated? I don't see. I don't see a mate yet. Okay, g4. H1 queen with No, no, check. that's too much because you have queen d5 check there. Yeah. What is happening here? Okay, rook g7. King f5. King f5 g4. King e4. Ah, you have king f3. Mm -hmm. I thought you have to go to d3. Check. Check. In g4. <clears throat> okay, this was some fun around. What is this position? No, but go back a little bit. I probably uh, black would have played better, maybe. There. Yeah. So here. Yeah, King G3 is forced. Well, maybe you can go back to F3. Yeah, and then play and G3. back to G3. <laughs> and then give up a study-like story out of it. Yes, and, and then queen defense and Perpetual somehow, right? Yeah. <laughs> With the rooks on the sevens. Okay, so in the meantime, there are some happenings because black played queen b3 and bishop b6. So king f2, bishop b6, rook a1, queen b3. And let's see what white wants to do. Probably rook a3, right? Seems to be... No, rook a3 
Uh, bishop e3, king f3. Yeah, that's king f3, that's the idea. Yeah. What else? Rook e4 may be another option. Hey, uh, uh, Judith, uh, after bishop e3, king f3, maybe the, I had queen b6. Sorry? So I have rook queen e6. Or queen b6. Rook e4. No, queen b6 I want. Queen b6. Ah, queen b6. But queen b6? What about rook a6? Hmm. And I didn't have any other square to access. Uh, one more move back here. Queen e6, rook e4. Queen e6. I know, that's possible. Oh, no, that, that's queen c6. Queen c6. Queen c6 or queen d5? Queen c6. Yeah, with the idea of king e3, queen c5, and otherwise f5 you have. There is rook c3. There is rook c3. Knight, bishop c5? Oh, okay. Yeah, here is it. This is what uh, Magnus blundered, I think. So you say bishop e3. After, oops. So rook a3. He's touching the rook e4. Rook e4 he wants. Even rook e4. Yeah, safer. Very unexpected move. But it seems like the other one did not work. Yeah. But rook e4, you are absolutely sure that uh, nothing, there are no tactics. I don't know, but this bishop is quite loose in the position, you see. I mean, on e5, it had this stability, but now it can get vulnerable. White can go rook a6 and stuff like that. It's very tricky to defend properly. But one good thing is, White's king is exposed too. Like there are rook on e4, knight on e2, both Absolutely. Needed, to, needed to protect. So even if black starts waiting here, it's only the a1 rook which is loose. I mean, which is free. Yeah. It's okay. King g7, let's say. <clears throat> rook a8. You have to watch it. You're again going for mate, yeah? Well, I have some ideas like that, yeah. Probably you will have to play f5 at some point. How do, uh, how do you make me if I... Okay, can you go back one move? I play king g6. King g6? Mm -hmm. I want to have f5 g4 square. Ah, so you want to activate your king? Yes. I want to do short team man in reverse order. Brave decision. But this is possible only because f4 was played, right? That is true. Okay, so I go there. King f5. Let's say rook e7. Not even threatening anything. Be patient. And I will. Be patient and get mated. I will go rook h8 probably in the next move. So king g4, since I have started this, let's finish it. King g4, rook g8 check. King h3. Knight g1 check. G4. Be You're looking for trouble. Yeah. And strictly uh, not relevant to the game. So let's get back. Uh, no, let's get back. I don't put my king on f5. Ah, I you don't go. Okay, yeah. so rook a4. Play. I play king g7. King g7, rook a8. Okay. Okay, queen d3. Show me the mate. Queen? d3. Queen d3. Rook e8. f5. f5. Yeah, seems to be that it's a good defense. Very good. Rook g8 check. Hmm. 
you go king f6, you don't have else. Yeah, yeah. And I go rook e8. No, H4, do it h4. Do it h4. <laughs> you think I know what's your plan? Oh, it is not working, but yeah, okay. okay. And queen takes e2. <laughs> do you like it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool finish. <laughs> cool finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back. Rook e4. And now Jan is spending his time. He has 18 minutes. Magnus has 13 minutes. I think it's very important for Magnus to catch up in time, which can be done only if Jan is going to be spending quite some time. And I think f5 is definitely part of the, the serious defense for black. Because suddenly black again has very active pieces. And in, on e5, the bishop was extremely stable and it was kicked out by playing f4 by Magnus. But now on b6, it has enough counterplay, right? Yes. I so. Definitely. And also... And also I feel white's chances reduced from the starting position where we got this kind of material thing, like two, two rooks against queen. Because right now, both the rook and knight are busy defending, uh, protecting the king and the e3 pawn. Well, and let's, let's be honest. I mean, when the pawn was on f2, white had no weaknesses, right? Absolutely. The target was the h5 pawn, which was possible to play with knight f4 and trying to get that. It was a possibility to play with the rook on h4 and get there. So after f4, too many counter play for black, I think. And, yes. and too little place for my knight from e2. Yeah, this knight got completely locked. Now, I cannot imagine this knight getting out. Uh, no, but especially I don't like rook e4. I think this was a blunder. I think Magnus was planning to play rook a3. And I'm then, pretty sure about that. I mean, look at this rook e4. It's just, you have no harmony between your pieces at all now. Yeah, but it's also very easy to miss that after rook a3, that the yeah. line we saw with bishop e3 and queen b6. Queen, and queen e6 oh, and queen c6. Yeah, queen e6 and queen c6, yeah. Yeah. I'll be very curious what they are saying in the press conference of this yeah. game. Yeah. There are a lot of things to talk about on that. <clears throat> Although after such an intense game, I don't know how much they will be talking about. Well, yeah, that's a good question. But still, there were quite a few moments which uh, could be analyzed a bit. Mm -hmm. But of course, by the time they reach the press center, they will both know about the rook uh, CC2 opportunity for white. Uh, Jan also had uh, some practical chance, not as huge as Magnus, but at some point he could take on B4, which he did not take. Exactly. Well, after this game, they are going to be exhausted, especially if it's a draw and both fail that they miss their chances. Yeah. Very tough game. It's the toughest game so far, isn't it? Game two was extremely tough, but I think this is already getting more tiring for the players. There's, there are so many calculations and strategical decisions. Yeah. I mean, imagine if commenting on this game is so tiring and exhausting, how much uh, energy to take when you're actually playing? And it's quite a lot at stake, I must say. Yes. <clears throat> so now Jan went down to 14 minutes and they are going to have very similar time very shortly and it's going to be extremely challenging for both players for Magnus to try to squeeze out some uh, re realistic chances while for Jan to be defending this position. He just made the move King G7, which we were discussing. Very logical move. Very logical move. White has to be thinking how to create problems for Black, which is not easy at all. The E4 rook is not stable. 
White should be going to the eighth rank, but F5 will be such a strong defensive idea for black. Not making possibility for white to move forward. Yeah, and you make some loose move like king f3, then after queen d5, you are in some serious trouble. Yeah, white also has to be careful now where he's uh, putting his pieces, right? <clears throat> this a1 rook, where can I put this? Well, I would be still putting my rook, I think. Uh, on a8. What did you play? Did you play f5 immediately? He and went rook e8. He went rook e8. Uh huh. So okay. Sooner, or, sooner or later, f5 will be played. Well, let's see if this is the moment sooner or later to play f5. There is no immediate threat, right? Well, obviously white wants to go rook a1 to a8, I believe, to give uh, some ideas about uh, trying to attack black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But actually, it is a possibility that it will end the way we were looking with the stalemate. Because, that well, looked, uh, because that's a logical way of uh, putting the pieces, how, right? So how, was, how we even got there? We reached it this way, that uh, somehow you were just playing queen b5, I went rook g8, and then I went rook e8. Queen b5 was the move that I played? Doesn't I'm not sure, I just, uh, oh. I think uh, you have different moves. But, and then uh, I played h4, yeah, yeah, here h4. And then it was h4, taking on e3 and queen e2. Yeah, yeah. But I think this can be really a saving opportunity for white because otherwise white is going rook e5 and rook g5 mm -hmm. and start capturing the pawns, right? Yes. F5, F5 is, is on the board. F5 is on the board. It would be incredible if such a stalemate occurs in the game. It would be a nice finish. Yes. <clears throat> so let's see what he's going to be playing. I mean, I still would like to go to rook with a, to a8. I still go there. And if I if I stick around, if I play queen d3, let's let's say. I think this is what you played actually before too. This was the move you played. And that's how h4 happened, yeah, yeah. That's how we had rook g8, rook e8. <clears throat> and so what happens if I go rook g8, king f6, rook uh, e8, protecting the pawn on e3, h4, g4. Giving a pull shower to my stalemate idea. Take. Ooh, not happy. Queen d7, rook g8. <clears throat> I don't want to move. Ah. Ah, but queen this e7, is again queen very close. Ah, now you have even queen, queen e6. e6. Queen e6. So queen uh, goes there and queen h3. Yeah, this king on f6 is very. Okay, knight c3. Tricky business. I think Can now white wins. No, no. Now white wins. Yeah. Check. No, 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 no. King goes out. Rook e, even rook g2 was winning. Queen f4. Ah, queen f4, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So I think but I should just go out and go to e2 and d3. And game over. Rook a8 is on the board. 12 Next minutes rook. for Magnus and 12 minutes for Jan. Incredible fight is going on. Yes. yes. Move 65. 
Oh. <clears throat> okay, let's do it one more time then. H4, G4. Let's get to that position. Yeah, rook A8, queen D3. It's almost forcing actually. Yes. Here, rook E8. Sorry about that. Rook E8, H4, G4. <clears throat> I have to take There's just nothing else. You have to take nothing else. Capture back. Can I try to push this pawn somehow? Okay. Rook H4 is what I'm not liking. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Though, I don't know if I can go knight G3. What do you think about that? No, because you give checks. Unpleasant checks. <clears throat> and now it's tricky because rook h6 is is uh, threatening i'm threatening to take the pawn jan is going down in time behind in time just in time for magnus on the third part of the game we can say the final part of the game of the time control he goes down to 10 minutes hmm. What a challenging game from every point of view for both players. <clears throat> it seems like Black is losing the pawn. Here, he is. G4 was very strong. Well, it came, it came up as there is nothing else to do, right? To avoid yes. the stalemate. Incredible ideas in this game. Rook A8, Rook A8, and Jan Nepomniachi went down under 10 minutes. And now it's his turn to be... The chair is shaking. Look well, how the chair is shaking. The chair is shaking. And for a long time, Mag we didn't see Magnus standing up and walking out from the playing hall, I think. He knows yeah. that he has to have the final strength in this game. He has chances, though we consider that he had bigger chances, though right now it's not easy to make a move with black, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> What happens if Black starts to be moving Queen D1, let's say, and try to go to Queen H1, to that end of the board, try to save the game? Will White be playing Rook G8, let's say, and Rook E8 anyway? But then Bishop A5. Oh. Oh, what a nice counter chance. Actually, okay. if this is the case, then why not to just play, keep the queen on d2 even? Okay, so let's say queen d1 now. Mm -hmm. Ah, but queen d1, no, queen d1, you might play rook g8 and rook a6. Okay, queen d6. Now, this okay. I already don't like, I'm allowing some knight d4 ideas. Knight d4. Who yeah. Knows, yeah. Okay, now okay. we're in a problem. Okay, well, but it, this is this why it's deadly dangerous for Ian. He goes uh, down under eight minutes. But I in mean, this case, I have an idea. My idea is to play first rook d8. Uh, sorry, first queen d3. The one which we saw. Queen d3, mm -hmm. rook g8, mm -hmm. rook e8. And now let's play queen d2. I fix the rook on e8 and threatening bishop a5 queen e1. So now the question is if I am on time. Queen b4 happened in the game. No, it's the same I idea. Same idea to play bishop a5. Clear cut. <clears throat> Can white go rook b8 now? No, check first. 
and after king f6 i go rook b8 this is what i do of course the computer says zero zero oh. zero you don't want to be handling this zero 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 with eight minutes on the clock magnus having 11. yes oh by the way here i have queen no ah that's why you gave rook g a check because otherwise i would have queen e4 no, but now you don't have uh, queen e4. No, I I, you go back to g7, I think. Yes. With the idea again that I cannot go rook a6 because of bishop e3. And I'm threatening and, queen e4. And you're threatening with queen e4 because my rook on a8 is problematic. And I cannot go knight d4 because you give it check. And that's how you save yourself. So queen b4, what about rook e5? Stopping the bishop from moving to b, from b6 yeah. to a5. Okay, queen b1. A6. At some point, maybe I will be playing G4 and not G3. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, wait, Queen B3. Where do you go? Queen B3. Queen B3. Yes, I understand that you're defending pretty well. Yeah, there should be probably enough counterplay for black on attacking the E1 square and the E3 pawn mm -hmm. on the black squares. And actually, white should also be careful. Have to be careful. Well, why, the best part for white is white, white cannot lose unless he makes a huge well, blunder. Well, because after bishop a5, we can just sacrifice it and knight d4, right? Uh, exactly. I mean, white can lose. I mean, white plays, let's okay. say, king f3, king f3, now queen e1, and it's bye-bye. Rook a c8. I mean, usually... Looking at white rooks, it's usually uh, uh, the color will be black. Yeah, when you play moves like rook a c8 with one rook on e8, it's usually What's black. The idea? Uh, if black goes bishop a5, does white want to go knight d4? And if check, king f3, check, king g2. <clears throat> Why didn't you start with king g2? Ah, uh, sorry, why didn't you start with queen? No, why didn't you start with queen e1? Uh, because of king g2, it's the same thing, okay. Yeah, 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 it's the same thing. Rook c8 is a, I think is a very powerful move. Because look at this now, black cannot go queen d2 because check and rook c6 already. Mm -hmm. And if okay. king h7, then check, check, and rook h6, right? So... Yes. So I have to wait. I don't... Um... You think it's so easy to wait? How do you wait? Bishop a7? I mean, now white is threatening to go... Uh... Okay, Hold queen on. b yeah. Queen B3? Mm -hmm. You don't have rook B8, so. No, I give it check. King F6. But now my king got exposed. 
Your king is exposed. I go here. Force. Rook c3. Queen b5. Apart from rook c3, I also had maybe knight c3. I don't know. You have bishop a5, right? <clears throat> okay, so rook c3, queen b5. Bishop a5 is on the board. Rook c1 played instantly. This was his Well, point. now knight d4 will be strong. Not in the next move because of queen d2 check, but... Very powerful, this rook on c1 in defense. Wow. Five minutes on the clock. And Napo is finally going under, under time, under Magnus. Bishop b6. So he knows he has to be quick. This is his defensive idea. So when the rook goes to the 8th, goes bishop a5, attacking, counter-attacking. And now rook e5. f5 is falling off. So queen b3, rook h1. How is it playing then? King g6. Well, I think after queen b3, rook c6 is also quite unpleasant. It is this, this kind of position where every move black has to keep on creating some dynamic play to stay on the game. And basically, white has nine minutes, nearly ten. Black has five and a half. He's going to be moving around, make some circulation around the chessboard, and eventually something will happen, and he may blunder something or end up losing one of the pawns, and then it's everything is collapsing. Queen b3. Yeah, like it is a position where, you know, if you're playing correspondence chess, you probably agree for a draw. Because, you know, computers will keep on finding this only move, so it doesn't make sense to continue. But in a tournament game, every single move black has to be very precise at this point. Probably rook h1 will appear on the board also at one point. Yeah, King g6. <clears throat> And what would you be playing there? Maybe here, if it's black to move. Let's say I go king f3, what do you do? I was thinking, if you could get your knight on f3, rook on uh, e2, what do you think about that? Is it a Sorry? progress or not? Uh, so go back one move. I'm saying if somehow I could get my knight to f3 and rook to e2, is this a progress or not a progress? Not clear, yeah? Would be interesting because with the rook on e2, my knight is free. It's not so easy though to regroup your pieces. You want well, to go to think... e1 now. Yes. And now I want knight g1, rook e2, knight f3. Nice. Though black black can try to go f6. Look at that. Now this is problem. Ah. We found a way how to lose it with what? No, no, we're not losing. We have knight d4, Judith. I know, yeah, knight d4 we still have. I mean, it's a draw, but okay. Although... So let's see what uh, Magnus is up to in this position. What did you do on queen S3, king f3? No, no, king f3 we didn't check yet. <clears throat> what is the idea? Bishop, bishop a7 or something? A rook e7 you want? No. No, now maybe I go rook c7, uh, rook c7 bishop b8. So black is threatening f6 in the current position, yeah? Sometimes, yes. That's why we have to keep our rook uh, on so, c somewhere, because then we have check and rook c8 defense. What do you do for rook c3 instead of king f3? Yeah, rook c3, queen b1, let's say. 
Okay, so now finally I get a position where black is not threatening anything. And my C3 rook is True. free. True. What do I do with my C3 rook? I think actually at some point maybe white can try to go knight d4. Rook e7, rook e8. Rook e8 was played. Isn't it a repetition? It is. He went rook e5, queen b3, and he went back rook e8. So now okay. let's see if uh, Jan will be without hesitation play queen b4, or he finds something more exciting or something that he considers better. Well, it's a good psychological it. move, rook e8, though. Yes. Very good practical move. Also, it is more of 60 moves have been played, which means after every repetition, you kind of get one, one minute. Exactly. Queen d5. I don't get it wrong uh, to the viewers. Ian is not playing for win. Just because he's not repeating doesn't mean he's playing for win. Not really. No. But now somehow black has a, is very active, right? Eventually, I think he will go rook c8 and rook g8 and rook e8, and we're going to be reaching out that kind of position. Mm -hmm. Though, what we looked rook c8, queen d2 probably. But also queen h1 this time. Uh, queen h1 is not, or is it? I well, I still, I still keep the bishop f5 idea, yes. and this time bishop e1 is actually yes, made. yes. So queen would go here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So white is a little bit uh, lost harmony. Oh, and he was there. Look at that. Allowing queen h1. Look at that. Well, maybe he wants to go knight d4, or what is his plan after queen h1? Well, at least rook no, c1 is queen h2. What is Check, his at plan? Least, if you have gone there that far, probably give a check at least. But now what? And knight d4, no other move, is it? Why? I mean, black... What is black for? Ah, bishop black side, queen yeah? h2. Queen h2 and bishop c3. Mm -hmm. Queen h1 is on the board. Draw incoming. No, I think now white is, uh, is not going to have chances. Nope. There is such a strong counter chance for black. <clears throat> Unless rook c1, he comes back again. Hold on. He comes back rook c1. Queen h2. In here, yeah. here. h4. Okay. Nah, it's four. I'm not sure actually. It's, it's a good idea. Rook g1. And the queen is trapped. Well. Rook c8. Rook c1. And rook f1 and rook f2. But here I take bishop into e3, Judith. Oh. Takes and queen g1. Yes. Neat one, again. Very neat. So after queen h2, h4, yeah? But I think white has to come back to c1. White has to come back to c1. I don't mm -hmm. think he has another option. Maybe rook e5. So the bishop is completely in the net. Look at the bishop. <clears throat> I don't know, but white can, uh, I mean, black can just go here and if king d2, then queen a1. 
Rook C1 is on the board, yeah. I think there was no other move. Ah, but this, isn't it uh, repetition? Hold on. We had this position. Rook E5, Queen D5, Rook C8, back. Okay. So now he went back Queen D5. <clears throat> Rook B1. You know what he wants? He wants to get the rook on the fifth. Yes, that, that would be very good if he can get it. And in some form that he gets his rook on e5, the other one on d5, and then he goes knight d4, maybe. To be able to take on f5. Or even at some point g4 and knight g3, though it's hard to, to imagine at the moment. Magnus is under five minutes. Jan is over five and half a minute per move what they are receiving. So bishop a5, how do you play? <clears throat> bishop a5, I think rook e5. So do I put queen d2 or queen d3? Okay, let's say you go queen d2. d2. No, after king d2, rook f5. Ah, okay, so I have to put it on d3. Okay, you put it on d3. Let's say rook b2. My threat is knight d4. You go bishop c7, I go rook b5, and you cannot stop me playing knight d4. Or so maybe I put my bishop on d2. Here, mm -hmm. in F3, maybe. But no threat. Oh, King F3. Hey, King F3, I have Bishop C3. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. Well, maybe, it, no, because Rook B3. No, oh, Rook B3, then, no, but you have knight bishop a7. And... He keeps his bishop on the la diagonal. Bishop a7. What's his point after rook e7? Rook e7, uh, bishop c5 is possible. And then rook e5? Well, we are similar, right? Queen d3. <clears throat> No, something feels wrong. Rook h1, am I not winning a pawn? Bishop, bishop d6, d6. Bishop d6. a5, yeah? No, but no, bishop but, b... No. Sorry? <clears throat> so then, then you'll protect this pawn, no? Now you have bishop c7. Rook e7 yeah. he played? <clears throat> so bishop c5 is going to be the move, right? There is not much of a choice for black. Well, there is queen d3 or queen a2. Queen a2, queen a2, rook b7. I mean, but it's is that winning? That's, that's not winning, right? So bishop c5. I'm not saying it's winning, but after bishop c5, I think uh, maybe white has a move uh, rook c7. Mm -hmm. Bishop c5 is on bishop the board. On the so rook e5 will happen. Four minutes each with 30 seconds per move. Hopefully dangerous for black. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think uh, rook e5 and if queen d3, rook b2. So 
So what do you want? Okay, this C5 is hanging. So let's say move it where. And if you go bishop a7 or a little b7, then again white tricked you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not over, mate. You know, no, yeah. But why am I not playing bishop a3? A oh, bishop a3 also you go, you do the same. No, no. Queen d3 is on the board, so let's see where he's going. What about rook b7 now? Bishop d6, you want rook d7. Hmm. A bishop d6, rook d7 is some sort of a zugzwang. This is what okay. I think, yeah. And you want rook e7 next? And nothing to be done. My bishop does not have a square actually. So queen c2. Queen c2. Rook uh, b5. I'm telling you, this 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 to play torture. for Jan, it's it's hell. Yeah, such a torture. Hmm. But okay, Magnus went down to two and a half minutes. Rook b two, rook b seven, both are very tempting. Mm -hmm. Very challenging for the players. They have to be concentrating now. In the sixth hour, the seventh hour they are playing already. The seventh hour they are playing already. And what a game we were witnessing. It was not spectacular with all kinds of great tactical calculations, but it was so many nuances, so many small details in the game, so many still to calculate and be accurate about. Yeah. And, and they are in their seventh hour fighting. One and a half minutes for Magnus. So much physical energy is needed just to play this one single game. I'm pretty sure they lost like two, three kilos during this game. Each. <laughs> yeah. It takes huge, um, huge amount of uh, energy and physical fitness. And it's just the sixth game. Yeah. Wow, Magnus is going down under a minute, just a few seconds away from that. 59 seconds, 58 seconds. Incredible. What are we going to be witnessing in this game? More. What a stress. What the coaches are going through in these seconds. <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> and he went rook b7. With 24 seconds. <clears throat> 53 seconds left. So now the ball is on the other court. What Jan will be playing. Somehow the c5 bishop has less and less air around it. Don't you feel it? Exactly. And black is constantly coming up with some very, very concrete defense. Like, for example, here we thought uh, queen c2 is the way. Yeah? Queen c2 seemed to be also queen c4 uh, was possible, I think. Maybe not. Yeah, queen Queen c2 or queen a3 we were also talking about. Mm -hmm. Queen c2 is on the board. And then we said rook b5. Yeah. But Magnus has to be f very fast because 43 seconds, 40 seconds on his clock. 
Rook B5 wins the pawn, right? <clears throat> on the board. Rook B5 on the board. And it's on the board. So F5 Inter. pawn is gone. F5 pawn is gone and nothing to be done about that. Incredible nerves. One minute and eight seconds. Ooh, move 76. Bishop a7. Rook f5? Rook f5, queen e4. And rook g5 check. Ah, Magnus goes rook out and rook b3, right? Yeah. Interestingly enough, white played after bishop a5, rook a5. This is professional, yeah? You just play, bishop you repeat once. Rook b5, bishop a7. What, what a professional way of dealing with the time travel, right? Less yeah, yeah, than two minutes still. This is very, very professional. You just repeat moves, you gain one minute, and then you take uh, rook into f5. No, but you know, after rook f5, what about playing queen d3? It's done. Rook f5 is on the board. And if queen d3 also, you give a check first and then rook e5. Is that correct? Yeah. This is the plan? But if you but move... King f8. King f8, how am I playing? Rook e5, f6, rook f5. Bishop e3. Bishop e3, king g2. Oh, no, queen e2, no? Oops, sorry. Okay, so what we have? Queen d3 on the board. What a fighter Jan is. Look at that. And Who maybe this was missed. Happen. And maybe this was missed by Magnus. And he's going down again in time, though he still has a minute and a half. But he'll play rook f7, take on a7, and again we'll see another 50 moves. Well, probably that will be the case. You're correct. <clears throat> Rook was F7. kind of defensive and it's on the board rook f7 king f7 rook b7 rook takes a7 and let's see how it's going to be possible to defend with black also extremely difficult position and again we have another situation against the structure the whole, whole everything game changed. changed and again a completely new, new different approach has to be uh, for Jan to defend this game, which is going to be extremely difficult, I think, with uh, with uh, such a time control and itself, the position itself is very difficult. But although at this point, I don't know if drawing is more difficult or winning is more difficult, because as White also, you know, the moment you start pushing your pawns, which is kind of the only way, you completely expose your king. Well, first of all, it's important how you can uh, push back the king, the black king, right? So he has to be moving up to f6 <clears throat> mm -hmm. or g6, uh, whatever, rook a7. And uh, what is this position? Still very difficult for black, but how to win it with white? Yeah. Right? How to win it with white? Can Thank black you, go... Go with his king two words to f5 and try to defend it that way. Probably not because of rook a5. I would probably just play queen, d, queen d5, queen, a, queen h1 or something like that. Queen d5 on the board. Queen d5 is on the board. Feels natural to put the queen on h1. Okay, so now probably white will be going rook e7 and to e5. What do you think about that? I'll play queen h1. Also, what about knight d4? And after queen h1, knight f3. This I really would, like this one. This would really bother me. This, this is bother me. very annoying. Now, knight d4 would really bother me. This is... Uh... I, I'm, so the moment I see, you see knight d4, it feels knight d4 will be played. Pain. No? Knight, yeah, yeah, also, I think it will be played because knight on f3 stops. It's pretty clear. Yeah. 
I mean, there is, uh, it's such a clear thing that you're going to put your knight f3, h4, start pushing the pawns. I don't even know how is it possible to defend this game for black. Yeah. Rook a6 check first. Maybe he just gives two checks. Though it's a question, can black go king f5, knight d4, king e4, looking for activity for his king? So, uh, okay. This is a very big question. Again, Magnus is asking, make a decision, go back or go to f5? I have a very interesting uh, idea. I don't know if it works. But king f5, it's possible to play g4 check. Yes, I thought about that too. But king takes king and rook g4. Is... Yeah, rook, rook, g6. rook check and king h4. Yeah, and king I h3. Knight d4. Ah. But queen a2 king. you have, yeah? Yeah, probably. King h7 is ah. played. King h7 is played. I don't know. Also for the viewers, maybe we should uh, show after g4 check, g4 was not working. Well, in this position, uh, g4, king g4, rook g6. I don't know. Instead of king g4, yeah, if g4, that knight g3 was made. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is a nice check. Yeah. So we have rook a1 on the board. This ultra solid, painful moves by Magnus. Stopping rook h1. Oh, sorry, stopping queen h1. King g6 again, knight d4. So now he's going knight d4, knight, e3, knight f3, very, very slowly. Yeah. Actually, he just didn't even want to allow him to come to h1. What a difficult position to defend. Oh. No, he, no black has to just stay. Can he actually? Is it possible to defend this? You think? Practically very difficult, but I think the best bet is just to stay, and only when White White start pushing pawns, okay, you will get your chance. Okay, so Queen B seven is played. What about Rook A five? No oh, Rook E one. But maybe he will play Rook E one or Rook A two. Two and a half minutes still for Magnus again because he increased his uh, time by playing moves fast and he gets 30 seconds per move. Mm -hmm. A lot of moves which are tempting. Rook a2, rook a5, rook a2. Very solid. Yeah, not giving any chance. The most painful Next moves. Item. And they are playing already for 86 moves this game. Definitely, by far, is the longest game so far. Oh, this will cross 100 easily. They will. I mean, 14 more moves. Black is not going to lose in 14 moves. And it's also not ending in 14 moves. Unless some miracle happens. Well, uh, yeah. Then if it's finishing in 14 moves, it means that somebody blundered huge. Yes. Queen H1. So now I'm expecting knight f3. No, rook a6 check first. Also quite sensible. Pushing back the king. Now shortly they are balancing out their time. Again. Yeah. And knight f3 will happen. Let's see where black goes with the king, because it's kind of tricky. If you go to f7 or h7, knight f3, all kind of checks are in there immediately on g5 and e5, while uh, if black goes to g7, also all kind of checks are right there immediately. 
maybe g7 is a good a good place because this knight is needed on f3 to protect uh, white's king yeah maybe after knight um, f3 black goes queen d1 and tries to give check on c2 what do you think yeah king f7 he went <clears throat> King Knight f7. F3. Knight f3. Expected. Yes. So let's see if queen d1, what happens, or queen b1, let's say, to leave more options for white, black to give all kind of checks on the second. Look for counter chance. Is white going to go rook d6, maybe? You're playing queen d1 here, yeah? Or queen b1 here. Yeah, queen b1 or queen d1. Maybe that's why queen d1 is better. If queen b1, that's what happened. I think maybe rook d6 and rook d2 should be there. Yeah. So what, at some point I have to push the pawn. So I was thinking, should I just get rook d1, rook yes, d2? Yes, but first I think he wants to stabilize rook d6. Of course. Of course and d2 now he point. has more time. King g7. Yeah, black should wait. This is what I also feel. Black at some point yes. white will play e4. Hard to imagine white gaining something without playing e4. Well, eventually he should be moving e4, right? The only question is when and in what form. What about playing knight d4 now? Knight d4. Knight d4. Or is he going to be going rook d2 back? Rook d5. Look at that. He tries to put pressure on the pawn on h5. So queen c2 check. He wants rook d2 with the tempo. That's the point. Queen a2 check. Rook d2. Where does the queen move? Probably somewhere where e4 is not possible. Yeah. Queen b1. Queen b1. Knight g5, queen h1. Rook e2 if I play? Rook e2. Rook e2. It happened on the board. Okay, now the question is queen e4. Yeah, queen e4, knight g5, rook, uh, queen, queen h1. h1. And knight f3. Yeah, queen h4, rook, queen h1, knight f3. Maybe that's the way. Go back and then start pushing. Then, yeah. Oh, actually, also now the king on g2 is also very... Actually, king is super safe. I like this, yeah? Knight, queen e4, knight g5, queen h1, knight f3. Yes, yeah, that's a nice way of doing it. Very nice. Maybe queen b6 now against uh, e4. Yeah, queen b6 is most resilient. King g2, you want queen b5, yeah? Yeah, queen b5. Somehow always bother. Keep keep uh, white busy with always with something. Queen b6 is queen on, b6 the on the board. Four minutes against four. 90 second, 93rd move. We are reaching very shortly to move 100. <clears throat> they play this game for seven hours. They attend press conference. Get some sleep, wake up in the morning, and start checking lengths because you have a game. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Such a difficult game, this one, for both of them. Such a difficult long game. Mm -hmm. I think it takes out more energy than probably half of the other games took. Don't you think yes. so? Yeah, yeah, easily. <clears throat> so right now, Magnus is not sure how to continue. Queen b6 was nice, actually. Not so easy to progress with white, right? Yeah, like how to play e4. I would love to play e4. Rook c2 starts again and he wants to go knight d4, I think. Yes. 
will keep on changing plans uh, because he has all the time in the world right I now. think he's going to put his knight on d4, rook on c6 and play f5 and rook e6 and then improving and get back knight f3. I think now but, knight d4. Yeah, but only question is what do you do after queen h1? I go knight d uh, I go knight d4 now and after mm -hmm. queen h1 obviously I will give it check one. King knight d4 is on the board king goes out i go check again yes, you go uh, away and i think away. it's time okay i have to start checking now okay check check king f3 this is actually the position we are at after queen h1 now white has to make a choice whether check on c6 <clears throat> Let's see what is the next move. Rook C6. C7. Oh, Rook C7 check, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Should he play King F6? King F6, Down Rook C6. And F5. Yeah, I mean, he has to come up with something, right? Well, yeah, at some point he has to push the pawns. There is no doubt on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So probably this is why Black should be keeping his king on G7 and F6. So white has uh, no opportunity to play e4. For example, let's say if black goes king f7, then white can go here and after queen b1, uh, e4 is possible already. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is why I'm expecting after rook c6, king g7. And then f5. So if I play h4 here? Time for action. <clears throat> I don't know, maybe I should just be taking it. King f7 and king f7, look at this. So he's allowing knight f3 e4. I think knight f3 e4 is coming. But there was queen b2 check after e4. So you want to say that this is still not enough. It would be good if the rook would be on d6, though he played knight f3. Actually, why king b3? Uh, uh, after queen b1, e4, queen b2, why can't I play king g1? Queen b1. e4. King f1, king f1 actually. And check. King g, ah, I don't have king g2. So king h2, I have to go. Yes, but after that, king queen f1. Yeah, no, this feels queen got too much of activity. Queen b1. Very strong defense. Knight g5 check. So what's the point? So let's say king. Incredible defensive skills by Jan. Yeah. He's, Jan is very slippery. It's extremely slippery. They are already playing for seven hours and they are entering into their eight hours of play. 
Local time, 11.33 p.m. Yeah. I don't think ever I play the game, which is a tournament chess, which past midnight. So you play two days <laughs> and they can easily end up that way. Move 98. I'm not sure about this knight g5 move because with the king on f7 and knight on f3, c6 rook was also indirectly protected. Unbelievable fight. Yeah. The problem of white that he cannot stab stabilize all pieces in a way that he can also push e4. Yes. <clears throat> what a challenge for white hmm. and actually maybe now it's falling apart the whole system because he cannot get back to d2 and knight on f3 uh, or, he comes back uh, to d4 basically well probably he will be play, putting his knight to d4 and playing f5 eventually which means the knight is actually coming back to e2 all the way yes knight d4 will be played Of course. Mm -hmm. Now the question is okay, Queen H1 or no, Queen H1? Queen H1, and we also end up in some uh, uh, not repetition of moves, but we are going to receive and in the same position because after Queen H1, if white goes knight F3, I think it's Queen already. B1 is already the yeah. second time. Mm -hmm. At least. Yes. So Queen it H1. has to be, and Queen H1 is on the board. So now maybe it's already time to play F5. Eventually it has to be done. 100 moves over, by the way. Move 100, yeah. <clears throat> So let's see, rook c7, rook c7, of course. So what is the uh, highest number of moves you played so far? Me? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. I think it was something like 136, maybe? I I'm remember I, I played, I think, 112. I played against Lenny Dominguez, one of my toughest game in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And also once I played uh, against Ivanchuk, and that's what I remember for. Somehow I remember 136, but I'm not sure. But I had a few games over 100. I haven't, I'm just checking right now in my database. My highest has been 176. Wow. 100, 159 with Li Chao, 148. Yeah, many hundred, but 176 is highest. Wow. Queen B1 again, we have this position, Rook C7, <clears throat> King F6, Rook C7, Knight F3, Queen B1. So this pattern Jan figured out and he's going back and forth to this in order to stop E4 by any means. Mm -hmm. Will he be able to cross E4? He will play E4 of course eventually. But it's uh, time to play another 10, 15 moves before he will play d4. Rook d7, again, he's covering the e2. D file and D2, yeah, probably he wants to come back eventually again. Check. Rook D2, again, Queen B4 or Queen B1. Just control the E4 square so white cannot be pushing the pawn so easily.
Uh, How many moves I, we didn't have pawn moves? I, I'm just checking that, you know, like what was the move when this thing started? No, rook f7 was move 80. Move. <clears throat> so the last capture. No, 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 no last, rook, last capture was rook a7. 82. Yes. So 100, 132, it will be true, but yeah, 132. No, but we are not reaching that. He will play e4 before that. Sure, sure. <clears throat> well, Jan has six and a half minutes by now, and Magnus is a minute and a half. Time will not be an issue in this at this point. I mean, they will play some. Knight G1. If Magnus is short on time, he'll just do some knight G1, knight F3 and gain a few minutes. But how to play E4? This is the problem. By the way, did something change with the king on F6? So if I play rook E2 now, you still go for Knight G5 now. Knight G5. Queen H1? I thought if you go queen b4, I go king f3. <clears throat> uh -huh. So if I play rook e2, it's queen b6, yeah? Yes. And I'm wondering if anything changed with the king on f6. Probably not. And if king g2, queen a6, right? Yes. Rook e1, queen a2 check. King g1. Queen b3, let's say, or queen a3. Yeah. Look what we have. Knight g1. <clears throat> Going back to e2 where we started it out. 46 seconds for Magnus. Move 105. Knight g1. And after queen d4, queen e4, what does he want to do? Knight f3. But we are getting to the third repetition, I think. We are very close. Queen b1, okay, king was not on f6, maybe. Yeah, it uh, seems like Jan will be able to hold it. What do you think? Yeah, I also think he will hold at this point because looks like somehow we got a position where White is White is unable to show any progress for quite some time. You know what he wants, maybe. <clears throat> you know what he wants. He wants to go rookie two. Interesting okay. queen b4. Ah, he wants to go rook e2. And if queen b6, king g2. Mm -hmm. And he can go e4 because the e2 not, rook is protected. But why did he go rook d1? Just for the fun of it. Almost likely. By the way, I got an information that uh, Korshonek Arpov gained 5 1978, lasted for 124 moves. That's the longest world championship game ever. Well, we are going to pass that one, I think. Oops, what is, ah, on the board, I thought, rook d5, no, rook d6 check. Ah, so now black is going there, e7. Most likely, Third. because otherwise then d4 will, might be an option. Although d4, you still have uh, queen c2 check. e4, queen c2, or queen b4. Also. One and a half minutes for Magnus, five minutes for Jan Nepomniachi. So what's the idea after king e7? 
Pale white go rook h6? I don't think so. Maybe. No, rook h6, no, rook h6 doesn't feel like the plan. Probably rook d2 back. With the king on e7, there could be some tactical idea of e4. Ah, ah that's yeah. the point. That's the point. You see, okay, king is so smart. But I think he will be just going back to d2 and rook e2. But then again, the same story, you know, I'll put my queen on b6. King g2 and e4. Nobody can stop me. Ah, no. So what I should... Ah, rook e2, when you play, I play king, queen e4, then you want knight f3. Yes. And then you cannot pin the pawn. No, rook d4. His threat is e4. Ah, so he's ready to play e4, knight e2 and e4. And now actually there is no way to stop e4. Yeah. Well, uh, black can go queen c2, knight e2, queen b1, e4, queen h1, right? Okay, but no threats. e5 or king e3. It goes on. White is getting e4, that's for sure. Yeah, he's getting e4. Move. Rook d4 is move 108 only. This will cross 124 moves. Um, look, Magnus is checking score sheet because he wants to make sure. Yes. That it's not 50 moves. What again, basically, if he is not going to improve his time, he cannot go to the bathroom. He has no time for something like that. That's a luxury. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, that's a luxury uh, I have. So I'll take one minute break and come back. Sure. Can I use the washroom? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Not much will be happening here until then. Yeah. So let's see what Napomniachi has in mind. How is he going to be defending? Because E4 is not possible to stop. It's unstoppable. What again we have up to now? Well, I do hope that we still have viewers and you have the patience or we have new viewers. This is the eighth hour of the game of the World Championship match game six. They are playing exactly seven hours and 15 minutes and there were quite a lot of interesting happenings in this game already and after queen b2 check we're going to be seeing what i'm expecting that knight knight uh, e2 and this is what we are having on the board queen e uh, knight e2 queen b1 so black is aiming to reach the square h1 with his queen so i guess this is what black is looking for to look for counter chances so after e4 Queen h1 will be the move, I think. And now let's see how Magnus will improve. But of course, Magnus is trying to get the most optimal way to play e4. It is very difficult game for black, very difficult to defend. But let's see if he can go all the way with the defense. Of course, it's a huge battle right now. Magnus is going down shortly under a minute again, which uh, is very clear that in this game, Magnus had a lot of problems with time because he went down and he's continuously in time trouble, which is not very normal for him. Though in this position, he knows exactly that it's only him who can win this game. But it's a huge difference whether he can break through and win this game and take the lead in the match. It is something huge. And finally, in move 110, e4 is played. e4 is played. So let's see what is the new strategy of Jan now. So far in the last 20 moves, he was fighting against this move, that this move is not possible to be played by white. But from e2, the knight was regrouped to f3, seemed to be the best place. Then Jan found a way to stop e4. This is why... White had to be regrouping back his knight to e2. After that, to have rook on d4. This is how he was able to play e4. Queen h1 stands on the table. 
<clears throat> on the board. All right, I'm back. So what changed? E4. E4 is done. Just a second. Breakthrough. E4, but now queen on h1 and looking for counter chances. Probably some h4 will be also happening shortly. Now the question is whether white wants to go e5, f5, or possibly going king e3, rook d7 check, of course. Again, now Magnus is up to sorry. one minute, and Jan is three and a half. Uh, sorry, I could not hear you. Uh, there were some issues with the audio. Yeah. Oh. Basically, e4 happened in the meantime. Oh, wow. In 100, move 110. E4, but still I don't know exactly how white wants to continue because there is going to be some unpleasant counter chances for black, I believe. I'm not even sure. I was, yeah, I just wanted to say that maybe going to G8 possibly because now the rook is on D7. So if black can go all kind of H4 and start to give check, queen on H3. So white, I think, has to be careful a little bit. Yeah, I mean... There would not be so much of uh, effort if, you know, all this is happening because Magnus did not play e4 on move 1. He had to play it after 100 moves, you know, so much of maneuvering. Play it on move 1. So what do you think in this position after rook d4, let's say h4, white has to take it, right? Yes. You take the pawn, queen takes. But hang on, after queen takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is seven piece, so we should have a verdict, yeah? Uh, I mean, this, this position is stable, visible. Somebody should tell if it is mate or it's a draw. <laughs> In another 343 moves. <laughs> yes. But uh, let me check this. Yeah, queen h2 and king e3. This is the position we have. Mm -hmm. Well, but what is what is your uh, your intuition? If let's say h4, which uh, which happened in the game, mm -hmm. takes takes. Is it a draw? Intuition is a draw. And In also, principle, it should be, right? Yeah. Also, there is just uh, look at white's pieces, how he does form the T. It feels so nice. No, after with the king on e3. Creates a good. Queen h3, king d2, queen h4. And king e3. So let's see how to improve with white. Two minutes for Magnus, four and a half minutes for Jan. Move 116, eight hour. They are already fighting this game. How much energy they are spending on this one game and tomorrow just another game. So this will be the longest game in any World Championship match so far. Oh, by the way, we got an information. The position uh, that we have on the board is a draw according to table base. Well, this is what the feeling we had, right? And uh, yeah. I'm not surprised. Though still practically to defend this, it will take a lot of extra energy from black. But I have a belief that Jan, the way he was showing his defensive skills in this game, probably he will make it. And this is a very crucial moment in a match. I mean, to all our viewers, this is so crucial. If Absolutely. this can be held by Jan, it will be very frustrating for Magnus and it will increase the self-confidence of Jan and his team. So this is this is a very crucial game six. Move 116, and we are heading, I think. What do you think? How many moves we're gonna be seeing in this game? I say that it's gonna be 135 at least. 
easily easily because the thing is the pawns will keep on moving so you want uh, every 40 moves them. every 50 moves one <laughs> so yeah. four moves yeah but we are not by the way 200 i don't for those who are not aware about uh, table base uh let's say when we have only seven pieces on the board up to seven pieces right now we can see there are seven pieces on the board uh if you put it in table base it just gives you a verdict and which is uh which is authentic so it will basically say either it's a draw or mate in certain moves it does not say uh slide better or you know point two five it can give evaluation like mate in 347 moves that's also theoretically possible or it will just say draw so according to the table base this is a draw yeah but magnus will not give it for free for sure absolutely rook behind the pawn he wants to make sure the pawns will be pushed <laughs> very quickly so now if black gives a check knight d4 and black has no more check right now so in the next move white is able to push one pawn ahead and that will be a five hopefully i think the expo closes at 1 a.m you know <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's 1 30 it's here short, in India. shortly uh, midnight here what time at your place 1 30 in the night yes okay so your baby is sleeping already yeah, Arya is normally out oh, after no. 7 o'clock. She will be sleeping. So, let's see. King e3. Queen a5. Look at that active move. Okay, King f2. Or f5. No, f5 is Queen e5. King f2 played instantly. King safety first. Yeah. So queen b6 check. Where is he going? King, king g2. Or actually rook e3 and e5. Yeah, that's the other way of doing it. Yeah. It's move 119. Six more moves, and we are writing Queen. history. Queen a7 check. Also rookie three. Rookie three, three. like. And they are receiving their third score sheet of the game because only 60 moves can be filled in one score sheet, which means that this is move 121 and they are still have to write the moves i'm surprised because they get the bonus time 30 seconds and this is why the rules is that they have to write the moves still actually it is something that they should delete from the rules don't you think so i mean we have all these uh, electronical things this i i always felt so like uh, writing on score sheet feels a little bit too outdated it should be automatically recorded and whenever i want i should be able to see it I mean, I, I, as a player, player just makes move, and if he wants to check for three, four repetition, there should be some electronic way to do it. Exactly. Queen d7. E5. Isn't it too early for e5? No, no f5 is possible. f5 is possible. King f3 is possible, and after check knight g3, what do you think? No, no. Knight g3. Knight g3. Queen d2 queen check. King f. King f3. Queen d1 check. Will oh, maybe he'll come back knight d2. No, maybe what he wants, no. He, I think he wants rook d2 and king g4. Ah, that's clever. That's very clever. And I then think rook he wants d4. to go. He wants to go rook e2 and then sneaks out g4. with g4. And then he's yeah. ready to push his pawns f5, e5. Yeah. So those pawns will be shield. I mean, he 
you would rather want to push e5 f5 with the king on g4 f4 rather than putting it on f2 rook e2 queen d3 but wait king g4 there is queen g8 check exactly Jan is not allowing so easily white to play uh pawn moves just like that king g2 is he gonna play queen b7 to stop e5 by the way this is 124 move queen b5 so now now according to our information world championship longest game is going to be this one because it was korchnoi karpov game five in 1978 which lasted 124 moves and now with the next move which is rook d2 we are reaching 125th move and the players are playing their game for seven and a half hours already and we are by far seeing the end of it It's going to be extremely difficult to, to play queen this position. Rook d2, queen b7. I think f5 is not, uh, not a good progress because then the g3 knight is, mm -hmm. uh, is somehow standing not well and it, was, it will be very difficult to regroup the knight, right? I mean, after f5... <clears throat> queen b3 now i think it's about to play e5 don't you think so it's time queen e3 you have rook e2 so that doesn't bother or rook d6 and then e5 that's another option what would you like to play no i, no, I said e5 is very much possible because queen e3 you can just play rook e2 yes Yes, oh, okay. queen f4 is not possible to this. But of course he's not in a hurry, Magnus. He knows hurry, that yeah. eventually he wants to be progress with the pawn, but it's clear that he's playing on the nerves of Jan, right? It's a yeah. game we are entering. It's eight hour they are fighting. Also, I think when it comes to energy, clearly Magnus is superior than anyone. I mean, he's so, so energetic uh, in general. How are yeah. they going to recover? Are they really going to give a press conference after this? <laughs> 20 minutes? 10 minutes to go from one place to another? From the exhibition center to the media center? At the same time, this is the most interesting game. There must be some interesting questions from the audience. I mean, from the media, from the journalists. Queen B3. How was it for uh, Vichy, the press conferences? Was it a lot of pain or uh, how did you see it and experience the, the press conferences? Well, as I said, I was uh, lucky enough not to see him losing ever. So those, the press conferences that uh, when I was in the team, it was, uh, it was quite nice. But when I saw him in Chennai, that was very painful for me to watch. So I can only imagine, you know, how difficult it must be for him to go through that. Look, we on the screen, we see the players, both of them are playing with the piece. Yeah. Like, you know, they are playing already for more than seven and a half hours and they are just playing with the piece. and. One is really want to take the the lead in the match on the third score sheet. They are writing their moves already. Unbelievable Rook game. Rook d5. No, e5. f5 would be early. Early morning. No. So we no, close no. to the next day. It's already the second day they are playing this game. <laughs> what time is it? Uh... It's, it's after midnight. Wow. Feels wrong, yeah, like to play after midnight for championship match. So, so difficult must be. 
King e7. And you cannot say that I'm tired and I had enough and okay, let's have a draw. Because you will never forgive for yourself, right? Absolutely. I mean, no matter how long you're playing, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Magnus would have never played this long game in his life. Oh, he must. I mean, most of his games are very grinding, so I'll not be. I think he must have played. Okay, this should be easy to check. Yeah. So. Well, it's not over yet. <laughs> I'm curious what is Magnus' highest number of moves. Let's see. Rook e5 check. So, which direction Black will be moving away with his king? I have a feeling that he goes 175 right. moves against Shirov in 2010. So that's his highest. Magic is the highest game in classical game 75? 175. 175, okay. 175 moves against Shirov in uh, 2010. But all these games were drawn actually. From what I see that uh, in a classical game, above 100 moves i won against lenny the dominguez it was a rook bishop against rook but he has not won at least i don't see it in mega no he has drawn or he has won some blitz of course but in classical game i don't see a i don't see a win long game you mean yeah long game so if he wins this one I mean, according to database, this will be his first win uh, where he played more than 100 moves. I think he's going to go rook f6 and final e5. No, now he played e5. Yeah. He wants to have his rook on f6. I like that. Also, look at his pieces. Everything is always protected. So nothing can go wrong at this point. So I'm curious what is stable base saying right now? We know it was a draw before. Let's see. Optically, it feels like now but it should be close. Well, it is progressing. Rook on f6 will be standing fantastic. Then king h3, maneuvering around. Mm -hmm. But it still should be, I think, a draw. Yeah, we hope the viewers are enjoying this historic moment. Uh, for the first time, we... I mean, this is, after all, the longest... Uh, game that has ever played in a World Championship match. And um, yeah, support uh, support us, uh, support the channel by going premium on just 24. 50% off right now with uh, Flash Shell 50. Uh, that's what you have to do and then you get 50% off. And I think it's a, it's a fantastic moment to do it. So do support uh, just 24. King H4 on the H4. board. No perpetual. Engage four. Actually, white is progressing. Yeah. I don't know if the black king would be better on g file or not. And white king is. Uh... But now knight h5 and rook f6. Mm -hmm. Starts to be shaky for black. We passed move 130. And both players have three minutes each. This looks very close to loss 
for black. I don't know. One second, what the table base would say here? It's getting worse and worse, I think. Mm -hmm. Such a fantastic game. Amazing. I mean, from, yeah. uh, from, from both players, I'm not, I'm not saying just from Angus, because Jan also played some amazing moves in this game. But we were talking about this already that how difficult it is even if ah, 1947. <laughs> it's made in 47 that's what we have official information it's made in 47. well tough life so it means that if both players play the best we are going to finish before move 200. Yes. Yeah, but it's, uh, we could feel that the progress was significant. Mm -hmm. Black is not even threatening anything at this moment. Yeah, but somehow Black is incredibly passive. Mm -hmm. Isn't E6 now winning on the spot and Rook F7? I, yeah, yeah, I was also thinking about E6 right now. Because queen e7, you have knight f6 check as well as rook f6. Both are possible. Also rook g5. Pretty much everything is possible. No, because otherwise rook f7, knight f6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, e6 looks most direct. e6 seems to be killing. I don't see any defense anymore. What a marathon they are playing today. <laughs> Move 131. They are playing already for seven hours and 40 minutes. Yes. But of course, if this game will be decisive, it's a different energy what Magnus has been spending and the young. Because after that, I mean, when you win such a game, suddenly you have so much happiness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That it will be so difficult for Jan to recover this game if he's going to be losing. And E6 is on the board. And E6 is on the board. I don't see a defense for Black. I don't see any stalemate ideas also. No, this is just over. Because after Queen E7, we would be going Rook F6, I think, which will follow F5. The King will be marching to G6, Rook F7, Knight G7, all kind of moves like that. And Black has no other move because, for example, after Queen G6, Rook F7 and the opponent game is winning. Yeah. So after queen e7, we have got this funny position where uh, every legal move possibly wins. It's impossible to make a mistake. Uh, actually, if, uh, if I just go king g4 or whatever. And king g4, king g3, king h3, rook g5, knight f6, rook f6. Looks like everything is winning. What a game. Yeah. What a game. <clears throat> Unbelievable, and they are playing this game already for quite a long time with having half a minute, one minute, they increase to three minutes, then they go down again. Of course, for uh, for Man Magnus, it was easier to play, much more easier to play than for Jan, because White had no risk at all. Absolutely. And he was always paying attention that all his pieces are protected, so he cannot blunder. And White and, moves were very, very easy. And no matter how many moves you want to be uh, playing, <clears throat> and uh, Queen G6 is on the board. But Rook F7. Rook F7, probably Black wants to go. Queen h6, what do you think? But after Fine. Queen h6, f5 and f6. 
Or Rook H7 also. No, no so Rook H7. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, that would be quite something to make Rook H7 yeah. <laughs> in a winning Finally. position. I think then the match is over for Jan. I mean, for yeah. uh, Jan's favor. But I think F5? Look yeah. at that, Rook F7. Rook F7. We have the commentary next door to me, the Spanish commentary. <laughs> and they are like <laughs> very excited, very excited. <laughs> What a painful moments for Jan. Yeah. What a painful moment. He's realizing, he knows it. Finally, both players are. Goes down in seconds, 46 seconds. Extremely difficult to handle. F5. King d8. I said that it's going to be more than 135 moves, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be. It's now 134. F5. Yeah, pieces are not moving. So queen f queen h6. Or queen f6. Six. So Stick maybe queen. Back. Maybe queen g1. Let's try to I think like should opponent. be going, moving with his queen to to the down somewhere, g2 or g1. Mm -hmm. And then oh, f6. No, no, f6 is blunder. Sorry, f6 is a blunder. So what about knight f6? I think knight f6. Knight g7 was played instantly. And then ah, the white king goes to g8. Yes, king, king goes to g8. g8. What a technique by Magnus! Ah, oh, incredible technique. King goes to g8. He, oh, knows, he, knows, it. he knows it that he wins. Knight g7. Wow, very nice touch. Yeah, very nice touch. Clean. Very, very clean. No discussion anymore. Yeah. Gives the shelter to the king on g8. And finally, we are going to have a decisive game in game six of the World Championship match. Here in Dubai, we passed after midnight, 15 minutes. Everybody's that tired, of course. Nobody's as tired as the players. And how painful it is. Wow. <laughs> what an incredible game we had. Unbelievable story of the World Championship match. Everybody thought already that we are just going to have draw after draw after draw. And this is why chess is interesting and so stressful. Now I think people understand how difficult this game is. It can really last so long. And right now, after this game, how difficult it will be to handle it for the players, especially for Jan, of course, because when you win, the tiredness is going away. Magnus' team, of course, they know what it means exactly because they have been through all these matches, four matches in Magnus' life. This is the fifth World Championship match he's playing and already interesting they are discussing. And, uh, of course, they try to let their energy out, right? Discussing, where did I make a mistake? It was no big deal. What was all about? So, of course, for Jan, it's going to be incredibly difficult because it was a long game, took a lot of energy. He had his chances, right? I mean, not winning chances, really, I think, because even if he, he, where he had this bishop before, and now they have to go to the press conference, press conference to yeah. share their thoughts. Woo. Wow, what 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 a day. And yeah, thanks to the viewers. We we had like 45,000 people watching this, this intense match. And uh, we saw some amazing technique, yeah. 
particularly when Magnus. Magnus. Uh, this, this is Magnus. If you have to put a trademark for Magnus, I think it's this that he's sitting there for five, six, seven, eight hours. The game lasted nearly eight hours. They were playing for uh, seven hours and uh, 40 minutes. So, yeah. I mean, for him, he just loves playing chess and whenever he smells that he has a little bit of chance to win the game, he just sits there. I mean, you could see yeah. his face. He was not suffering. He was just sitting oh. there and looking. How am I going to regroup my pieces? How am I going to be improving the position, no? And we're yeah. going to hear them just after the game. Uh, the first impressions, which will be, of course, uh, very difficult for both because uh, they ha must have lost so much energy and I think they were not really eating during the game. Uh, definitely not in the last hour or two because they were just so much on the edge on, uh, on time and uh, it was so tense. It was so tense. This is the backstage of the players behind the fish tank where they will be yeah. coming out and some of the very few journalists from NRK, Norwegian television, is streaming it live for the Norwegian, Norwegian public who are great fans, the biggest fans of Magnus. And even though people are not playing, some of them, or they play very little, they really follow, they make such a show and broadcast for years already. And also some of the other uh, journalists, they have access to them. So just to have a few first impressions before they take the little buggy, with it, which is uh, within the expo area, because there are so huge distances here. So they no, have to be going, we see Magnus, the happiness on his oh, face. Yeah. Well, what else, right? I mean, seven hours and 40 minutes. What a fight. Who is this person? Uh, I think a friend of his who who comes around on matches, also called Magnus, I think. Mm -hmm. So let's see the first impressions. He smiles like a baby, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Well, he if who else if if not him knows how difficult it is and how big move forward to defend his title. But of course, that's far, far away because tomorrow is another day and another game. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you get some little time to sleep and then to wake up and prepare. Yeah. Of course, he will have no time uh, to celebrate, I, uh, the right time to celebrate for sure as well. But uh, they both have to recover very quickly because it's already today that they have to continue the day. And, uh, quite a few hours from now. But, uh, for some distance, are you? Are you just some uh, some tele? I will be um, champ, uh, very curious about the press conference. Uh, how they will be sharing their thoughts. Uh, no of course, point. for Yanich, extremely. Thanks. Magnus, congratulations! Yeah. What a game! A very unexpected okay. opening. A great fight. Time scramble. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, no, obviously. Uh, I'm exhausted, but, uh, yeah, but I think uh, after after uh, after a win, uh, those are not more easy to come by. Uh, then I'm obviously elated. 136 moves over eight hours of play. Magnus, how do you do it? What did you do better than Jan today? I think I was maybe a little more patient uh, towards towards the end. Um, I did feel at some point the World Championship match prolonged uh, from 12 games to 14 games. And uh, as he has all the self confidence, he thinks uh, the more games, the more chances I have to win and score a full point, right? Take the lead. Was there a decisive moment? But uh, what a game we had here. I mean, after. Uh, for the time when they are going from uh, the exhibition there, center in Dubai really from the expo, they uh, go to the yeah, media center. I, I think we can make a small this. recap for the most important moments. Though in this 160, 136 moves of game, 
there were quite a few important uh, moments here where we could say that it was quite a decision made by uh, by Magnus. Of course, now we see Jan. <clears throat> There. You see Magnus, of course, everybody is very excited. I think these are the most difficult moments for uh, for uh, the players, don't you think so? Yeah, particularly if you have lost, I think. Yes, yes. Because yes. after winning, it's easy to give interviews and yeah, you're happy. Okay, so I think it's going to be about five, six minutes until uh, they go and they will be sharing their thoughts on the game. Let's go back and make a recap of this game. After first five... Move, move, move by move, Judith? You want to no, do it move? No, not move by move, but we can start move three, let's say. And also that how they came. It was, I mean, we were talking about it, right, that Magnus, the way he came in, I mean, of course, it's easy to say it now, but if we if we look back the stream, we were talking about it, that Magnus, the way he sat down at the game, the way he was concentrated and focusing, the way he was already before the game, he was, he was some movement he did, like he really wanted to win so much today. And then he played this G3 uh, idea, special preparation, but We've seen also in previous video where it was interesting to see Peter Hayes and Nielsen explaining that they don't have to work out the opening to be winning. They have to create openings for Magnus where he can show his ability that he's better than Jan. And I think this game was about that. So after G3, we ended up in this position, right? He played b3, so dc4, like not a real Catalan. He capped back the c4. And then uh, what is the first moment we consider as a crucial moment? I think it was move, uh, what was it? Well, first of all, it was interesting that Jan did not take the pawn. He said, no, I'm not ready to take the pawn from you. I want to play more solid than that. I want to stay active. And he played b5. I think this is the first uh, first critical moment and here uh, Jan showed real boldness. Yeah, after that it was, uh, I think Jan actually reacted extremely well in the he opening. Won, he won the opening battle, there is no doubt on this. But it was clear tell. That Magnus was fighting. Like after this, this was a second interesting position moment. Exactly. Right? Not to take Queen F6. Yeah, this particular moment where Black could be playing Queen F6, simplify the position, and probably go in a drawish endgame. Where yeah. Jan was, you could see that Jan was also ready for a fight. And this is what we see, we haven't seen in previous games so much that they were not taking so much of a risk. Because this is a position where we can see the decision what Jan made, GF6. I yeah. want to be in the game. I want That's to play. Fight. Let's see what you have in mind. How can you show me that you're better actually? And after mm -hmm. that, we had some, uh, at this point, we had Queen E4 seemed to be very good for Black. Very yeah. stable, right? Mm -hmm. At this, at this point, we never felt uh, Black would be in danger, at least at this moment. And there, uh, and then, this was an interesting moment after King G7. Mm -hmm. It seemed everything under control and we were expecting more, we were talking about what happened in the game, but e we were expecting more E3, right? Uh, uh, we, we, we said why not to play F5 so that after E3 the bishop can go back on the other direction. Yeah, that was also possible, but anyway, we were thinking that E4 will be the move. We see already some signs of the press conference getting ready. And uh, and here Rook D2. Again, it was a move this, there. This was and very critical. This was very crucial moment. It was something a provocation. He defended the E2 pawn, so he was provoking 
Jan that do you want to go to CA? Do you want to ask me whether I'm going to be exchanging there on C8? And it's not about that that they were sure or Magnus was sure that he's going to get a better position. It's not even a better position problem. It's pretty much balanced. But still here, it got very sensitive and very accurate play was needed by both players. Mm -hmm. And then the next very big crucial moment was well, first of all, I love this move H4. I think this move was... This was very deep. This was very deep. And after this, King H2. I yeah. mean, what kind of patience you need to make this H4 and King H2, right? Yes. Also, for Black, it was not easy to understand that uh, H5 actually weakens his king. Yes, and the problem was not the main problem that the h5 itself is going to be weakening, that it's going to be lost. But the problem was that with the two rook on the eighth rank, the problem the king cannot be hiding behind the it's h small. move, right? Yeah. So exactly. this is very small detail, which actually he paid the price only 30, 40 moves later. King h2, bishop b2, and in this point, instead of rook d1, there was this opportunity, amazing opportunity for Magnus. But he's and, not uh, going to be sorry for this too much because he won the not game. Not anymore. Not, not anymore. Bishop a3, rook c8, no, sorry, not rook c8, I knight f4, f4 with the idea of rook d8. Rook c8 with his other rook also going there, and then it was impossible to defend the mate. So this rook c c2 well, in move 33 was the opportunity for Magnus to practically to collect the point, right? Which was yes. absolutely amazing move and amazing turnaround in this game that suddenly from uh, going back to c5 and only after that you go rook to c2. Probably we're going to have the press conference starting in any second. Let's see, Maurice is there already. Yeah, but players have not come. I hope we will be able to listen to the press conference because this is something very special. <clears throat> Very special moment. I guess it's not going to be lasting so long because it's already after midnight, 30 minutes past, and the players started their game eight hours ago exactly. So they yeah. must be extremely exhausted. Of course, there's a lot to talk about this game. At the same time, I think it's not fair for the players. I feel for them so much. Yeah. I mean, I retired seven years ago, but I still remember how it feel like. feels like uh, playing a long game and, and then discussing it. Yeah. And uh, after I hear that... Uh, yeah, our production uh, informs us that once the press conference starts, we, uh, we can say, we can basically stop from our end and the viewers can enjoy the press conference. Yeah. So let's see. I think within a few minutes, it's going to be starting. It's going to be exciting. Anyway, thank you very much for being here, supporting us, thinking with us. And I do hope that you enjoyed the, the commentary together with uh, Surya. Thanks very much, actually, being here and uh, sharing sharing yeah. your extremely interesting insights from the world championship matches when you were second of Anan, because i think nobody can tell so deeply and interestingly like you with all your real authentic stories and uh, it is uh, so exciting all the time how the preparation goes what are the most difficult moments and so on so we've seen arriving Yanne Pomniacci. Magnus Carlsen, thank you very much. So follow the press conference and definitely see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you guys. Yes. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Incredible. Yeah. The applause are, is certainly deserved. The players gave us an incredible fight and we had the first victory. Photographers, you know, 
to stay out of the way of the cameras and also for the journalists as a reminder when you ask your questions please keep your mask on uh, and do not touch the microphones at the side of the room uh, first question for you magnus uh, this were you aware of the fact that this is the longest world championship game in history uh, and how do you feel at this moment breaking through winning this game after not having won uh, a game in, in over five years um yeah i think um i had the previous record as well probably against anand um uh, although that wasn't nearly as many hours and uh, actually it was korchnoi karpov uh, it was korchnoi karpov still uh mm -hmm. yeah the um, the one where he tried to win with the bishop and wrong pawn is that mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. uh yeah uh okay anyway um um, that's um, yeah. Somebody told me after after the game. Obviously, I'm elated to um, to get this this um, result. Um, was never easy, um, nor I mean, frankly, should it be. Um, uh, and uh, there was a lot of the same emotions as um, as the the game that I uh, that I won against uh, Karyakin, where it was just um, uh, a marathon there as well. So. Uh, but um, yeah, <laughs> obviously, um, that was a huge. Were you surprised in the opening? It seemed like he played this move B five, and you you froze for some time. Yeah, I did. I couldn't remember the lines properly there. So um, um, I, from from there on, I had to kind of uh, invent things uh, over the word. Um, any case, I, I think after that. Um, it was fair, fairly balanced um, most most of the time. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, congratulations on a tough fight. I know this is not the result you wanted, of course. But can you contextualize the struggle uh, that the game was and your feelings about it? Uh, yeah, well, basically, I felt like I uh, should try to play for more than a draw uh, after the opening because I felt like okay, these two bishops is nice, but uh, are nice, but I mean somehow I. Uh, thought like maybe five and d four instead of ninety four would would be interesting, but uh, it would be like very very unclear. So I mean, in general, it was pretty equal game, yeah. But uh, during the uh, first time trouble, I guess uh, you know it started to go a little bit wrong for me. And then of course uh, you know this uh, queen e four was unnecessary, just like play king g six king h seven, and this is like. Uh, very likely a draw, but I mean, uh, anyway, I would say that uh, Magnus managed to capitalize on very few chances he got. Uh, he, he, he got this game, so that's like uh, uh, very nice of him, but uh, in general, uh, I believe even this queen against uh, knight, in, uh, knight in rook in two pawns should be a draw, but yeah, once you play it's basically blitz, uh, it's, you know, if you don't know the correct setup uh, as black and uh, if you uh, maybe misplace your queen a little bit, it becomes tricky already. Can you speak to the level of fatigue that you feel at the moment after such a long game? Well, uh, obviously it wasn't the most pleasant game, but uh, I mean, uh, anyway, uh, life goes on, so it's not a big deal. Magnus, you're, you're famously fit, but this definitely tests your endurance. Um, sure. Um, but um, I think that's that's the way it is. As I said, it shouldn't be easy in a world championship match, and uh, um, you um, you have to um, to try for every uh, every chance, uh, no matter how how small it is. Um, and uh, part of it, is, it was uh, by design at some point that I, I thought I should um, I thought I should make the game as long as possible, uh, so that we would both. Be uh, as tired as possible when the critical moment uh, moment came, and yeah, that turned out to be a good strategy. Don't want to ask about too many moves, but there was a moment in the game you played rook d1 when you could have played rook c to c2, uh, which looked after he played bishop b2. Uh, did you see this move uh, as a possible winning chance for you, or, or you, did you think about the move? Uh, sorry, so sorry, what was that? So I played rook d1. You played rook c5, you played queen d6, you played rook d1, and you had rook c2 attacking his bishop, and 
And uh, you had the chance after bishop a3 uh, to play for uh, knight f4 and rook d7, etc. Was a was a strong attack. Not not f4. If you take some b4. Uh, the queen's on d6, so his queen's under attack after knight f4. Yeah. So. Uh, and then rook d7. Take d7. the queen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, rook d7. Yeah, it could no, be. Uh, that was yeah. not on my, my radar. Mm -hmm. I was trying to play. Um, no, I mean, I, as a matter of fact, when when I uh, when I went for for this uh, uh, rook d1, I just missed queen d7, uh, and then takes. I, I thought I would be in time to go rook b4 and and eliminate those pawns. So um, that was more an oversight than anything anything else. Um, maybe if I'd seen that that didn't work, I would have gone for the uh, for the other option but yeah it was uh, far far from obvious just to to give up your whole uh, queen side like that but yeah maybe it wins i don't know all right we will go to the questions by the journalists please hello uh, rakesh from chess.com india here firstly congratulations magnus you're the first player in recent history to win a world championship game over two two days because the game started yesterday. And my question is, this was your 51st game at World Championship, like in a match. So how much of that experience helps in these long games and wins? Mm, I, I feel like today was more about experience from, from playing long games in, in general. But uh, um, yeah, I would say. Um, uh, the game today, yeah, it had little to do with uh, world championship experience or or pressure. I, I don't don't particularly think so. Thank you. Ulf from Chess Twenty Four. Congratulations to Magnus. You won Game Six today, also against Vichy. Uh, two times you won Game Six, and historically in world championship matches, Game Six has seen a high, unusually high number of decisive results. Is there something about getting to this point in the match that pushes these decisive results, do you think? Well, that's uh, news to me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty random since a lot of matches have been have been a lot longer as well. Um, and so it's not about be it being a midpoint of, of the match. Um, maybe it's... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's pretty random. Okay, thank you. Mike Klein with chess.com. My question is primarily for Magnus, but Jan, you can step in if you'd like. Um, this game was almost like its own mini series, and the first episode was that first time control where you didn't have an increment. What was the mood like inside the room? Could you feel a little bit of extra tension, you being in this situation for the first time, Magnus? Oh, for sure. Um, but I, I think that's the way it's supposed to be. Um, there should be that added element of uh, intrigue with um, with the clock, so obviously it's not it's not entirely pleasant, but um, yeah, I think it's um, I think it's appropriate. Um, yeah. Uh, Nicolas from Aftenposten in Norway. Um, this was a very long game. Does it give you extra pleasure, minus to two wins in su after such a long time? Yes. <laughs> Short answers, I can understand that, yeah. Um, there was a time, Magnus, uh, where you were both like really low on the clock and uh, it seemed the position still required a lot of precision. Uh, how much were you able to calculate and how much were you, uh, did you need to rely on intuition in a position like that? No. Yeah, I would say the last few moves before the time control, I was mainly guessing. Um, uh, I mean, I, I had three minutes left, and then I was hit with a, with a bit of a nasty surprise, and that I hadn't hadn't seen. So, there was not much time. Oh, my question is for both the players. One of the most critical moments of the game was when Yan played Rook C8, and Magnus took on C8. Uh, there was also a possibility to play B4 at that point. Jan, why did you decide to play rook c8 there? Uh, and did you think the position, that was a good decision? And Magnus, what is your opinion on that? Well, rook c8 was, uh, I believe, a little bit unnecessary, but 
I guess uh, Black has a very nice play there, so it, uh, at some point it became quite chaotic, but uh, I guess uh, Rook C8 is a nice way to, I don't know, to complicate things a little bit, because I don't think Black is taking any serious risk. Uh, yeah, but uh, once it came to the time trouble, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I believe it was a many ways to improve, so clearly Rook C8 is not, uh, is not the problem, um, you know, in this game. Um. Yeah, I, I was happy to see Rook C8 in general. Uh, as you said, B4 was a move. Uh, there were probably probably others as well. I uh, didn't particularly feel that I was uh, that I was better. Um, and uh, Rook C8 gave me at least uh, a target. Uh, I th I felt like we were both risking a bit, um, but I thought maybe Black was risking a bit more. Um, and um, it meant that we would um, would get a serious struggle, which I was happy with. And in the final position, when you had rook, knight, and two pawns, it, the table bases show it's a draw, but did you feel like you would win that endgame? No, I thought it was more likely to be, be a, a draw. Um, but once I got the knight to g3 and the rook to d5, f5, I got very optimistic. Um, Probably was still a, was still a draw, um, but yeah, generally it's 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 a draw. But uh, um, it's easy to um, sort of be lulled into uh, a false sense of security there. Uh, as you saw in the game, things can can e easily go awry. Thank you. Chess.com again. This question is for both players. We can start with Jan, please. Uh, how much will you review this game tonight? There's so many moves that are worthy of attention, or will you review it at all? Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, me, it, you know, it wouldn't take long. So obviously, uh, I think uh, from both sides, you know, play was really far from excellence, from excellency. But uh, yeah, what to do? Uh, um, there will be uh, there will be a time and a place for for that, and I don't think it's today. Just two more questions, please. Hi, um, Theo Wait for Lee Chess. Um, first of all, congratulations on such a grueling win, um, and thank you both for taking the time to to be here. Um, I have a question about uh, how how late this game has ended, and in particular whether you both have um, a kind of daily schedule that this late of ga lateness of game. Will have impacted, such as you know, we will be going to sleep later today, essentially, uh, putting you out of a routine. Yeah. Uh, could I please pass? Uh, you know, the first time, uh, the first answer to Magnus. Um, yeah, uh, I think um, um, such a long game, um, sort of messes up everybody's schedule, um, but it's, um, it's where we're here, so it's fine. Sure, thank you both. This question is to Magnus. Uh, I'm Amruta from Chesbiz India. Uh, very similar on his lines that how, uh, I was very hungry when your game was going on, so how do you manage this food thing, you know, uh, for seven hours you can't have dinner. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I was running on fumes at the end, so. <laughs> It's not easy. In lieu of a question from Twitter, I'll ask the players one last question. Jan, is it just one game or, or and how do you bounce back? Uh, hopefully in style. <laughs> uh, yeah, but well, uh, I mean, sometimes you make mistakes and uh, sometimes it's, you know, that's pretty human. You know, that's a pretty human thing, so. Uh, I don't think uh, you can um, aim for uh, playing, let's say, four consecutive games without winning or losing. Yeah, it's like a part of the game, so let's see. And final question to you, Magnus. Your experience, how significant is a win like this? Um, I, I mean, the match has been deadlocked so far, so any any win that I can, that I can get is great, um, but it's, it's far from over. Well... We are over now, and thank the players, and thank you all for your patience. Next game, game seven, will be tomorrow at 16.30. Thank you all, and have a good night.
than ever when the world comes together to create a better tomorrow. It's going to be magic. Oh. La magie. Magic. Magic with music. With architecture. With colors. Magic with celebration. With your safety. From here. There. And everywhere. For six whole months, day and night. Join the making of a new world starting October 1st.